Good morning, European cricket lovers, and welcome to the Mura Vlasia Cricket Ground, just outside of beautiful Bucharest for the European Cricket Series Romania that's taking place here over the next two weeks. Now, this is the biggest ECS we've ever done here. There'll be 11 teams playing. Some of the old timers we've seen before, ACCB, Cluj, United, high quality teams, but very excited to see a handful of brand new teams competing to be the Romanian champions. Now this ground here is one of the most beautiful grounds we play at across the whole continent. It is a pleasure coming back here every year and it's looking in particularly good shape, I must say, for this tournament. And this pitch, brand new pitch, laid very recently, never seen how it plays, but excited to see how it affects the outcome. Now, I'm Stefan Gooch, and you may be wondering why it's me that's taking you through this introduction. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Maximo, Vinny Sandu, has had some flight complications out of Sweden. His flight last night was cancelled. We are hopeful that he will be here by game three today. But until then, it's going to be me, the tournament referee, Stefan Gooch, taking you through today's action. Now, match one today, the Bucharest Gladiators versus UNEFs. Now, we've seen the Gladiators before. They're the reigning champions. They're a high-quality cricket team. But interestingly, they'll be without Mohamed Moyes, last year's MVP. So it's going to be curious to see how they fill those shoes. UNEFs, well, they're a wild card. We have no idea what to expect, but we are very excited to see them. They're a young, dynamic student university team, first time on the network, so keep your eyes peeled for some great cricket from them. Get excited, get ready. This is the European Cricket Series, Romania, and it's starting right now here on the European Cricket Network. The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Good morning, European cricket lovers, and welcome to the Mora Vlasie Cricket Ground in, well, just outside of Bucharest for the beginning of the European Cricket Series, Romania. Very exciting to be here again. Have a look at the fantasy dashboard for this first game, which is the Bucharest Gladiators versus UNEFs. Now, you know, we've seen the Gladiators before. We know they're a high-quality outfit. UNEFs, very excited to see these guys. Haven't heard a huge amount about them, except that they are an exciting student team uh, competing for the first time in a European cricket series here in Romania. Now, I'm Stefan Gooch, and as you just might have seen in the introduction, I am the tournament referee. We have had some complications with Mr. Maximo's flight, which was cancelled out of Sweden yesterday. And so I will be taking you through the action until he gets here, which we are hopeful will be game three today. But I'll keep you updated on that. So news from the toss was the Bucharest Gladiators won the toss and they elected to bat. And we're just about to get underway to start this tournament. I've got to say, this, this ground is looking in incredible shape. It's luscious. It's green. It's a little bit overcast. There might be a little bit of dew out there. Might be a bit in it for the bowlers early today. The pitch is looking good. It's a brand new laid pitch. And we are almost ready to get going. Looks like Haider Ali is going to be opening the bowling. For UNEFs, again, we haven't seen haven't seen much of these guys, but um, I am told that they're an exciting bunch. So very much looking forward to seeing what they can bring to the tournament. And as I said, it is a little bit cloudy, actually. Apparently there was quite a bit of rain yesterday. The ground is a little bit damp, so that could have an effect. And let's see, about to get underway. Looks like facing up for the Gladiators, Tazib Ul Hassan. Andrew Begg, the umpire, uh, just having a quick word to the players before we go. We've seen him umpire many times. He is a stalwart of Romanian cricket. It's always a pleasure to see Andrew Begg. There he is. Okay, I think we are ready to go. Here we go. Ball one of the European Cricket Series, Romania. And it is Haider Ali. Oh, and it's a false start. Let's try that again. Dead ball off the first ball. I think he might have just slipped there. I like the look of him, though. He looks like your classic fast bowler. Tall, 
Strong. Let's see what he can get. I'd imagine this new pitch they've got could give us a bit of extra bounce. I'm very excited. So we've got a 6-3 field here at the moment. We've got a, a deep point. Uh, we've got a third man. They're the two men outside the boundary, outside the 30-yard circle. And here we go. Second try. Hyder Ali comes in. Oh, it's a pretty good ball. Just shaping away. It's very, very high. There's a fielder coming around. He, it's not going to go to the boundary. He will collect it. They'll come back to two. Some good signs there, though. Some pretty nice, nice ball. Sort of starting on the leg stump line and just shaping away a little bit. Shaping away to that off stump. So that's some good signs for the bowling team. Right on the money, Hyder Rally, straight away. Excellent stuff. And good morning to everybody in the chat, in the YouTube chat. It is a pleasure to be here with you. And, of course... If you have any questions or any comments, do let me know as Hyder Ali comes in for ball number two and it's another false start. He just seems to be having a, a couple of issues with his run up here. I don't think he's slipping or anything, just, just finding himself on the wrong foot before he delivers the ball. But yes, good morning, Ivan, Rob, <laughs> Mr. Gooch's VIP, thank you very much. Sometimes we have to, you know, do what we got to do. Um, you know, and uh, Dave. Thank you for stepping in for Vinny. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here, guys. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, it is a bit of a bit of a crazy morning this morning, but we're we're making it work. So here we go, Hyder Ali. And he's had another false start. He's having a few problems here. I mean, he's only bowled one ball, and we've already gone two minutes. So he probably needs to get through this over quite quickly, or Unifs could find themselves in a bit of time pressure already after one over. And there he is himself, the man himself, Vinny Sandu, in the chat. G'day, Vinny. Happy to fill in. Looking forward to seeing you later. As we go again, here we go. Hyder Ali. That's been slapped over the top of cover, and that's going to race away for the first boundary of the day. Pretty authoritative shot. And again, a little bit of shape, but just dropping a little bit too short. And the ball's sitting up and just been dispatched. A very, very good shot from Tazib there. So, a bit of a statement, I think, there. A couple of false starts, just a, dropping a little bit short, and Tazib has capitalised on that. So a good start for the Gladiators here. So that, that confirmation, Mr Maximo is halfway to Romania. And I'm looking forward to seeing you this afternoon, Vin. Here we go. Hyder Rally approaching again. Oh, that's a very good ball, and that's taken off. Keeper's taking that over uh, over his head. What a fantastic ball that is. That's his area, I would say. That's just hitting that off stump line and just shaping away. Really nice shape there. It's a really good comeback ball. That is the kind of ball that will trouble a lot of batters. Watch this take off. It's full ball. It's not short at all. He comes forward. I mean, it's just passing him in his thigh pad, and it, the keeper's taking it up above his head. So that carry is very, very exciting. Love to see it. Oh, it's another good ball. It's got quite a good pace. That's Mr. Pat is asking about a wide. That's not even close to being a wide, in my view. That's a really good ball and, and some really positive signs for Hyder Ali and Unifs right now. That's a lot of the shape. Well, if you watch, the, it's going to get a side angle here again. But you see that taking off. There's a bit of extra bounce. I mean, he's a tall man. But I really like the look at this seam position. Look at this. Just shaping away. Late swing. Very, very good ball. Comes again. That's that, that area again. He seems to be finding some rhythm now. It's a really nice area. Oh, it's, got a, it's got a beautiful action, doesn't he? Once he actually makes it to deliver the ball, it's extremely nice bowling. So I'm a, a big fan of Hunter Rally at the moment. He looks like he could be a very dangerous bowler. Really like how, how he's letting go of that. His perfect positioning of the seam. Nice away shape. Here he comes again. Last ball of the first over. Oh, it's the same ball again, a little bit short. There could be a run out here. No, they get scampered through for one, similar to the earlier shot. Didn't quite hit it as well. It kind of like a slap back shot to cover. Uh, but you have to say it's a pretty good first over from Hyder Ali. He's gone for just seven. And some really positive signs. A couple of really, really good balls there. So exciting times in the European Cricket Series. Romania already with UNEFs coming out the blocks pretty well. And Ivan's asking in the chat, is it, is it me or does the pitch look wide? The return crease looks a long way from the stumps. Yeah, actually, they've, they've just laid this new pitch, and it is a very, very wide pitch. 
Um, I mean, the, the, the return crease and the wide lines are standard. We, we made sure that they were painted on yesterday in standard. I think it's a bit of an optical illusion. I mean, the return crease does look very wide. Um, I think it probably is a little bit wider than, than usual. Um, but the pitch itself is wide, but it looks fantastic. It's really, really beautiful out there. I went and had a good look at it this morning, and it uh, looks like they've done a great job. Ramesh Sathisan in the chat. Good to see you, Ramesh. We're looking forward to seeing you again. And here comes Gil for the first ball. That's going to be called a wide, I would imagine. Yeah, it is. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a really look, good-looking pitch. Like I said, the whole ground's looking amazing. The new pitch, the, the greenery of the outfield, it's, it, uh, the luscious forest around, the fields, the, the sort of the, the, the land. It's just beautiful here. So here he comes again, Gil. It's a better ball. Lots of fools has been jammed away. It's going to go out. It's, it's running away to the boundary down a far leg, and it is going to go. Another boundary. So pretty aggressive start from the Gladiators here. It's what you expect it from them. They're quick out of the box. I mean, they were fantastic last year. Really enjoyed watching them play last year. They were dominant. Uh, we have said it before, I'll say it again, Mohamed Moyes, the MVP from last year, will not be playing today. Not sure about the rest of the tournament at this stage, but he's definitely not going to be out there today. Um, so that's a big a big hole in their, in their lineup, both batting and bowling. He was he was an extremely powerful player for them last year. And here he comes again, Ricky Gill. That's a, a good ball, but it's been punched down the ground only as far as long off. Oh, it's a good piece of fielding, sharp fielding. Could have been a run-out chance there. Very, very good. I've got to say, I do like the look of the UNFs. I think they, they've got a good energy and they, they look quite good. I've heard that you know, this is their first year. They are students. They can be a little bit chaotic at times, but they look like they have got the goods cricket-wise. So very impressive early on. Ricky Gill looks like he's just finding his area now as well. Also a bit of shape for him. He comes again. That's a nice ball. It's taking a genuine edge. It's just going to go to the, short, to the third man. And they will come through for a single. It's another positive sign for UNEFs. That's a good area. That's the kind of area, kind of length you want to be on. Testing the batter. Just getting him fishing out there. And that was a genuine edge. If there was a slip there, it would have been uh, interesting to see if he would have caught it. It's coming again. It's a pretty good ball. Angled into the stumps. Punched away to cover. There's a slight misfield. They scamper through for another single. So pretty even start at the moment, you'd have to say. I think I think UNEFs would be pretty pleased with how they've gone so far in their first game ever. Here comes Ricky again, Ricky Gill. Pulling off that wrong foot. It's just angled down the leg side and it's been punched away to a square leg. But again, pretty... Oh, hang on, there could be some overthrows here. They're going to take it. Buzzers. Oh, it's a direct hit. Asking the question, umpire Andrew Begg doesn't seem particularly interested in it. Not going to be reviewed. Must have been back home safe. So, looked like some sharp fielding. The throw was just a bit wayward. Pretty good work in the return throw. But anyway, it's... Uh, I mean, yeah, man meet Coley as well. He's, he's, in, he's, a, he's a class player. We've seen him many times. So interested to see how he can go there. Here he comes again. Ricky Gill. Oh, it's a pretty good ball. Again, angled in. He's got him. He's got him. I've called the old commentator's curse. And here we go. That's a pretty good ball. Nice and full. Angled in up this up at the stumps. Just angling towards his legs. And, and Coley has just sort of clipped it up and clipped it to mid-on. Pretty regulation catch. So the first wicket goes down. Look at him. There they go celebrating. I like this energy, you've got to say. They're excited to be here. They're up and about, and I like seeing it. So good work from UNEFs, just keeping the pressure on. You can see there's like a nice full ball angled into the pads, and he's just clipped it, hasn't quite got it. And there's that man, Haider. He's been in the game early. Excellent start for UNEFs. They'd be very happy with this. And that's their first wicket on the European Cricket Network. So well done, Ricky Gill. Congratulations. So it is over. So Ricky Gill, very good start. You've got to say the energy from UNEFs is quite 
quite electric out here. You can tell that they are very, very excited to be here. Really lifting it. And they early challenge to the Gladiators, who you'd have to say would go in favourites as, uh, as the reigning champions. So a little bit... A little bit of spice early on here at the ECS Romania. You love to see it. It's a, very, a pleasure to be here with you all. And the score is 17 for one after two overs. Now we're going to have Abdul Rahman to bowl the third. Oh, it's, looks like it's going to be a wide. Yeah, he's just, just not quite getting his line there. More length, to be fair. So you can see he just comes in. Nice action. Just drags it down a little bit. But you see a little bit of late in-swing there. That's, that's something to keep note of as well. The ball does seem to be excuse me, shaping around a little bit. So if I'm a Unis player, I'm feeling pretty good at the moment. There we go. I'll do a out again. Oh, he's had another false start. Seems that the players are just having a little bit of issue with their run-ups at the moment. I'm not sure if it's something to do with uh, the dampness. There is a little bit damp on the bowler's run-up. I went out and had a, had a look before, and it's a little bit sloppy and slippery, so... That could be it. Here he comes again. Oh, and he's dropped the ball. Now, the batter wants to hit it. <laughs> I don't think he, he can. That's going to be called. He wants to hit it. It's going to be called a dead ball. But I don't know what he's done there. He's just just lost the ball in his run-up. And yet, yeah, there you go. Dave's seen it. Stefan's first curse. Aaron Kumar. Hello, my friend. Yoda Gelkivan. Just speaking a bit of Hungarian to me. Good to see you, mate. Looking forward to seeing you over the next couple of weeks as well. Here he comes again. Third time lucky. Oh, that's a very good ball. Nice full Yorker. It's been punched down the ground. They won't take a single. But that's a much better ball from Rangan. It's a good comeback. I mean, that's the kind of ball that you like to see in a T10. Full and straight. Right up in the block hole. A little bit of shape. Very, very good stuff. It comes again. Abdul Rahman. A bit shorter. It's up in the air. There's a man coming around. This is going to be out for sure. And he's got him. The wicket number two falls. A simple catch for that cover point fielder. Tazib just has not got any of that. It, was, it wasn't it was an amazing ball, but, you know, it's just a little bit short, and he just hasn't been able to put it away at all. You'll see it again here. See, it's pretty short. He's tried to whack it across the leg side. He hasn't got any of it. This will be a better angle for you. Just drags it down. A little bit of a win in shape, and he's just popped it up. That man at cover point makes no mistake. Excellent work. UNEFs, you'd have to say they are on top here. They're looking very good in their first tournament. Exciting start to the tournament. Okay, so it looks like Kadka, Joshak Kadka is the new batter coming in for the Gladiators. And yeah, Vinny in the, in the chat talking about, we did a commentary stint in the Barcelona 2021 night series. With my cousin Joe Wegasani, it was an absolute pleasure to do that. It's good to be back, back on the comms after such a long time. I really enjoyed that experience. So this is a very interesting start to this series. UNEF's just really taking it to the reigning champions here early. And the score is 18 for 2. And just, you just got to feel that UNEF's are up and about here. They, they, they look really, really excited. They look really happy. They... There's a lot of noise coming out of the field. Abdul Rahman, what a start. One for one off just two balls. Excellent work. Pressure. Two brand new batters. Neither have faced the ball yet. Here he comes again. He's coming around the wicket to the left hand up. Oh, it's a nice ball. It's been hit. Oh, it's hit, been hit pretty well. That's going to go all the way. It's the first maximum of the innings of the tournament. It's a really nice shot risky but you've got to take those calculated risks in t10 sometimes that one was put up there wouldn't call it a genuine half volley just maybe a little bit back of a length but full enough to get forward and just play through the line a really really nice shot from kadka bit of a counter attack here ball has changed back to over the wicket it's going to be a wide down the side oh he thinks he's got a nick on him but it's been called a wide straight away by the umpire andrew Begg. Oh, a little bit ambitious but he's just that he's just that interesting pace, Raymond. He's not falling very quick. He's just got that sort of like medium, genuine medium pace with a little bit of shape, which can be very dangerous in this form of the game. Here he comes again. That's a better ball. It's been a genuine nick, and it's going to run away to the fine third man fielder. They'll get one. Better ball, still a little bit short, but just angling across the left hand up, and it's a genuine nick. Again, would have been a 
perfect slip catch, but it's not often you'll have a slip on a tee time, especially against the reigning champions in your first game ever. But I've got to say, very impressed by UNEFs at the moment. They're looking very, very strong and like a good unit. As he comes in again, Raymond. That's a very good ball. It's cut him in half. That is a sensational ball. He's just got that angle in, that little inducker. And uh, the batters have been caught on the crease to Ari. It's not the kind of ball you want to get first up. You see it here. Just that shape. Oh, it's just, just missed the leg stump. That's a really, really good ball. Very, very well bowled. Last ball of the third here. And there it is again. He's bowled him. He's got him. That's the ball again. He's got it straight through him, and he has done it again. He's knocked off the leg stump. What a fantastic ball. And here we go. Raymond, two for nine off one over, and the UNEFs are making an absolute charge early on here, right on top of the Bucharest Gladiators. This is fantastic cricket. What a start. You see it again. This is what he was trying to do the ball before, just angling it in, just takes that leg stump. Batter has no idea there. He's playing all around it. He's got, he's caught on the crease. He's, it doesn't, where's he trying to hit that? I don't even know. It's just, it's sensational bowling. There he goes with the aeroplane. Abdul Rahman, take a bow. What a fantastic over. UNEF's right on top. This is incredible cricket to watch. Looks like Sadim Ferreira is going to come in as a new batter. It's the end of the power play. Wow, what a, what a start. What a first three overs we've seen here. That is fantastic stuff. So 26 for three after three, as you can see that urban development chart there. I mean, you'd have to say that you have to have, have won this power play for sure. There's no doubt about that. This is incredible to watch on the edge of my seat here. And here we go. It's going to be Adil Mohammed to bowl over number four. A bit of leg spins, very really good ball. It's been smashed away to the boundary. It looks like he's just kept doing great fielding. That's some good cricket there all around. Really, really well, well bowled. I really like the look of that. Well played and exceptionally good fielding. This is high quality cricket out here right now. We are lucky to be witnessing it. See, this is, gets a lot, moves quite a long way. A little fumble, but managed to recover. And an excellent throw in. Yeah, he's coming over the wicket now to the right hand up. What a contest we've got on here, everyone. We are very lucky to be witnessing this. First game of the tournament. That's another good ball. He's getting a bit of turn there. But he's been sort of pulled away to deep mid wicket. And it's good signs for the spinner again. There's a, quite a bit of turn there. Because I'm being stalked by a very angry wasp at the moment. So if you hear some flattering around, that's why. <laughs> Um, but very good signs here. I, I really like the look of this pitch. There's turn, there's bounce, there's a little shape in the air. It's it's a perfect, perfect for the first morning of a tournament. So Kadka, he's looked pretty good so far. That first ball he hit for six was a great shot. He's looking like in good form. So this will be a good battle here. But I do like the look of this spinner. Oh, the quicker ball as well. It's got it past the outside edge. It's good thinking. Very good thinking. I am extremely impressed by this UNF team at the moment. And here it comes again. Oh, it's a very good ball. It's been put up high. There's a man coming around. It'll be a good catch if he takes it. There's three of them converging, though. It lands in the Bermuda Triangle. They're coming back for two. This could be a run out. No, they're just making it back. It's all happening here. It's all happening. And you've got to say, you like the look of this spin. Adil Mohammed, he's, he's giving it a, a good rip. He's sending it up there, some good flight. Always good to see a quality leg spinner coming around the traps. That's a really good ball. Could have easily got a wicket. Oh, this is appeal for stumping, I believe. Not, no interest from the umpires. What an over. He's only gone for four. And good morning to everyone. Good morning, Gaffo in the chat. Sam Williams. Nice to see you. I need Vinny badly. Yes, it's true. Looking forward to him coming to deal. Following the last over of the fours. Oh, boy, it's a beautiful ball. This could be very close. Oh, he's giving it on. Oh, 
still happening. That, well, that looked pretty close to me. I'd like to see that again. Very full. It's hit him oh, just, just above his shoe in the middle of his front pad. So, really good ball. And have another look at it. Ooh, there's definitely a question to be asked there. It's a very, very good ball. He gets caught. Not, very, not a big forward movement. Uh, umpire thinks maybe it's just sliding down. Anyway, we come to the end of four. It is 31 for three. And UNEFs are still asking big questions. It's going to be Abdul Rahman again to bowl, which I think is a good move after his over last over two for nine. Really, really good stuff here from UNEFs. And Gladiators just look a little bit ill at sea at the moment. They haven't got... Got going at all. So here he comes again. Oh, it's a very good ball again. Right up in the block. I'll ask some questions. Pretty good shot. It's been punched out to long on. They're going to come back to two. And they will get it comfortably. A really, really good start here. I think Gladiator's going to have to do something here. They are missing Moyes. You can feel it. You can feel it. Raman comes again. It's another good ball shaping away. The drop and run job here. Really building pressure. Current run rate just, just under eight. And probably not enough. If you're a Gladiators fan, you probably want to be looking up around 45, 50 at the moment. We haven't seen UNEFs. We don't know what they can do with the bat. But I'll tell you what, if it's anything like what they can do with the ball, the Gladiators are going to need to put on a pretty formidable total because they look quite handy with the ball in hand. Here he comes again, Raymond. It's another very good ball. Very full Yorker length. Wide Yorker, excellent ball to bowl in any cricket, but especially in T10. Just see him getting a bit of rhythm now. It's a nice, nice seam position, really well bowled. So something has got to give for the Gladiators here. They need something. You've got Kadka on third and off nine. Pereira one off two. Here he goes again. It's a very good ball. It's just angling down the leg side. It won't be out, LBW. But again, extremely good bowling. Shaping in. Hard to get away. Pressure is definitely building. You can feel it here. Something's got to give soon. Again, a very big hello to everybody in the chat. Lovely to be here with all of you. And do hit me up with any questions or anything you'd like to talk about. I'm here on my own at the moment. I could use the company. <laughs> here we go. Abdul Rahman again. Looking very dangerous. That's going to be down the leg side. Why? He still wants it again. Just got that wrong. Didn't see that shape there either. Just straight on there. But really impressed with how he's been bowling so far. And, you know, I really liked um, the uh, Hader Ali that bowled that first over. They're keeping him in the bank, but he looks very dangerous as well. Oh, it's full on the leg start. It's been dealt with. It's just whipped away around the corner. That's going to go all the way for four runs. It's a very good shot. Raymond just getting his length wrong there. Ends up on a full toss length on leg stump. It's not the kind of ball you want to be bowling in a T10. It's a gimme ball. It's been dealt with appropriately. So a much needed boundary for the Budapest Gladi B Bucharest Gladiators. Sorry. Um, used to say in Budapest is where I live. I live in Budapest. So easy mistake to make. But the Bucharest Gladiators very much needed a boundary there. And they got it. So it releases a little bit of pressure. Last ball of Raymond's spell here. Oh, it's a very good ball, and just out, just past the outside edge. That's the one he was looking for. That's that shape, and you've got to say it's a fantastic spell of bowling. On the big stage for the first time, excellent work. Abdul Rahman take a bow. Finishes with figures of two for 17. It is 40 for three after five. Yeah, I mean, it looks like the Gladiators are just struggling a bit out there. They need something. Who's going to do it for them? Like I said, this is the point where Moyes would be normally in there and belting them around. We know how powerful he can be. We did say there'll be big shoes to fill, and it does feel like that, that's happening at the moment. So here comes the leggy again. It's a really good ball. It's well played, though. It's hit down a long off. Easily dealt with by Fielder. So Dave asking, where, where are you from, Steph? Actually, I'm from Perth as well, so Vinny and I... Uh, from the same place. We're from 10 minutes away from each other. We actually played cricket against each other 
when, when we were a bit younger back in Perth. He played for Subiaco Florida, I played for Mount Lawley. Uh, so I'm from Perth, but I live in Budapest in uh, Hungary. And my grandfather was Hungarian and I thought I'd check out Hungary and spend some time there. And so I've lived there for four years now as a deal comes in again. It's a quicker ball. It's, been, it's very, very high. There's a man coming around. This would be a good catch if he takes it. He's there. He's taking it. It's a fantastic catch out on the boundary. What a great work by the fielder out there. And he runs around. The plane's out. The boys are up and about. They're very happy. That is fantastic work. Really, really well taken. That is not an easy catch. Bit of an unorthodox technique of taking it. We'll see it again here. But another good ball. It's a quicker ball again. It's in a good area. And he's tried to hit it too square. Fielders come around and makes no mistake. What a fantastic catch. UNEF's well on top of this game. Here we go. 41 for three is the score. And you've got to wonder where this is going to come from for the Gladiators. Who's going to do it? And it could be the Captain Courageous. Cosmin Zavu is coming out. He's, uh, he's a good player. Through and through Romanian. We love to see that on the network. A native player. He's a very good player. Let's see what he can do. I mean, he, he's going to really need to play a captain's knock now. 41 for four, I should say. It hadn't been updated yet. So that's for the fourth wicket down. And Adil Muhammad takes his first. And I've been really impressed with him. He's, he, it's not easy to bowl leg spin. It's not easy to bowl leg spin in a T10 tournament. And he's been getting it right on the money. So here he comes. The captain, Cosmin, to face his first ball. It's probably going to be a wide. Just, just slipping out past the wide line. And they've been pretty disciplined, though, the UNF bowlers. They haven't bowled too many wides. Especially, you know, it can be a bit of pressure under the cameras for the first time. Here he comes again. That's going to be another one. Another curse from me, of course. <laughs> yeah, there we go, commentator's curse, He'll get it back online ideal, here we go, that's a better ball, it's really asking the question, quicker ball angling in at the body, looking for that LBW, trying to catch him on the crease, but Zavu manages to keep it out well, plays that right under his eye line, really well played in the end. Oh, it's a good ball, but it's been punched down the ground. It's a really good shot. They're going to get looked for two here. They're coming back. Fielder picks it up, has it in. Not the best of throws, so they will get through. Two as the batter loses a pad. One of his pads has fallen off. <laughs> We've got it all here on the European Cricket Network, folks. You won't see it anywhere else. So the batter's pad is just blown out. He's, he's blown it out as he's running. He's being assisted now by the other team to put it back on. Love to see it. Andy House in the chat. G'day, Housey. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Dave asking, Steph, which city are we in? We're in Bucharest at the moment. We are in Bucharest, I can I can assure you, even though I might have called it Budapest a couple of times. Here we go, I do a it again. Oh, it's another good ball. He's lucky he got some bat onto that. That could have easily been LBW if he missed it. But he has turned around the corner. He's going to get a, a much-needed boundary. So here we go. The captain has come out with good intent. He's looking to counter-attack. I really like to see that. You know, he's stepping up and showing his, his troops what needs to be done, as a captain should do. So good start from Kosmin Zabu. He's come out saying, someone's got to do it. Someone's got to lift this team. We need to up this run rate. We need to put a score on the board. And maybe he's the right man for that. It wasn't a bad ball, just dragged down a little bit. Didn't really get up though. Didn't like a bounce here. I do again. That's down the leg side. That'll be called a wide, and they're probably going to get one more. Yeah, it's going to be two, two wides. So I have to re bowl. It's got one more ball in the spell. But you've got to say, another good spell here from the leg spinner. Currently at one for 15 with one ball to go. I think any time a spinner can go for under 10 and over in a T10, it's, it's a success. So he comes again. It's a very good ball. I like that, but it's punched down the ground. It's a really good shot. One bounce over the boundary for four. That is a fantastic shot. And that's the kind of intent that they need. Pereira just gets on the front foot and punches it back down the ground for four. Very, very handy boundary. You just kind of feel that Gladiators are starting to counter-attack a little bit now. 
and it's 55 for four after six. So that cut, that run rate has started to push up to clip over nine. Very interesting time in this in this contest as we, contest as we have a look at the batting scorecard, and you can see, I mean, no one's really got going. Kadka looked pretty good for 17 off 12. Tazib early on with 13. You can see there's been eight wides bowled. And now we've got these two, Pereira and Zabu, the captain out there, both on six. And looking like a counter-attack is on. I love these points of the game in T10. You never know where it's going to swing. It can swing so quickly in either direction. We're going to see the opening. Well, the, bo the bowler who bowled the second over, Ricky Gill, back on. He went for 10, got one wick in his first. Here he comes. A very good ball. Angled into the stump. Spin just clipped down to that long on region. I'll get a single. The Unifs have been good attacking the stumps. I like what they've been doing there. They've been, they've been looking to you know, full and straight, angling it in, asking questions of the batters a lot. <laughs> Vinny, Vinny's Mr. Maximo telling me, fun fact in Sweden, had a, a batter batting one pad for two overs as Gil comes again. Oh, it's a really nice shot. That is absolute class from Pereira. Not a bad ball, just a little bit short. Just drags it down a little bit and he just gets back and just caresses it. Back behind point down to that wide third man region for four. Excellent batting. So yes, Vinny's, that's, that's hilarious, Vin. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. Like I said, this is something you can only see on the European Cricket Network. A batter batting in one pad for two overs before it was noticed. I hope it was his front pad. It better have been his front pad. Here we go. Ricky Gill in again. It's a good ball, but batter advances down the pitch. Pereira's looking good here. Just punched out. He's going to miss field. Are they going to come back? It's risky. There's a guy coming around. Okay. Yeah, you feel like a, the momentum's shifting a little bit now. Gladiators are starting to take control. UNFs are starting to get a little bit sloppy. Very, very interesting time in this match. And Ricky again to the captain's of you. It's another good ball, but well played. Dealt with well, easily, easy single there for Xavier. It's well played. Again, attacking that stump, bringing it in towards the batter. But Xavier looks pretty comfortable out there at the moment. And this is just what these two batters have got to do. They've got to keep rotating the strike, hitting the bad ball to the boundary. They're still going at over nine. Gill again. Oh, it's down leg side. This will be a wide. It's a freebie. Oh, oh. yeah, it is called a wide. Yeah, you just feel the tempo shifting here. Unifs really need to break this partnership, starting to develop quite well. Ricky Gill comes in again, bowls a good ball. It's another absolutely fantastic shot. Now that is just pure class. Gets down on one knee and again just works it behind square on the offside. Down to the boundary for four runs. That That's fantastic to watch. And Pereira really starting to take control here. Starting to take charge for the Gladiators is exactly what they needed. They needed someone to step up, and he's looking very, very comfortable and very dangerous. Last ball of his spell. It's a good ball up in the block hole, but it's dealt with as well. And they're going to get away for one, down to long on, but it's a good finish. So Ricky Gill finishes one for 23 off his two. He bowled pretty well. He did get a little bit expensive in that over. A couple of really nice shots played by Pereira to him. But still, not disastrous figures. And this game is very evenly poised at the moment. This is a huge three overs for Bucharest Gladiators. They need a big 30 or 40 to bring that, that total up. Over 100 at least. I mean, like I said, we don't know about UNEFs. The score right now is 68 to 4. Seven overs gone from being attacked again by this angry wasp. So this is going to be a very interesting last couple of overs. Ramesh Sathison is saying 80 and 90 can be a good score here on this pitch. Yeah, interesting. I mean, 80 or 90 is sometimes a tough a tough chase because you, the batting team doesn't really know how to go about it. You think, oh, I've got plenty of time. I can take a few overs before I need to start attacking. And then before you know it, four or five overs are gone and you're behind the rate. Sometimes 120, 130 is easier to chase because you can go out there with intent and just smash it from first ball. You know you've got to be very aggressive. So I've seen, in my experience, 90 can be a difficult target. We've got Usman coming on to bowl the eighth, and we've had another one. There is another false start. <coughs> Usman Ali here, first over in this match. I think it might be because there's a bit of moisture 
and the bowlers run up. The sun is kind of outshining now, so I hope that dries up. But the bowlers have had a little bit of an issue. So here we go. Second attempt here. Uh, it seems that like there was a wrong striker, so that may be why they pulled it out of that. Yeah, there was, because a single off that last ball, strikers have gone to the wrong end, so good spot, whoever spotted that. Usman Ali here, first ball of his spell. Oh, his left arm would come around the wicket. Has that clipped something? I think that's clipped his pad. No, it hasn't. Umpire decides it hasn't. He's down leg side for a wide. I didn't see that coming. I actually thought he was about to bowl right arm, and then suddenly he's bowled with his left arm. Quite a handy action, though. I like the look of it. So what an interesting period in this match. You know, just need to be a bit careful about this time pressure as well. They can't afford to give any freebies away and waste any more time with what extras. As Usman Ali comes again. It's a good ball, but it's that shot again. He's just played that perfectly. He split the two fielders there. Oh, the fielders got there. I have to have another look at that. Could be a run out here. Oh, it could be overthrows now. It's all happening here in Bucharest. But what a shot. Pereira plays that shot so beautifully. It's just like poetry in motion to watch. Just gets down on one knee and caresses it in that area. I think they might have a look at the boundary here. Yep, I think we're having, having a look at it. Usman Ali coming back in. He's been whipped away on the leg side and it's going to go out to the man at square leg. They'll get one. And you can hear the gladiators in the background. They can feel like they are starting to get on top now. It's a very big over. A couple of, big, a couple of boundaries here will be huge. 72 for four is the score. Usman Ali coming in again. He's bowling to the captain, Cosman. Oh, it's a good ball. And Cosman is clearing that front leg. Probably not the right shot to play there. I'm not sure where he's trying to hit that. If that was me, I'd be trying to hit that through covers. Or over cover, even. And the fielders, they've got a, they've got a, a cover. They've got a long off. They've got a deep point. Well, backward, a ba well, deep cover point, I should say. They've got a, a backward point and a third man down there. It comes again. There it is, same ball. It's a good ball, actually. It's, it's, it's in that area. Xavier doesn't look particularly comfortable to that ball there. He's just clearing that front pad to the leg side and trying to hit it. You can see it again here. Clears that. Yeah, it's, I think he should be stepping into that and trying to hit it through or over cover. There is a gap out there in the boundary over cover. It's smart, clever bowling from Usman Ali. It's another good ball. It's played away. It's kind of an outside, thick outside edge. It's going to go to the... The point fielder, Pavel Florin, cult legend, out here again for, I think, third or fourth ECS here in Romania. We'd love to see him out there. Playing for UNEFs for the first time. wonder if we'll see him have a role in this game at all. So this is the man you want on a strike. That was Xavier's job, just get a single. Uh, they have set the field a bit better for this, for his shot down, that cut shot off the one knee as he comes again to Smanali. It's a very good ball, and he has knocked him over. What a fantastic ball, and he's having a little dance out there. You love to see it. That is a beautiful ball, full and straight, angled in, through the gate. See it later, Pereira, and that's the wicket that they needed. And that, that brings us to the end of eight. And again, every time... Gladiator starts to get a look at that. He's cheering him up on the shoulders now. You see, and look at that. Just no nonsense about that ball. Angled in, full and straight. Attacking that stump. I mean, Pereira has to go for that as well. It's in the, it's in the zone. Just a little bit of extra movement. And you can see him have a little boogie there out on the pitch. And this game just keeps swinging. Swinging back and forth. And again, you have to say, Unif, probably back on top. Very, very interesting point in this game, as you can see. Here we go. Gladiators going at a clip over nine. They are 73 for five after eight, and you can see they kind of started off, they got up there at sevens, and it's flatlined generally. They'll be looking for 
a, a big couple of overs here. You'd think they want to get up to at least 90, I think 93. Well, they want 10 off, 10 off each over, I'd say, at the very least. 93 could be a tough score to chase. As we've heard on the chat from Ramesh Sathisan, who knows his ground very well, he said 80-90 can be a difficult chase. And we're going to see Haider Ali back into the attack, and I, I like to see this. He looked really good in his first over. And here he comes, bowling to the captain. It's a beautiful ball, but it's been punched down the ground. They're going to get one. I've just got to say, I really like his action. I really like his shape. Nice same position, a little bit of away movement. And yet, Dave's got it. Commentator's curse again. I'm on form for the curse. It's a real thing, isn't it? I always thought when people said it, I was like, oh, it's not a real thing. Just saying that now I'm in here. Sure is. As Hyder Ali comes again. Oh, that's a beautiful ball. It's hitting on the pad, probably just sliding down leg side. Oh, it's gone for four leg buys. It might even been off the bat. I'm not sure. I didn't see the signal from umpire Andrew Begg there if it's a leg buys off the, off the bat, but. It has flown down to the third man region and there's been a misfield. It's gone for four. So that's very handy runs. That's not what UNEF's needed at the moment. And just keep an eye on that clock. They've got two, just around two and a half minutes to bowl four balls. I mean, they should get it. They should get it done. But if there's any extras or any holdups, then it could be ish, iffy. Hyder Rally coming in again. Bit of short, it's up. It's going to be caught and bowled. Surely it is. That is well bowled. Just rushed him a little bit for pace. Ahmed just had no idea. Tried to tried to pull it over mid-wicket and just got a high, right high up on the spice of the bat. Popped it straight back to Ali and he gets a deserved wicket. I think he, he earned that. That will give UNEFs an extra minute as well because it's a six wickets fallen. So they should be okay time-wise. We see. He's got, a, he's got a bit of pace. He gets it through quicker than you think. And uh, he's... Very, very simple return catch. So we've got some drumming going on in the background, some live music. You'd love to see it. It's a good atmosphere here in Bucharest today. Just need the sun to pop its head out from these clouds and we'll be ready to go. But what a great start. I'm really enjoying this first match of the tournament. And I've got to say, very, very impressed by Uno. I think they are. And you never know what to expect with these new teams and on the big stage, but they look really good. Budica is the new batter. He'll be facing Hyder Ali. Here he comes. It's a very good ball. And good in him. But very, played really well, dealt with well. Just opened the face on that one and pushed it for one. Like you feel gladiators really need to go big here. I think they need to be aggressive. They've got four wickets in hand. I'm not sure what the rest of their batting's like. But they need to get themselves up to that 90-95 mark. Hyder Ali. Two balls left in his spell. It's been a good spell so far. It's a good ball. It's hitting on the pad. It's not going to be out. It's down leg side. There could be a run out chance here. Oh, it could be overthrows too. It's popped off the side of the pitch. Uh, just going to stick with one leg by. Yeah, really good spell from Hyder Ali here. He's looking extremely good. I think he's one to watch in this tournament. Note him down. He's just got a, a beautiful, fluent action. It's been the last ball of his spell. Going to Budica. It's going to be a while. There is the curse again. <laughs> so it won't be the last ball of his spell. He will bowl one more now. But all in all, he's, he's bowled really well. Budica here, new batter, one off one. They need something from him. They need an aggressive stroke for him. Oh, it's a beautiful ball. It's hit him on the pad. It's hit... Looked pretty close to me, unless there was some bat on it. I think they might have got some bat on that. It looks like he has. Yes, he's got some bat on it. So it was a very good ball. Asking questions again. Haider Ali, one for 15 off his two overs. A fantastic spell. And the score is 82 for six after nine. They've just snuck in with the time. They've got through 25 seconds remaining, so they will not be penalty runs. Have a look at the bowling scorecard here. And you've got to say, it's been, been pretty good bowling. Hyder Ali, 1 for 15. Ricky Gill, 1 for 23. A little bit expensive. I mean, the pick of the bowl is Abdul Rahman, 2 for 17. Fantastic. Wickets have been shared. Adil Muhammad, 1 for 19. And Usman Ali, 1 for 5. And you think Usman Ali will bowl this 
this uh, this over. Yes, he is. He's bowling the tenth. Usman Ali, he was excellent in his first over, one for five. So final over this innings, and what a innings it has been to start this tournament. Usman Ali here coming in, bowling to Budika. It's a good ball, hard to get away. They look at takes it. It's a mix up. Oh, it's a misfield as well. So the scamper through for one. Good ball, hard to get that one away. Angled in the body. I mean, unless you get down to one knee and try and try and punch that over mid wicket. I mean, there's a man out there as well. So risky. I like this field too. It's Nelly coming in. Ball into the captain's view now. Again, asking questions, but it's been missed by the keeper. I think that's clipped a bit of the pad on the way through. Interesting to see what they call this. Yeah, leg by is called. Not giving him a lot of room. I think the only thing you can do as the batter here is to step across and just work with the angle and try and hit it onto the leg side. And if it was me, I'd probably be trying to step across and hit it square, square leg. There's a big gap out there. There's a deep mid wicket and there's a deep long on, wide long on, but there's no one out there at that square leg boundary. So with this left arm angle, here he comes. There it is again. There he's got it. He's done it. Exactly what I was saying. It's only going to be one. He hasn't got quite all of it. But that's the right idea, I think. Probably could have taken a slightly earlier movement and tried to turn it around that corner a bit more. It's hard for me to see the angle of where that outfielder is. I, th I think he's at a mid-wicket. A deep mid-wicket rather than a deep square leg. So kind of behind square on the leg side, there's a big gap. That's what I'd be aiming for. It was been again. There it is. Yeah, he's got it. He's, he's figured it out, but he hasn't quite got it either. Hit that to, to fine leg. But they, they've got the right idea here. They've seen there's a gap out there. That's their best option with that angle, and they're going for it, but they're not quite executing. Nevertheless, score is ticking up there. As we said, 80-90 can be a different, a uh, difficult total to chase in a T10, especially in your first game under uh, with the cameras, the, a bit of extra pressure. Two balls left in this inning. Susan Ali coming in, bowling to Budica. That's a really good ball. It's up, it's sky. The bowler is going to take an easy catch. And there he is, dancing away again. You love to see that. Good excitement. He throws it up and catches it again just for good measure. But really good pressure bowling here. Excellent death bowling, not giving the batters much to work with. And that is Budica on his way. You can see he just keeps angling it in, just doesn't get any of it. Straight up. And it's simple regulation catch for the bowler. And maybe you don't, not a regulation dance. I'd like to see it. Exciting times here. So there you have it. This one, Ali. What a blinder. He's having two for eight, 1.5. One ball left in this innings. It is going to be Rasika Mendes who will be facing it. Now can he get squeeze a boundary from somewhere and get them up to that 90, that psychological mark of 90? Here he comes. Usman Ali to Mendes. Last ball of the innings. Beautiful ball, but it's an awesome, excellent shot. It's going to go all the way. It's six runs. What a shot. It's exactly what the Gladiators needed. It was not a bad ball. It was right up there in the block hole, angling in, but Mendes just goes bang. He picks it up early and punches it over long on for six. It's exactly what the Gladiators need. They are going to finish on 92. And you've got to say it's one of those, one of those targets. They started slow. But they've picked it up a little bit in those final overs. Well played from Cosman Xavier, the captain, just holding up an end, getting off strike, doing what he does. You can see here, it's a good ball, attacking those stumps. Just comes down a couple of paces and just punches it over long on. Just clears the boundary. Really, really strong finish for the Gladiators, you've got to say. But what a fantastic first innings of cricket. If you, you know, you've got to be pretty happy. You've got to be pretty happy with how that's gone. First time out on the network. On the big stage, they held their nerve. You can see here, Hyder Ali started really well. He, was, I was very impressed by him. This was a good shot, slapped over cover. They did manage to squeeze out a couple of boundaries. Oh, that, yeah, that was it. That was his, his stock ball. He just had that beautiful uh, away shape, and he looked really good. Ricky Gill came in and also looked pretty good. Interesting action there. He rolled a couple of wides, but I think all in all, the the UNF's team were pretty disciplined. And that's a really good ball. They also played well. And, and you know, they look at that sharp fielding. That's one thing I did like from the UNF's team. They were sharp in the field. They didn't really miss that much. A few throws like this, a couple of overthrows, 
but their ground fielding especially was very, very good. And you know, the Gladiators struggled a little bit early. I felt like they were they were a bit slow out of the blocks. And this was a real characteristic of the UNF's bowling innings. They attacked those stumps, that little inward sort of induckers. And this was the pick of the balls for me, one of them, when he actually released the ball, Abdul Rahman. He ended up with two wickets, bowled really, really well, built pressure. He was excellent. And he's one to watch throughout this tournament as well. But you've got to say, the UNF's bowling unit do look quality, and their fielding looks good. Really, really interested to see how they go with the bat. Here he is, Raman again. You see him it's a, it's struck pretty well. And that was one that did go all the way to the boundary. You saw the Gladiators started to pick up in the middle of their, in the middle of overs after a slow start. They sort of took the run rate up from six, seven to eight, nine, which they needed to do. But this man kept asking questions. Look at that shape, really, really nice, genuine edge. And he just had the ball talking for his two overs. Yeah, that, that, yeah, these two balls were the balls of the day for me. This one cut him in half, and the next one is almost a carbon copy, just a little bit better. You'll see it knocking him over. Yeah, that's the one. What a fantastic ball from Raymond, and there he goes off flying into the into the sunset. And then a deal came on, and I was really impressed with his leggies. See again, another another good fielding out there in the deep. Really, really impressive stuff. But he looked good as well. A deal. I just feel like they've got a good balanced bowling unit. Gladiators started to counter-attack. Uh, this one went straight up. There was no one there. It fell in the, in the Bermuda Triangle. But I feel oh, it's, it's really hard to say who's taking the chocolates in this first inning. And that one was very close. I'm not sure there may be an inside edge on it, but it looked pretty close to me. But there we go. This is punch down the ground. This is when the captain, Captain Courageous, Cosmo Zabu came in. He played a really good job holding up an end and it's a bad blow out there. Classic easy head moment. And this man, you've got to take you out of this man, Usman Ali. He came on and didn't he bowl well. He built pressure. He knocked it down. So this first one was a wide. But he was fantastic. He got back on it. I think he went for five in his first over, taking a wicket. Just kept asking questions. But I mean, this was one of the highlights as well. Pereira's like back with back cuts. They were just phenomenal. Getting down on one knee and punching it out to that uh, deep backward point boundary. And then this one, Usman Ali just kept asking questions. Pereira had to go right up there in the block hole and knocked him over. Excellent work. Hyder Ali back on took another wicket. So this is, you know, it just, it is a very, it was an up and down game, peaks and troughs. You never really knew who was quite on top. Started with UNAFs, Gladiators fought back, UNAFs fought back, Gladiators fought back, and here we are. So we end the first innings of this tournament, and what a great start it was. Have a quick look at the batting scorecard here. I mean, early on they struggled a little bit. Tazeeb got off to a decent start, but it was really Kadka, Pereira, and the captain, Cosmin Zavu, who took him, I mean, Pereira was probably the pick of the batters. He did score the highest score, but he looked good, didn't he? But I think you can't underestimate Cosmin Xavier's role coming in and st steadying the ship. 11 off 12, just turning the strike over and doing a real job for his team. It's exactly what the Gladiators needed from him, and he did it well. 11 wides, mm, you know, it's not too bad. Probably could have been a little bit more efficient, but for the first time out on the network under, under the out of pressure of the cameras. Pretty, really good. We have a look at the bowling scorecard. And as I said, Abdul Rahman and Usman Ali, I mean, these two were the pick of the bowlers for me. Rahman, two overs, uh, two for 17, and Usman Ali, two overs, two for 14. They bowled really, really well. As I said, Haider Ali looked very good, and, and Adil Muhammad looked very good. Ricky Gill, a little bit expensive, but still looking pretty good. All in all, you'd have to say, you'd have to have a very good bowling unit. They look balanced, and they look very, very capable. So there you have it. Halfway through this first match, Bucharest Gladiators have put 92 for 7 on the board. It's, it's anyone's game right now. 92 can be a tough a tough chase. But at the same time, you, know, you never know. We don't know what to expect from the UNF batting lineup. So let's see. We're going to have to wait and see. But very exciting times in this European Cricket Series, Romania. I am Stefan Gooch, and I will be back with you in just a few moments as we have this mid-innings break. Ciao for now.
European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode, and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back, European Cricket lovers, to Bucharest for the first day of the Romanian European Cricket Series here. And what a start we've had so far. We saw the Bucharest Gladiators, the reigning champions. They knocked, they, they knocked up 92 in the end. Target will be 93. UNEFs, we have never seen them bat before, but I've got to say, I was very, very impressed how they went about it in the field and with their bowling unit. So, exciting times here. And it's going to be Joshua Kadka to open the bowling for the Gladiators. There he goes, he's coming left arm. Oh, we've had another one. We've got another false start. That must be the fifth or sixth of the day so far. Not sure what it is. He's going to be bowling to Ricky Gill. We saw Ricky with the ball. He bowled reasonably well. Can he contribute with the bat? That is the question now. So we, we try again. Here we go. For one of the innings. We kind of looked, looked his run up again there. And it's been kind of short on the leg stump, but it's just been worked back at a square. They won't take a run. Probably a little bit risky at this point. Just take your time. It does look like he had a bit of an issue with his run up there. Couldn't quite get. To the, to his correct footing. So there you have it. UNFs need 93 runs in 59 balls, 9.45 per over. What can they do? Here he comes, Kadka again. Oh, it's a beautiful ball, and he has castled him. That is a phenomenal cricket ball. He's just angled that out, and the shape back down the line, a full Yorker length. That is not a ball you want to get in the first couple of balls you go out there in innings. And you've got to say, that is just a fantastic, fantastic ball. You see that length. That's right on the popping crease length. Perfect Yorker. It, he, when he let it go, it looked like it was going to be going down outside off stump and it's just tailed back down the line and just clean, bold in middle stump. So Ricky Gill will not contribute at all with the bat. He's gone for a duck. And Gladiators strike early. What a fantastic start for them. I mean... You can't really blame Ricky Gill for that. That is almost, that's almost an unplayable delivery at this point. 
from a left armour to bring it back down the line like that, that is very dangerous. It, that's some very good signs for Kadka as well. And there is a lot of shape out there. This, the ball is swinging around. They're using these grizzly balls. They are swinging. There is a bit of moisture in the air. It's, it's some good conditions for the bowls at the moment. Like Gladiators here, they're attacking. They've got a slip in place. Their two fielders outside the circle are a, a very fine leg. And they have a long on. And then it's just basically a ring field. They've got a mid off, a cover, a point, a, a gully, a slip. Here he comes again. Kadka bowling to alarm and it's another false start. Just seems to be having some problems with his run up. I don't think that's anything to do with the surface or anything like that. But it does look like he's just getting a little bit just finding himself on the wrong foot when he's going into his delivery stride. So let's see if he can get that right. But a very good sign for him in the, in the, in the early stages of his spell. It's another very good ball, but it's a beautiful shot. It's been pumped over long on. That's six runs. That is an incredible shot. It was not a bad ball at all. It was up there in the block hole. There was that tail in again, and he's just used that swing. And, and Shahab Alam has just played the shot of the day for me. That's not an easy shot to play. An on drive, lofted on drive, just picked it up early. Right out of the meat of the bat and a maximum to start off for him. Here he comes again. What a contest we got here. It's too short, but he's got it through. He's dug that one in. Oh, it's spicy out there. You can hear it. You can hear it. There's a lot of chirp. There's a lot of chatter. We love this. Oh, he's pretty lucky to get away with that. That must be the one for the over. Could be arguing that it might be a wide. I have to have another look at it, but he's got away with it. Quite getting it through now, actually. He's, he's increased his pace. He's, he's bowling pretty nippy stuff there. He comes again. Kadka. Oh, that one's been. It's coming around. It's going to go for six again. Oh, that's effortless. That's unbelievable. Just short of a length. Kind of didn't really get up, stayed low. And. Alarm has just, just just kind of punched it, a, a bottom hand jab. And when he first hit it, I thought that's probably going to only land around the 30-yard circle, but it just kept going. He's got it right out of the meat of the bat, and it's gone about two metres over the boundary. What a phenomenal shot that is, and what a start for Unifs. Alarm looking very, very dangerous. He's 12 off three, two Maximos already. And here we go, Kajka, last ball of the first over. He's got again. Ooh, he's got it away. It's almost played on. And that would have been an interesting one. It's the bottom edge onto his inner thigh pad, rolling back towards the stumps. I'm not sure if anyone saw in the test match, the Ashes, the way that Harry Brook got out to Nathan Lyon, where it's come off his thigh pad, popped up, back of the leg, and then hit the stumps. It could have been something similar as we get to the end of the first over of this innings. And there you go. There you see it, 114 matches since we've had a golden ball. Could this be the one? It's got that kind of feeling about it, you know. I know it's early to say. But it does have that kind of feeling about it. I think this is going to go to the wire. Just got that feeling. 12 for one after one. Kadka, yeah, you know, not a bad over, but Alarm really did get on top of him there. He looks dangerous. Very, very evenly poised at the moment. And it's going to be man meet Coley to bowl the second over. Very accomplished bowler. Oh, it's a beautiful ball. That is a peach. That is an absolute peach. You can't do a lot with that. He's just angled that in, taking it away. A little bit of movement off the seam. Watch it again. He won't be able to see it from this angle. But that is just, that's unplayable. First ball of the innings. He did not want to get one of them. He did well not to nick it, to be honest. That is phenomenal ball. Again, you see that shape. There is a, there's something in it for the bowlers here. If you can control the swinging ball, you've got a lot on the plate here. Here comes Van Meek Coley again. Another very good ball, excellent bowling. He's just hanging it out there, wide enough, wide and full, bringing the, the batter into the stroke, but he just got that extra away shape, hard to get onto that. It's very, very good T10 bowling. We've seen him play a lot. He's a, he's a canny operator, Mammy Coley. He's been around for a long time. We've seen him in many different competitions. Here he comes again. Oh, it's just inside, I think. He's going to be called a wide. Probably a little bit harsh, but, but let's have another look at it. Might have just taken that wide line on the way through. But again, nice shape away from the batter. Oh, 
I really, think, I really like to see him. I mean, Coley bowling this sort of middle stump line, taking it away. He's getting a little bit off the pitch. He's getting a bit of extra bounce. Here he comes again, man. Mick Coley bowling. Oh, it's another one. Look at that take off. That's what I'm saying. There's a bit of extra bounce at that end. It really takes off. The keeper's taking that around chest height. It's not a short ball at all. Batter's coming forward and it's just really, just really taking off that deck. Good contest here. Pressure is building. Coley bowling a really good second over here for Gladiators. It's a beautiful ball. It's a genuine edge. It's going to go over the top of slip. They've got to slip in for that. But again, as it just gets that extra bounce, there's no chance of a glove on that. Just went too fast and too high. And it races away to the boundary for four runs. A little bit of pressure eased there. That's exactly what UNEF's needed. They needed a boundary to ease the pressure. It's a really good ball. You see it just take off. I think the keeper and the slip need to be back a bit further than that because they're, they're pretty close. And that, there's a lot of extra bounce on that end. He is getting it to really rip off that, off that deck. Here he comes. They get a beautiful ball. It's good inside edge. Not not time. They might come back for two here. It's picked up in the in the deep. They're thinking about it. No, they're going to stick with one. Probably smart. Fantastic over here. What a fantastic battle. The press. It's high pressure out there. You can see it. You can feel it. It's a pressure cooker. It's exactly the kind of game you want to kick off the tournament. Coley doing a fantastic job here. He's bowling to Alarm, who looked very dangerous in that first over hit. Two sixes. Here he comes. He's bowled it. He's gone very hard. That's, again, that's the biggest of them all. He has absolutely belted that. That's gone 15 rows back. It's not a bad ball again, but Alarm is just onto it quick as a flash. What a shot. UNEF's 24 for one off two. On top of this game, Coley just, just blowing out his fingers a little bit with that last ball. You have to say it was a good over. I'm still a bit oh, alarm. What a what a bat up! He is really taking this this game by the scruff of the neck. He's on 18 off just five deliveries. Wow, it's all happening. Have a look at the standings. Not very really relevant at the moment, considering there has not been a game finished. One of the interesting things about this tournament, we've got some new teams in. You can see Giamata. So that's an offshoot from Cluj. They've got a few old Cluj players, and they've started a new team. We've got Transylvania. Zinatis, I think that's how you pronounce it. There's the Super Kings. There's, a, there's a, a bunch of new teams. It's very exciting for this tournament. Really looking forward to seeing them. But for now, the action is on this match. And what a match it's turning out to be. Tazibo Hassan coming into bowl. It's a very good ball. It's just that area again, isn't it? He's bowling to Gasser at the moment. That area is where you want it. You, is that a way swing, natural away swing? Just wide. I mean, there is a huge gap out there over cover. That's where I'd be aiming right now. You need to get up and under, but there's a big gap out there. He comes again. To see, to see. Oh, it's a beautiful ball. It's hit him. It's going to be too high. It's not going to be out, but it's, it's a little bit of a change up there. Slow ball, I think. Very well bowled. This, this game has got me on the edge of my seat. I hope it does for you too, all out there. It's really building into a great first game of this tournament. And these next couple of overs are so important. Can Gladiators get on top? Can Alarm still keep hitting these massive sixes? Time will tell. It's a good ball, really good ball. Batter just loses his shape there. Yes, sir. He's just he's not in a good position to hit that ball. It was it was there to hit. There's that little bit of away movement still, but it was a, it was a half volley. Uh, I'd like to see that hit over the top. Just big pressure situation at the moment. To see a great start. He's three dots in a row. Comes in again to Yasir. It's a full one. He's picked that up. That's going to go all the way. That is six runs. And what a shot. And you can see the UNES players celebrating over there. They're very happy. They like to start. And why wouldn't you? They're moving to 30. That's a, it's a fantastic shot. I mean, it's not a great ball. Full toss on the leg stump. And it has been dispatched accordingly. So there, that's what he needed. Yes, he needed that. Just a bit of a release. He was starting to build a bit of pressure on himself. But that six really does ease the pressure. I have to say, UNAF's looking good at the moment. Gladiators really need a breakthrough. They can't let this partnership start to build too long because these guys don't look like they're going to muck it. They're mucking around. Here he comes again. Tazib. Going to Yasser again. Wide ball. Can't give him any freebies. That's a freebie. 
a very interesting time for the Gladiators. They are very experienced operators. They've been around for a long time. They're the, they won the competition last year. They know what they're doing. They need to really tap into that experience, stem this flow. It's a good ball, but it's been struck well. It's going to go over the infield. Is it going to go all the way? It's one bounce, and it's over the boundary. Four runs. That's what I was. That's what I was talking about. There's a big. I mean, the entire field on the offside is up. They've got no one out in that boundary. There's a big gap out there. I think that's the area they need to be trying to aim at with that away swing. They can hit with the swing. They have forced the fielding change now, so there will be a deep extra cover on the boundary now. You see that? Like it's just a. It's just a good way. It's a good place to play. Get up and under. There's no one out there. He didn't quite get all of it. But he got enough. Here he comes again. It's a full toss. That might be a no ball. He's turned around the corner. It's going to go all the way. It's been called. It is a minimo. It was a seven. He's done it. That's incredible. It's a full toss. It's a no ball on the hip. It's been turned around the corner. Uh, and it's oh, it's been dealt with. That's six, right? It's seven runs off one ball. The wheels are falling off for the Gladiators. I can't even remember what the, what the guys call it. It's not a minimo. That was a four and no ball. This is a double extra maximum. I don't even know. But it's all happening. And Yassir just races to 21 off 11. And they are making a stand here. Here he goes. He's gone again. It's a, very, it's a good comeback. That is a good ball. But what an over for UNEFs. They've taken a obvious lead in this match now. They're 42 for one off three overs. Power play is finished. What an over. Tazeem, after bowling three dot balls, he's gone for 18 off his first over. Wow. What can you say? You see it here. The UNF's going at 14s. They are well on top here. These two batters look very dangerous. What a fantastic inclusion into this tournament. Exciting cricket from these guys. Really looking forward to it, seeing how they go in this tournament. You have to say, they, they look like they've got something to them. That's for sure. They're no, no one-trick pony. So this is a huge over. This needs the Gladiators want to get back in, on top in this game. They need this needs to be a very tight over. One or two wickets and not a lot of runs. They could could stem the flow, but right now, look at this. 21 off 12 and 18 off 5. Looking very, very dangerous. It's going to be Ahmed. Wakas Ahmed. It's a full toss. It's been punched down the ground. It's not going to be a no ball. It might go for four. There's two men converging. They almost run into each other. But they have stopped. It could be a run out. And no, they've got back. They're going to get two. They might even be checking the height on this one. I think it was okay. It looked like it was dipping at the last moment. It wasn't a great ball. Probably, I mean, if it gets only two runs off it, then probably a, a result for the bowler. I think they are. They are having a, having a chat on the walkie-talkies. Uh, no, I think it's been a, just a fair ball. I think that's the right call. So, Waka Ahmed again coming in. He's very wide on the crease there. It's been edged down to third man. One bounce. He will save it. Oh, he's getting very close to that, that return crease there. He needs to be careful. And they are extra wide as well. He's come right, right on the side of that pitch there. Interesting strategy. Does need to be careful. If any of part of that back foot lands over the return crease and actually lands, then it will be a judge no ball. Here he comes again. Let's see if he, he stays that wide. He looks like he's running up on a very big angle. He is wide. That's a good ball, though. It's a much better ball. Sneaks it inside the tram line. It's not going to be a wide. Handy and very valuable dot ball for the Gladiators. And g'day to Keanu in there. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Hello to everybody else in the chat. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm Stefan Gooch filling in for our normal commentators. And for Mr. Maximo, he has had some issues with his flight and it got cancelled and he'll be here later today. But for now, it's me. Here he comes, Ahmed. Bowls another slow full toss. It's been whipped away onto the leg side. They will settle for one. Needs to be careful. Needs to be careful. I mean, the low full toss, if executed well, can be a very good ball in T10. But if, you know, it's a very small margin for error. And if you get it wrong, you can get it really wrong. What a contest. 47 runs in 38 balls. Here we go. Ahmed again. Digs it in. I think that's probably called a wide. It hasn't at this stage really dug that one in. 
felt like it might have passed outside the tram line. But umpire's in a better position than me, and I know what it can be like umpiring out there. It can be difficult. Yeah, touch and go. Umpire's calling that. It's also quite close to shoulder height, maybe just underneath. So in the end, an effective ball, a dot ball. I mean, again, it's a good eye. He's picked that up. That is a huge shot straight over my head. That's gone another 15 rows back. Alarm is on fire here. That is a huge Maximo. He's picked that up off a length and just punished it back over the bowler's head. What a shot. These two are looking very, very dangerous in fine touch. Army goes for 10 off his first. Not a bad over, but just again, that six on that last ball of the over makes it a bit of a difficult one. What a shot. I, mean, I, I haven't seen anyone this quick on the on the drive for a long time. He just straight into position, swinging through the line. A very powerful guy. Absolutely belted it. Huge, huge hits. There's six on any ground in the world. It's going 20, 25 metres over the boundary. Okay, so... It looks like Joshua Kudke is going to come back on. We saw him bowl a good first over. He got that in shape. It's always hard that left arm bowl into a right hander. If you can angle it back down the line, it's always very hard to play. So I don't mind this. He comes. He's bowling to Yassir. Digs it in. It's been. It's up in the air. It's very high. There's two men coming around. This is going to be caught. He's got in. He's caught in. Easy regulation catch in the outfield. It wasn't a great ball. But the batter has not got much of it, and he's skied it out to deep mid-wicket, and a very regulation catch has been taken. So there you go. That's the wicket they needed. Yes, he is gone. Not after a fantastic contribution. See it again, just, a, just short, just doesn't get it. Bit of a top edge. It was there to hit. I mean, it really was there to hit, but just couldn't quite make the most of it. So that's the wicket they needed. Gladiators strike back. 52 for two. Haider Ali coming into the crease. He bowled a very good spell earlier. I was very impressed with him. Let's see what he can do with the bat. We don't know yet. <laughs> Definitely not the best ball he's bowled, but they can be effective balls in T10. Got to go for it. Got to go after it. Could always bring false shots. See, here we go. Hyder Ali facing up for his first ball. Kadka's got two now. He's going again. That's a rank long hop. <laughs> I don't even I think he's just pitched that near his own feet. And it's been called a no ball. I'm not sure what whether that's for uh, overstepping. It must be a front foot no ball. Because that would unless unless that first ball was called. No, it wasn't up high enough. I think it must have been a front foot no ball. Anyway, it's going to be a free hit. So here he comes. Can Hyder Ali make the most of this free hit? It's a good ball. He's belted it. That's, it's going straight up. It's really high. It's not going to be caught because it's a free hit. But they're going to come back for two. That's actually going out to the boundary. Is it going to go over? No, they've recovered. They'll come back for two. I really thought he got all of that at first. It felt like he smashed it off the middle, but it just went very, very high. So two runs off the free hit. Comes again, Kadka, Cup, bowling to Ali. Another false start. Just really struggling with that run-up. Can't quite get there in time. This is an interesting moment in the game right now. Field is long off. Deep extra cover, a cover, a point. A deep third man, a short fine leg, square leg, a deep mid-wicket, and a long on. Here we go. Cad Cup coming into Ali. It's a good ball. That's a... I don't even know what's happened there. Has that hit something? That's a phenomenal ball. He keeps bringing it back down the line. This one's gone away from the right-hander. Just just nipped away. I feel like it might have clipped something on the way through. Otherwise, maybe he rolled the fingers on Let's have a look. He has. Look, he's rolled that finger on it. That's a, a, an amazing ball. It's just a cut-up. You can see, actually, how he's holding it in his hand. He's he's rolled his fingers down it, and it's cut. It's a, it's a really, really good ball. It's also hit the seam on the way through. Impressive bowling from Kadka. Here we go again. It's wide. It's not a good ball. He's floated it outside the off stump too far. You know, if you're the 
Gladiators right now, you really want another wicket. Another wicket would start to, to swing the momentum back in your favour. But right now, you have to say UNEFs have got all the momentum. They're batting really well. And with that man, Alarm there, you know, it could be over pretty quickly. It's a good ball. It's headed straight up. There's, surely there's going to be caught. There's three men converging. Third man's dropped him. He's dropped the regulation chance. That is unfortunate for the Gladiators. They needed that. Oh, that's exactly what they would have needed. But it's been dropped by Pereira, who was so good with the bat earlier. You have to say, it's a regulation catch. He did have to make a little bit of ground up coming in off the boundary, but he made it there in time. He went very high. You can see him coming in. He's got a lot of time. Doesn't really settle himself, and he's on the move when he tries to catch it. Big let off, big let off. Brings the danger man onto strike. Oh, he's got, he's wound up, and he's gone for it, but it's a good ball. And just beats the outside edge, so Kadka's going to get a valuable dot ball. It was in the zone. That's the area that he's been hitting them. Clears that front pad. Both teams, both teams up and about right now. There's a lot of noise coming out of the field and out of the dugout. It's electric energy here. Last ball of Kadka's spell. He's been pretty good. Can he finish it with a... Dot ball or a wicket, and he's going. He's not. He's belted us up. There's a man coming around. It's going to be caught. It looks like it's going to be caught. He's taking it. He's got it. He just hasn't quite got hold of that alarm. What a wicket! What a way to finish his spell, Kaka. Take it, bow. He's going to finish with three wickets, and a very, very good catch out there. High pressure, very close to the rope. Any step backwards, and it would have been six. See it again here. It's well directed ball. It just kind of. Angles across him. He doesn't quite get it. It goes very, very high, but he picks him out on the rope. And made no mistake there in the outfield. And a huge moment in this match, you have to say. Shahab Alam played extremely well. He was the danger man. He felt if he was in for a couple more overs, then this match could be finished quite quickly. But they've managed to remove him. And now it's going to be new batter, Usman Ali, I think. No, Adil Muhammad. It's going to be Adil Muhammad coming in. And it's over. Yep, we've got it right. Should be Haida Ali on strike here. So 57 for three at the halfway point of this second innings. And Cosman Zavier, the captain, is coming on. He did a really good job with the bat, actually. He did exactly what Gladiators needed from him, which was to steady the ship, hold up an end, get turn over the strike, and, and just be there while the other guys hit some big aggressive shots. So here he comes. He's going to be bowling to Haider Ali. What a moment in this game. Oh, it's a pretty good start. It's been punched away out to the... Oh, it's, oh, it's almost gone for six. Not a too not too bad of a ball, just dragged down a little bit, but onto it like a flash was Hyder Ali slapped it away through extra cover. And one bounce over the boundary for four. You see it here. Yeah, a little bit wide, a little bit short. Almost goes for six. Just stay, bounces inside. Can't afford many of them. Score moves up to 61. Well, it's the same ball again. He's got away with it. No, he's gonna be called a wide. Really needs to get this right, Cosman Zavu. It's too short, it's too wide, it's too easy. I mean, they've got this deep extra cover. That's the only protection they've got out there on the boundary except for the long off. That's a much better ball. That's the area he needs to be in. He needs to be asking the question. I mean, if, if Haider Ali goes for an aggressive shot to that, then it brings LBW, it brings Bold into the game. Those short, wide ones are just too easy. They're money for jam here at this level. So a good comeback. That's a good ball. It's been whipped away. There is a man out there. Should just be one. But again, that's the area he needs to be attacking. Full and straight. Asking questions. Bringing false shots out from the batter. Okay. Mohammed will be facing his first ball. Adil Mohammed. He bowled well as well. Good leg spinner. He looked really good. Let's see what he can do with the bat. Unif's right on top here. 30 runs in 27 balls required. I just need to keep wickets in hand here. It's a pretty good ball. It's been slapped away. They're going to get one out to the outfielders. Coley does the work out long off. 
Uh, that's Kadkar out here in front of me. He bowled well, didn't he? Got three wickets. Xavier to Ali here. It's a good ball, but he's got down on one knee and he slog swept that back with a square. That's going to go all the way. Six runs. Uh, he's a Maximo. It's a brilliant shot. It wasn't too bad of a ball, but he was on it like a flash. You can see them over there, UNEFs. They're feeling confident in their first match. What a crazy victory this would be if a team that's never played on the network, no one knew what to expect, comes out and knocks off the reigning champion's first game of this tournament. Certainly makes it exciting. I'm excited. It is absolutely incredible cricket we're seeing here. And you'd have to say, UNEFs just needing 23 runs. They should be able to knock this off here. They should be able to do it. Hyder Ali facing, oh, it's, it's wide. It's full. It's a full toss on leg stump. And it's been dealt with. It's turned around the corner, four runs. You've got to say, Cosman Xavier, it's been an expensive over. It's exactly what they didn't need. Gladiators reeling. UNEF's on top. It looks like they're going to run away with this first win. What an effort by them. They look like a real outfit. I'm really impressed by them. 74 for three after six. Have a quick look at the batting scorecard. You can see some handy contributions after Ricky Gill went for a duck off just two balls. Mohamed Yassir, he batted really well. Smashed 22 off 15, some huge shots. Shahab Alam, he set these innings up. 27 off 11 with some of the biggest sixes I've seen in a long time. And now Haider Ali on 18. Doing a job for his team. Like I said, the UNF's no slouch. No slouch. Challenging the reigning champions. I know, maybe not at their, at their strongest at the moment. But so, still, first time on the network. I think this team is one to watch for sure. Very interesting stuff. Okay, so we're going to see Rasika Mendes now into the attack. Bowling to Adil Muhammad. 19 runs required in four overs. Oh, it's a good ball. It's a good ball. It was nice slingy action there. I don't mind that. Just getting it through. Just short of a length. Adil clearing that front pad. But dot balls is what they need. They need wickets and dot balls. You know, T10 can swing so quickly. They can just bowl one over, grab a couple of wickets, a couple of dot balls. Put the pressure on again. Here he comes, Mendes. That's going to be a wide ball. That is exactly what I am not talking about. You can't give him free stuff at this point. You can't give him anything for free. They're too far on top of this match. A lot of energy coming out of both teams still. Both teams still feel like they're in the game here. For me, UNEFs are definitely ahead of here. One big shot. Here we go. That's another wide. It's not good bowling. He's getting quite a lot of shape, but just needs to get that line right. Too wide. It's not what you need right now. I just feel like Gladiators are just spending this at the moment. You know, they're just giving it too easy. But take nothing away from UNEFs. They've batted fantastically at the moment. Here we go. Bendis again. That's a good ball. I don't mind this coming around the wicket with that shape. It's hard to get away. They don't have a lot of protection out on the boundary, especially square on the offside. They've got this deep extra cover and this long off. And so they've kind of they've covered this 30-meter area here, but anything square, there's nothing there. So they've got a, a cover point and a backward point. So there's nothing out on the boundary there. And here he comes around the wicket again. Oh, that's probably going to be called a wide as well. The batter is appealing for wide. It's probably unnecessary. Umpire is in a good position to see it himself. He's getting a lot of swing. He just needs to control the swing. It's too much. He's coming around the wicket, so he's already got that natural angle. Plus, he's swinging the ball away. He needs to adjust that line. In fact, it's a, it's a pretty interesting field because they've got a deep mid wicket and a long on. A long on. And he's bowling way outside off stump. And they don't have any protection on that boundary. That's a better line. They're going to take a quick single. He's going to run. It's a run out for sure. And we'll have to see who's run out. Oh, he's barbecued him. He has barbecued him. That's a big moment, actually. Hyder Ali has been run out. A deal has just hit one to the fielder and taken off. And there was no real communication. So he's, you see it here. It's a better line. Still a bit short. But he just takes off. 
he just takes off and Hodorelli is not interested, but he manages to cross him on the wicket. And that's very, very disappointing. And uh, could this be another twist in the game? Because Haider Ali was the one who was looking really dangerous at the moment. It's very, very unlucky. So new batter is Wakas Rana. That's unfortunate, isn't it, for... UNEF, so it was really unnecessary. Now you've got two more newer batters, guys who may be not as aggressive and not able to hit those big shots. So it'd be very interesting to see what happens here. There's a little little window here for the Gladiators to stem the flow and, and turn the tide a little bit and potentially start to build a bit more pressure. You never know. You never know when it gets down to these final overs what happens. One thing I would say is they just need to make sure they're not giving away any extras here, the Gladiators. They can't afford to give away any freebies. Here he comes, Mendes to Muhammad. It's not a bad ball. It's a little bit full toss on the, on the legs. It hasn't been put away. It's, they're going to run away for one leg by. They could definitely have got more off that. Just whip it around the corner, get a bit of bat on it. That could have gone anywhere towards any boundary, really, on that leg side. The intent wasn't there, but I mean, he doesn't need to worry too much about boundaries. They only need 15 runs and 20 balls, so singles will do it. So maybe smart stuff. Rana to face his first ball here. That's Oh, it's a beautiful shot. There's a man coming around. He's going to be caught. He's got him. He's caught it. He hit it pretty well. Actually, he hit it better than I think anyone expected. I thought he was just going to punch it and it just kept going. And uh, That's Coley out there on the boundary. has taken a sharp catch. And Rana is going to have to go first ball. Is it Rana? No, it's a deal. It's a deal, Mohammed. My mistake. So not only has he barbecued his, his partner a couple of balls ago, he's now hauled out into the deep. And what a little twist going on here in this game. Just a bit of pressure, a bit of tide turning at the moment. So a deal, Mohammed has cracked under the pressure and he has just popped one down Coley's throat and he doesn't make any mistake with those ones. New batter is Usman Ali and how well did he bowl? He's had a fantastic game so far. Can he be the hero and bring it home for UNEFs? Let's have a look. Just feel the tide, the tide shifting. This is what we love about T10 cricket. The, the tide can turn so quickly. It can be a matter of one ball, two balls, three balls and suddenly it's the whole momentum shifted, the entire thing. Here we go, Mendes gets his first. He's going to be bowling to two brand new batters. Gladiators have a real window here. They can go grab a couple more quick wickets, then this, this game is going to go to the wire. Here he comes, Mendes, bowling to Ali. So he's bowled him! He's got him! Two in two! Oh my word, you would not read about it. He's bowled this out swinger, full toss, been chopped on by Ali, who had a fantastic innings with the ball. He cannot replicate it with bat, and the six wicket falls. What a match we've got on our hands here, guys. Do not go anywhere. This match is not over, and the, the tide has certainly shifted, and Gladiators starting to build a lot of pressure now. How, it's going to be interesting to see how Unifs hold, hold up to this. Their first time out on the network, first time under this kind of these kind of conditions with these cameras. You do feel it when you're out there. It's going to be a very interesting finish to this match. What an over in the end. Two wickets come from it. Huge, huge finish we've got on our hands here. Incredible stuff. It's going to be Eunice Jutt. Or Jutt. I'm not sure how I'm, if I'm saying that right or not, but either way, he's going to be coming out as the new batter. Manmeet Coley is going to bowl his second over. He bowled a good over to start, a little bit expensive at the end. Got hit for a big six, but before that, bowled some absolute peaches. He's a good, good bowler to have in this situation. He's going to come 78 for six after seven. Here he comes. Manmeet Coley bowling to Rana. Oh, it's a good ball right up in the block hole. Looking to take it one. This could be a run out. No, it's a slight fumble. He's not going to have a ping. I think that's pretty good running. It's risky, but at this point, I think there was one there, and they got it. Wow, what a match. This is a huge over here. If Coley can keep it to 
four, five. You know, we're going to be set up for the last couple of overs. So it's incredible how hard runs become to get, you know, when you need like eight or nine, you've got your, your lo middle or lower order in, pressure's right on. I'll tell you what, we've got a, a doozy here, everyone. Here he comes, Man Meek Coley. First ball for Jutt. Beautiful ball, squares him up, just worked away on the offside. They're going to scamp through for a single. Oh, he could be out. No, he's made it. I think that's a pretty good result for UNEFs. It's a good ball, though. You can see that shaping away. It's sort of that, that middle off, lump, off stump line shaping away, squares up the batter, and they just take off. <laughs> nice little dive there at the end. Okay, here we go. What a match. I can't sit down personally. I'm upstanding. I'm walking around. I'm full of anxiety. Here we go. Mammy Kali to Rana. It's another excellent ball. Look at that. Just the in-swinger out there. Just tail back in. No, no away shake there. So very, very good variation from Coley. Hard to figure out what he's going to do. He's got that natural outswing. But that one just kept going. Kept its line and kept going. Not far from off stump. Very hard to score off that. I mean, if you're UNIFs right now, you just need to not panic. Just bat on ball, keep ticking it over. You'll get a bad ball at some point, it hits the boundary, but you just cannot panic. Easier said than done. Round me, Coley, to Rana. Here we go. Digs it in. Oh, it's a good ball. I'm not sure about that shot. It does feel like a little bit of panic setting in for UNIFs right now. He's backed away and trying to hit that down towards third man. I'm not even sure. But Coley's too experienced a bowler to be getting funky with. He's got to... Keep the basics, get back to basics, bat on ball, and just keep ticking it over. Coley comes in again. It's a beautiful ball. Worked away onto the onside. You only get just one, and I don't mind that. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing silly. Just keep working it over. Just keep ticking it over. 12 runs in 13 balls. It is starting to, that equation starting to get a bit more challenging for UNEFs couple of good overs and we could have a real nail biter on our hands here folks gotta say it's a very good over so far from Coley's I think he's only gone for three or four and here he comes again it's a good ball it's been worked away there's a man down there and do mop it up easily just a single what a great over that is it's exactly what the gladiators needed pressure is building 82 for six after eight 11 runs required in the last two overs who's gonna bowl it have a quick look at the fantasy dashboard for the next match. Two brand new teams. I mean, we're seeing units in this team. Bucharest Super Kings. Haven't seen them before. Again, a wild card. No one knows. But if they're going to put in a performance like UNEFs, then I'm ready for it because this has been one hell of a performance from them. Taking it to the reigning champions. Taking it all the way. Still in a very good seat to win this match. It is going to be Wakas Ahmed to bowl this Ninth over. It's a good shot. Punch down to the offside. There's a man out there. That deep extra cover. They're just going to get one. That's all they need to do. That's all they need to do. Nothing silly. Like I said, I think the key for you, Nash, right now is just don't panic. Don't panic. You will get a bad ball. You will be able to hit one to the boundary. Just keep ticking it over. For Gladiators, they just need dot balls. They need pressure-building balls. Here he comes. Ahmed, Bola Durana. It's a good ball. Angled into the body. It's been cut away. He's found the gap. It's going to race away. Is he going to go for four? They're coming back for two. They should make it comfortably, and they will. It's a good shot. It's well-placed. It's got it, got it in the gap there. It wasn't an easy place to hit the ball. It was angled in towards him. Actually, he's played it from about leg stump, giving himself a bit of room and just worked it into that area. That's helpful. That is helpful. Eight in ten is the equation. I mean, keep an eye on that clock as well. They need four balls in one minute twenty. In fact, that could be something that's happening here. Third ball. Here we go. It's a good ball. It's punched away. That's going to go to the boundary. That's a square drive. A beautiful shot. Keeps his cool. Just steps into it and punches it square all the way for four. That is a fantastic shot in a pressure circumstance. And that's what I'm talking about. Keep your head cool. Keep calm. And I'll tell you what, folks, I think if this match is not finished by the end of this over, I think it will be by the start of the next one because Gladiator's got 45 seconds to bowl three balls. 
Any extra, any wide, any re-bowl is going to push them over the brink. Here comes Wakasame and bowls again. Too short. It's up. It's going to go over. It's run over the keeper's head. It's going to run away to the boundary. And that is it. That is it. UNIFs win their first match ever on the European Cricket Network. And they have knocked off the reigning champions, the Bucharest Gladiators. What a performance. Take your hat off to the guys. Have, have, take a bow, UNIFs. That is unbelievable. You could not write this story. This is a fairy tale beginning for this club. And they deserve it. They played some phenomenal cricket. And they really look like a team to be reckoned with. Wow. Look at them. They're up and about. They're happy. And so they should be. They have played an absolute blinder here. They kept their cool. There's a lot to like about them. There's a re there really is a lot to like about them. A lot of teams would have panicked in multiple situations there, especially first time on the network, first time in such a big contest. Millions of people around the world watching, but they have held their nerve like they've been playing in, in this format for the last 10 years. And I've got to say, I am unbelievably impressed by how they've gone about it. And we have a look at some of the highlights. And he bowled very well early. He finished with three wickets. Kadgar just bowling those in swingers. But, you know, the UNEFs never really let the Gladiators get on top. A couple of batters were hitting some massive sixes. This one was incredible. Just punched away from the middle of the bat for six. And they just never really let the Gladiators get right on top. As you see again, it comes, yeah, that's... And I've got to say, the UNEFs are dancing around to the, to the beat of the drums. They are happy, they're up and about, and why would they not be? They've just done it as we have a look here. Coley, he bowled a really good over, but he was not spared this, so, some, a little bit of pain because that man there was just going crazy. Some of those shots were the biggest I've ever seen. That's just a gimme ball, isn't it, on full toss and, and dispatched accordingly. you got to say, Unif, they never really took the foot off the gas. They had the measure of the Gladiators the entire way from the very, very start. And this, they just, I, mean, I gotta say, I really like their energy. They're up and about dancing at the moment. Just saw a, some undisciplined bowling, full toss on the hip that's been turned around for a seven in the end. And Wakazame, he, he bowled okay. He did, he did okay, but but they just weren't, they weren't on the Gladiators. They weren't, they weren't the Gladiators that we know and that we've seen. And as I said, they're missing a couple of players. Specifically, Mohamed Moyes is a big out for them. But in saying that, they still have a lot of their old guard and you expect them to put in a bit of performance. But it's the first game of the tournament, so let's not read too far into it yet. I mean, this guy was, was a phenomenal bowler. Kadka, he bowled really well. I really enjoyed his, his variation and coming left arm over and bringing it back. Here you see a drop catch that could have cost him in the end, actually, if you think about it. And this was Haider Ali, who came in and played a little bit of a cameo. And then, no, that's not Hyder Ali. Uh, he was caught on the boundary. Cosman Zavu, he came on, and to be perfectly honest, he was a bit undisciplined with his bowling. He was too short, he was too wide, too easy to get away. Even that one there, it's not a bad ball, but the batter is just, I believe that's Hyder Ali. Batter is too quick on it and just easily dealt with it. And, uh, yeah, you just felt the Gladiators were, I mean, this was a horrific run out. The Hyder Ali was barbecued, and I thought at that point, maybe the Gladiators are going to come back into this match. And then you saw a few wickets fall. Adil Muhammad, who was caught on the boundary by Coley, and it looked like the tide was turning. And then this is two in two. This was a magic moment. Two in two, and you thought, we've got a game on here. And it looked like we were going to go all the way. But then UNEFs just took control again a couple of lucky breaks a couple of nice shots and they managed to get over the line so what a fantastic start to their ecn careers for unefs take my hat off to them round of applause incredible stuff i am stefan gooch i will be back with you for game two for now we'll have a quick look at the batting scorecard you can see there shahab alam he was fantastic 27 off 11 Hader Ali 18 off 9, Wakas Rana 12 off 8 at the end there. Pretty disciplined bowling from the Gladiators, but you've got to take your hat off from the UNF. They batted incredibly well. Yes, here at the beginning as well. Never really looked in doubt, and they've, they've finished it with 8 balls to spare. And they just really, really looking good in that first match of the tournament. So they'll be up again next against the Super Kings. 
So you can see here, a little bit of undisciplined bowling. I mean, Tazi went for 18 off one over. Uh, Cosmin went for 17 off one over. Wakasame going at 12 and a half, just over. The rest of them are pretty good, but you just can't have multiple bowlers going at over 12, 13, up to close to 20. It's tough to win a T10 match when that happens. So, but you take nothing away from UNEFs. They deserve all of the praise that they get because they were the champions here and they a thoroughly deserved win. I think we can all agree that they are a team to watch. I think they're only going to get better as the tournament goes as well. And what a statement, beating the reigning champions in the first match. Incredible stuff. What a great game of cricket to watch to start kick off this tournament. I'm Stefan Gooch. I'm your commentator for the time being. We hopefully will see Mr. Maximo a bit later today. Until then, it's my pleasure to be with you, and I will be back with you shortly for match number two of this tournament. Ciao for now.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fan Code, and Grizzly Bear Sports. Welcome back, European cricket lovers, to Moira Vasilea uh, Cricket Ground just outside of Bucharest for match number two of this European Cricket Series, Romania. And it is going to be between UNEFs and Bucharest Super Kings, and we're going to go over to the acting tournament referee, Mina Daub, for the and the two captains for the toss. Kings and UNEFs. UNEFs to call. Tails is the call. It is Tails. They will bet first. Back to Stefan Gooch in the commentary box. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mita. And there you have it. So UNEFs have won the toss and they will be having a bat. Second win of the morning for them. They have been fantastic in that first game. We are all very, very impressed. I'm sure you're feeling the same way as me. Knocking off the reigning champions, the Gladiators, UNEFs came out and they looked like a really formidable force. And they are playing against another team who we haven't seen yet in European on the European Cricket Network, the Bucharest Super Kings. New team, exciting stuff here. You can have a look at the fantasy dashboard. And very, very excited to see what these guys can bring after seeing a, the brand new team, UNEFs, winning that first game. Who knows what we've got in store here. Really exciting on the first morning of this tournament. Absolute pleasure to be here with you all. Hello to everybody in the chat. I am Stefan Gooch, and if you're wondering why it's me, it's because Vinny Sandu, Mr. Maximo, had a complication with his flight. It was cancelled out of Sweden yesterday, and so I am picking up the mantle for him this morning. I'm usually the tournament referee, but I do enjoy a little stint in the commentary box, so it is my pleasure to bring you this action. And it's going to be... Mohamed Ashikul Sana to bowl the first over. He's going to be bowling to Ricky Gill, who missed out with the bat in the first innings. He got a duck, but he did bowl reasonably well. Yasir, the batter at the other end, well, he looked dangerous in that first game. Took a little, little while to get going. A few balls to get his eye in, but then he started hitting some big shots. Right on cue, there's a church bell chiming in the background. And that signifies it's time to get underway for match number two of the European Cricket Series here in Romania. Let's go. Here we go. It is the Super Kings versus UNEFs. Just getting ready, waiting for umpire Andrew Begg to pull the trigger and say we're ready to go. Looks like it is right now. Ashikul Sana to Gil. First ball of game two. Here we go. Wide ball and missed by the keeper. He might run away for five wides here. Has he got there? I think he might have got there. Hard to see in the end and out of screen there, but I we'll have to have another look at that. But I think he's done okay. I'm just going to check the boundary there, I think. Not the ideal start. Bit of a loosener from Ashik there. It'll be interesting to see if the Super Kings can. Handle the pressure in the same way that UNEFs just did. Very impressive to come straight onto the big stage and be able to play so well like that. So we try again. Ashik again. It's going to be another wide and it's going to be missed. This one is surely going to run away for five. Five wides. So not a particularly good start here for the Super Kings. There's yet to be a legal delivery bold and there has been eight runs hit. Well, not hit, but... Eight runs collected by the batting side. So they really might they really need to sort that out. We saw UNEFs before. You can't give them these kind of freebies. They are a high-quality outfit. So a little bit of worry there. I mean, I don't mind the action. It looks good. you just got to get that, that line right. It's far too wide, plus he's swinging it away. There's kind of a wide-ish slip in there, but he's not going to get that. Here he comes again. And now he's down the leg side. A little clanger from the keeper. So there you go, nine runs, zero balls bowled. A little bit of worry, just needs to just steady himself, Ashik. He's clearly a decent bowler. He just needs to calm himself down a little bit and just find a little bit of rhythm here. Here he comes, Ashik to bowl. That's a better area. It's been squirted away. It's unlucky for the bowler. Just open the face, maybe a little bit of an outside edge, but it runs away to deep backward point boundary for four. 
It's definitely a better ball, definitely a better area. I mean, it kind of, you could call that a false shot, I suppose. I don't think he really meant for it to go there. But nonetheless, it is four. So 13 for no loss after just one legal delivery. The current run rate is at 78. <laughs> Here he comes. Can he get it right, Ashik? No, he's back down the leg side. Keeper's having him air as well. He's dropped it. There's going to be more wides. They're going to come back for another one. Oh, he's going to have to hurry. No, the keeper's not in the position to take it off. They're going to get three more. Three more runs. Freebies. Absolute freebies. And if you're a Bucharest Super King supporter, you might be starting to get a little bit worried. There's been 16 runs off just one ball. And that's going to be another wide. Keeper does collect this one, thankfully, for them. But very worrying signs at the moment. 17 runs off just one ball here. Here he comes again. He's down leg side again. He's down leg side again. I'm not going to lie, this is getting tough. This is getting tough. He needs to get that line right. 18 off one ball. Where's this going to go from here, guys? Nobody really knows, but he needs to do something. Because at this rate, I mean, look at that. Run rate at 108. <laughs> I know it doesn't tell the full story, but where's it going to come from? He's trying to round the wicket. It's a better ball, but it's been cut away over point. That's a cracking shot. And that's four more. So Ricky is cashing in now. And, I mean, 22 off just two legal deliveries. And this is starting to blow out already. We're not even halfway through the first over of game two. And it's starting to blow out. That's a very good shot, though. Just uses the natural angle of the bowler coming around the wicket and hits it over the infield. Here he comes again. Round the wicket again. It's a much better ball. It's going to go again. Oh, you've got a feel for him. It's not a bad ball, that one. But Ricky just slashes at it and manages to get it outside edge and, it, and he hits it well enough. There's enough pace on the ball, just flies away down to that third man boundary. There's no one down there. I mean, with this kind of bowling, with around the wicket like this, I, I would have be having a third man. I don't think uh, their deep backwards square leg is really in the game a lot at the moment. Yeah, they're going to make that change now. They are telling the third man to go back. In fact, I think they may have only had one man out until now. They've got a, a deep third man, a backward square leg. Here he goes again. It's a better ball. Angled across him on the stump, sort of pitching just outside leg and, and moving onto that middle of leg, leg stump. It's a much better ball. Uh, a better length too. So that f that that short, yeah, short, short outside off is a bit risky. They haven't got a field set for it, so he needs to be bowling better. And here he comes again. That's a much better ball. That's the one he's been trying to get. An absolute peach. That's the angle he needs to be at. It's full, it's it's bringing the batter forward, it's asking questions. Yeah, see that? That's a really, really good area. Yeah. He's having, getting talked to by the umpire. I'm not sure, maybe he's come across the in front of the umpire. Can he finish strong? 26 off the over so far. And he's down leg side again. It's gonna be another freebie. It's a bit of a worry. It's a worry for Bucharest Super Kings. This is not how you want to start a tournament. Let's see. Can they pull it back? Really? They've been really let off the hook. The, glad, uh, the UNEFs, they've been let off the hook. It's a very simple over. Here we go. Can he finish strong? He's down leg side again. It's going to be another freebie. And we're pushing up towards 30 off the very first over. So this could be getting a little bit messy, folks. But you never know. We've seen it before. You never know. These T10 matches can swing in an instant. But I tell you what, this is not the kind of start you want in your very first match on the network. Ashik again. It's going to be wide again. It's beating the keeper again. He's the third man to get there. He gets a boot in front of it, luckily. But they are going to get two more freebies. And that is going to bring up the 30. 30 off just five balls. It's a real worry. It's a real worry. Let's see what happens then. Good morning, Charlie Hunt. Charlie Hunt in the chat. Hope I'm doing doing an okay job for you, Charlie. 
I'm feeling under pressure now with the commentators in the chat. Right, no, it's a pleasure to have you here, mate. Here we go, Ashley, Ashley again. Oh, he's going down leg side again. Has it clipped something? Nope, it's going to be another wide. I've got to say, very, very concerning stuff here for the Bucharest Super Kings. I don't know what they're going to do. I really hope that they've got someone who can come and steady the ship here. 31 for no loss. Here he comes again. It's, it's wide again. Another wide. Where does this over end, folks? Feels like the never-ending story at the moment. I'm not sure what happens from here. We're just going to have to, to have to see. Well, he needs to get it. He looks like he's getting a little bit panicked now, and probably fair enough. And he's finally got it online. It's not going to be a wide. He's got it within the tram lines, and almost an eight, a seven and a half minute over comes to an end, and the score. Sorry to say, if you're a Super Kings fan, is 32 for no loss. Very happy for UNEF though. They are in the box seat after one over. And let's, let's hope that the Super Kings can pull it back a little bit. Maybe a little bit of nerves. You know, it is a bigger stage than they'd be used to playing on. There's cameras everywhere. There's a lot of people watching. So you can understand that there is a... You know, there's some nerves out there. But they, they do need someone to pull it back for them now. This is going to be... Talha Ansari to bowl the second over. Let's see what he's got in, in the lockup. Um, it's going to be wide as well. Concerning. I'm not sure exactly how many wides there has been so far. I've lost count, but there's been a lot. They need someone to just come in and just stabilise, to do a job. Just hit a line of length, get into a bit of rhythm. Ansari again. It's a bit better. It's, he's just snuck in there. Keepers. He's, he's, he's struggling a little bit. Gonna be a bite. So you just, you know, you just worry a little bit about Yassi. We saw what he can do in the in the last game. <laughs> like he could really get on top of this. Not a bad ball that one. Keeper is having a shocker at the moment. Got a, got a butter fingers out there right now. He can't seem to gather the ball cleanly at all, which is, you know, they've got a, a couple of things to worry about at the moment. Sorry. In again. No, he's dragging it wide again. Keeps does pretty well there. Gets a glove on it. Ensuring it's not going to go for any more wides. But, I mean, one thing you've got to think about already is the time pressure. You've got four and a half over, a minutes to bowl each over. And the first over's gone seven and a half to eight minutes. And now we're only two balls into this over. That's a much better ball. And played pretty well, actually. Just gets back. It wasn't a, wasn't a short ball, but just gets back and opens the face on it out to point and gets a single. But, I mean, we're already clocked past the nine-minute point of when this over should have been finished. So we're definitely behind time at the moment. They're going to need someone to pick it up. Oh, it's a good ball. That's the area. That's where he wants to be. You see, just that little late, late tail away, full and straight, asking questions of him. That's where they've got to be. For me, that's the ball he's hitting so far, and he should be trying to replicate that as much as possible. Hard to get that away. It's risky, risky to play shots to that. We saw Yassir take a little while to get going in the first game. Oh, it's a good ball. He seems to be finding a little bit of rhythm here, Ansari. Those last two balls have been very good. That was a really nice ball on a good length, tailing away again. But as I was saying, Yassir in the first match, he took a little while to get going. He had a few dot balls and he wasn't really striking at a, at a high clip. And then he just belted three or four sixes. Just wondering if that's the same thing that's going to happen here. Although, Unifs don't need to do anything stupid. Oh, that's a real wayward one. Actually, the angle of the pitch has helped him out there. It's kind of brought it back, but not much. It's going to go for five wides again. Keeper really needs to do better than that. He needs to take that. I mean, there's a, there's a little net natural angle on the side of the pitch. And if you watch that, it kind of dips back in. It was, it was going way past the keeper. And it kind of came back in and gave the keeper a chance. But he clanged it. So here we go again. Oh, it's whipped away. It's a really nice shot. And that's going to go for four more. It's still, it was full up on leg stump. I mean, it wasn't terrible ball, but it is kind of money for jam, isn't it? Batter makes no mistake. Four runs. And we are going to end the second over on 46. I believe 46 for no loss. Very concerning signs here for the Super Kings.
If you are a Unif supporter, then you're up and about right now. Look at that. Top of the table. I know it doesn't tell the full story, but that's pretty crazy right now. Budapest Gladiators. Buc Bucharest Gladiators. Sorry, I keep saying it. It's so natural to me to speak about Budapest. Bucharest Gladiators down on the very bottom. The reigning champions. The reigning champions. And really excited to see some of these new sides. Transylvania, Giamata. There's a whole bunch of new sides. We've got a really big tournament planned for the next two weeks. Very exciting stuff. So, 46 for no loss. Saurav Nath to bowl over number three. And that's a good ball. That's what they need. They need six of these balls. That's not an easy ball to face. It's a good length. It's kind of kicking off a length. A little bit of movement off the deck. And is Nath going to be the one to stem the flow? They certainly need someone to stand up now. Another good ball. This is exactly what they need. They will scamper through for a single. I've got to say, I'm fine. It's an interesting field. They've basically got a ring field. They do have a, a fine third man and sort of a deep cover point on the boundary. There's no one on the boundary on the leg side. So they trust him to bowl good lines. And here he comes in. That's uh, a good ball, and I can see why. He's, he's, he's the exact man they need in this situation. He's bowled three excellent balls. That's a really, really nicely bowled ball there. You can see it just getting a little bit off the pitch, a little bit of, di a little bit of nip. A little bit of nip on there. So this is an excellent ball. This is an excellent over. This is what they need. Here he comes again, Nath. Another good ball, but it's been belted over the top. That's a beautiful shot. Just gets down on one knee and says, see you later, ball. That's six runs. Really classy shot. And this is what we were talking about, Yassir. That's what he can do. Takes a little while to get going, but once he does, he can hit the ball as well as anyone. That's a classy cricket shot. Wasn't a bad ball either. And they've just got to finish the over strong. Needs another couple of dots here. The wheels are kind of falling off here. 50, 50's up. Another good ball. I like that. Angling it in, not giving him any width. They're taking a single here. Fielder comes in. Not, not, a, not a clean grab. So I do like that, that idea. I mean, it's a bit risky because they have no protection on the leg side boundary. So angling it into that leg stump, if, if the batter is good enough and quick enough, they can easily swivel and hit it over there. Uh, but it, giving them width seems to be not the right act. Answer. That's a good ball. Hey, York, oh, keeper, he's missed it again. Is it going to go all the way? I'm not sure. Can't see from here. But they're coming back for another one. And they're either going to either going to be a boundary or two buys. Where has he got? Is he going to call it? Oh, he said he's got a nick on it. Andrew Begg, umpire Andrew Begg is, is signaling that he's nicked it. It's a good ball. Must have like, just squeezed it on the inside edge. And it's going to be two bat runs. Pretty well done from the fielder down there. Reza, two bat runs to finish. Not a bad over from there. Still goes for 10, but let's be honest. It's a massive improvement from the first two. But a huge power play for UNEFs. Huge power play. 56 for no loss after three. And this is... I'm just... i am still got to say it's concerning. It's concerning for the Super Kings. They need another couple of overs going for five, six, seven... And then they might, they might be able to squeeze back in. But, you know, wickets in hand is so key in T10 tournaments as well. And the fact that UNEFs have not lost a wicket and they're up 50. It's interesting, it's crazy to think they're 50 off three overs, 56 off three overs and two batters are on 16 and 11. just shows how many extras have been bowled, how many wides have been bowled. Very concerning. And 10 overs you can't afford. Looks like a spinner is coming on here, Hussain. And the keeper's still back. And then... It's <laughs> a bit of a late power play signal, but no problem. The keeper's still standing back. Well, which, to be perfectly frank, is probably a safer option. And he is. It's a good ball, actually. I don't mind that. But it's been worked away back at a point, And it's racing away to the boundary. Is it going to go? A bit of fancy footwork. Keeps it in. And they'll end up with two. Not too bad a ball. Dragged down a little bit, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one. Keeper kind of back to a spinner. Does sort of take out a couple of opportunities for wickets, stumpings and whatnot. That's wide, but he's chased it. He's got it all the way. He's going to be out. No, he's dropped him. He's dropped him on that deep cover boundary. 
Oh, what a shame for the Super Kings. I mean, that was a, a rank, wide, long, hot ball, but the batter wanted it, and he went for it, and he basically hit it straight down his throat, and it was dropped on the boundary. Heartbreak for the Kings. That's a better ball, still a full toss. It's going to be knocked away, and it's going to be four runs. It's not really a better ball, let's be honest, but at least it was on the stumps. But full toss. I mean, these, these batters are making easy work of this at the moment. Ricky Gill making no mistake out there. Hussain needs to find something from somewhere. And it's not going to be there, I can tell you that much. Because that is about four foot outside the off stump. And it's another wide. I'd like to see Hussain stop bowling with the... Such a side arm. I don't think that's helping the situation at all. He's coming very around very with the side arm. It'd be better if he gets that right up over his ear. And it's going to be again. It's hard not to bowl that with the side arm. It's hard not to drag it down outside off stump. But again, here you see the unit's on 65 and there's only been 34 made off the bat. That is a big concern for them. That's going to be down leg side, and that's money for Jam. A full toss on leg stump, and Ricky Gill just turns it around the corner. Easy as you like. Four more runs to the total. 69. Going at uh, just a cliff under 20 at the moment. Ricky Gill was moved to 24 of 12. They'll see a 14 of 10. Concerning stuff. They've got big hitters in the, in the shed as well. This could be a very big total. Something's got to give here for the Super Kings. Hussain in again. Oh, it's a much better ball, but that's what I was saying. The keeper being back, it kind of negates the stumping opportunity. So he's too far back to be able to stump him because he did advance down the wicket quite a lot there. You see him take a couple of steps down. It's a good ball. It actually gets a bit of purchase off the pitch. And the keeper's too far back, so he just tries to throw the stumps down. He goes again. That's a beautiful shot. That is going to be four runs all day. Just dragged down a bit again with that sidearm. It's just dragged down wide and punched to the boundary for four. Beautiful batting. Really unlucky there. A couple of opportunities in that over. There was that drop catch and then there was the miss stumping. But it does make it difficult when the keeper can't really stay up to the stumps. So 73 for no loss after four. And you've got Ricky Gill on 28 off 14. You've got Yassir on 14 off 10. And I'll tell you what, it looks like we are in for a massive, massive total here. You just, just feel like where, where are the Super Kings going to pull this from? How are they going to stem the flow? Ridoy into the attack now. Here he comes, ball short, round, round the corner. They're going to get one. I mean, a single at the moment is a good result for the Super Kings. It's basically a dot ball. Let's see, let's see. Maybe they're suffering from a few nerves. They just need a little bit of time to find their feet. I'm sure that will come good, but in this match, they have looked, well, they're struggling a little bit. Their line and length is very difficult for them at the moment. So let's see if Riddy, what he can do. Oh, that's a good ball. That's a nice shape. Angley back in. They've got to get one here, but there's some good signs there from Ridoy. He kind of just like walks up, then loads up and just wangs it down, but... You did see a nice tail inwards there, and it was pretty well directed. So not easy to hit a ball like that. So is Ridoy the one to make the change? Here he comes again. Oh, he's been turned around. That's a brilliant shot. Full on the legs, and he just helps it on his way, does Yasir. Just whips it around the corner, and that is another boundary. Four runs. And that's the, that's the risk with, that in, with the in-swing. If you don't get it right, just tail's a little bit too far and it can just be helped around the corner. So score moves up to 79. And I do feel like we're in for a, a pretty significant total here. Ridoy again. Oh, what's that done? That's called a wide. <laughs> Basically got a backstop and he's almost clanged it as well. It's going to be two wides. It's another, another freebie. It was a tight call, but I think it was the right call. It was over the wide line. It was a better length. He just, he just needs to get that control of that line here. 
we do it again. Oh, it's it's not it's a better ball. There's someone there. They'll get one. My, I think it's a leg by. Still risky. Still a risky area. They have found it very difficult to get any kind of consistency. The Super Kings. One ball's way outside off. One next ball's down leg. Next ball's a full toss. They need to really stay with themselves and get some rhythm in this bowling unit. There he is again. That's that leg stump line. There is a man there for it. They'll get one. Yeah, they just need to just go back to basics. Just take it easy. Line and length. Full and straight. If in doubt, full and straight. That's how I see it. One of my old mentors I used to play cricket with every time I get the ball. Gucci, full and straight. Oh, that's an absolute... That's not a good ball. That is a very bad ball. It's called a no ball. It's going to be a no ball and four buys. So it will be a free hit. It will be a warning to the bowler. And maybe he's trying to get that full and straight strategy, but it has not worked there. It's a real shocker of a ball. Keeper had no chance as well. Fielder did, but just went past it and slipped over. Here we go again. Free hit coming up. Oh, so that's the best ball he's bowled so far. Been squeezed out to the backward square leg. They're going to get a single, but that was that is the exact area. That's what I'm talking about with full and straight. Full and straight. Just get it up there. Just ask questions. Keep attacking the block hole. Anyway, that brings us to the end of that over. I mean, to be perfectly frank, Ridoy, he goes for 11. <laughs> I don't think that really reflects the actual over itself. It was those that no ball and four buys and that sort of thing. 89 for no loss after just five overs. UNF's at 17.8 run rate at the moment. These two batters looking particularly set. And, I mean, why wouldn't you? Like I said before, I mean, there's 50 runs off the bat at the moment. 50 runs off the bat and 89 runs on the total. So that tells the whole story here, folks. So let's see. It's going to be Rifat Reza to bowl now. Let's see what he does. They need a hero. They really need a hero. The concerning thing is if they do break through, then we know that UNEFs have got a couple of very strong hitters coming in. And unfortunately, Reza has not risen, risen, risen to the occasion. And he has also bowled a rank ball straight down leg side for a wide. Here he comes again. That's a much better ball. Angled in the stumps, but it's been just clipped away on the leg side. They're going to come back for two. It could be a run out if it's a good throw. It's not. So they take two, but that's a better ball. Full and straight, full and straight. Back to basics. Back to basics. Here he comes again, and that's not too bad of a wall. He's snuck it inside. I mean, at this point, I think any ball that's not a wide or a boundary is a good ball for Super Kings. And so, a red dot. So here he goes, Reza again. That's a much better ball. Oh, it's taken off, and it's just unlucky because it's such a good ball, but the keeper just has not got anywhere near it. And it's four more buys. I think I'm seeing in the chat a couple of people saying, Rob Thompson is saying the keeper needs to stand back. And I tend to agree. At this point, the keeper might even be better off just standing back on, like, and just inside the 30 yard circle just to stop it. Because, you know, you, that, this is just where the pressure, like, there's no pressure can be built because he's bowled a really good ball. It's, a, it's drawn a full shot, it's play and miss, it's taken off of the deck, and it's still gone for four. How do you build pressure on that? That's a beautiful ball. And it's actually a really nice shot too. Punch down the ground. There is a fielder coming around and it'll be one. But that's the full and straight I'm talking about. That is what they need to do. And that's the only way to get through this at the moment. I actually res his bowl reasonably well. Apart from that first one down the leg side. It was very, I mean, unlucky. That four buys for him. Not that it matters his toe is... Oh, that's a full toss. It's been wept around. There is a man coming around. I don't think he's going to get there. It might even go all the way, and it does. It goes for six. Six runs, maximum time. And that's just picked up off a leg. That brings up the 100 in just the six over. And Yassir doing what Yassir does. Taking a little while to get going, but now he's on 26 off 14. And 
Moonaf saw 103. Last ball of the over. It's another full toss. It's been switched down the ground. It's going to go all the way. It's right next to me. It's six more. It's two Maximos in a row for UNEFs, and they are unstoppable right now. 109 will be the score after six. And Reza has just absolutely ruined his figures there. He started reasonably well. There was a four buys, and he's gone for two sixes in a row. Pretty ruthless game, this T10. Let's be honest here. Have a quick look at the batting scorecard. I mean, there's not a lot to look at apart from these two openers doing a fantastic job for their team. Ricky Gill, 33 off 22, and Mohamed Yassir, 32 off 15. As you see there, unfortunately, 32 wides. 32 wides, 10 buys, one no ball. That's where they have really lost it for themselves. 32 wides, you just can't be bowling that in, in T10 cricket. It's 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 very difficult to win a game if you bowl that many. Anyway, Riddy's getting a second over now. That's a much better ball, a good area. It's ooh, a bit of fancy footwork stop, so that could have gone to the boundary if he didn't. I mean, what do you do if you're the Super Kings? Anyone got any ideas in the chat? <laughs> it's tough. It's a very tough, tough ask from here. 110. Still got a long way to go in this innings. UNEFs must be feeling on top of the world at the moment. Knocked off the champions, building a huge score here. That's going to be another wide. This is a real confidence booster for them. I mean, they've started off this tournament in the exact way you would hope to start off in a tournament. You couldn't imagine it. You couldn't write this script. Knocking off the reigning champions, coming out and being on 111 after six overs. Here we go. Oh, it's a very good ball. That's the best ball so far, I'd say, in this whole innings. It's shaped in a long way. It's, I think it's a bit of bat pad there. Uh, they scamper through for one. But that's what you've got to do. Full and straight. Let the ball do a bit of talking. Use the conditions. Let it swing. The ball is swinging. You can all see that. The ball is swinging around for everyone at the moment. Just, just lucky to get away with that. Just clips the pad on the way through. It's the right idea. It's the execution for the Super Kings has been the problem. Ready again, bowling to Gill. It's better. It's just a bit short. They do have protection out there, so it'll be a, it'll be a win for them. Just a one off that one. But again, it's just that inconsistency. There's one full. There's one short. There's one wide. There's one, you know, there's one down the leg side. There's one on the offside. They just need to start building some rhythm. They're running out of time to do so. Much better from Reedy, but it's been picked up and it's been smashed over to the mid-wicket boundary. And it's going to go all the way. It's six more. What a shot from Yasir. And that's just punishment, really. I mean, you got to feel for Riddle. He's bowling pretty well there. That's not a bad ball. But Yasir is just so strong and so good to pick that up so quickly and just help it on its way. And it's six more. So the, the absolute carnage continues for the Super Kings. One more ball in Riddy's spell, and he's bowled another wide. So there you go. There's no pressure whatsoever being built at all by the Super Kings. It's just, I mean, this is, if you're, if you're one of these batters out there, this is the ultimate time to be batting. There's absolutely no pressure. And there's another rank ball. It's very full. It's very wide. It's another wide. So it's freebies galore here. And you've got to hope that the Super Kings have at least a, a, a very strong top five because they're going to be chasing a formidable total here. There's no doubt about that. Last ball from Riddy again. That's a much better ball and treated with respect from Yastia. Yes, he just thinks, you know what, that's a good ball. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna defend this one. We don't need to do anything stupid. We're 121 off seven overs. No issues whatsoever. So there you go. 121 for no loss after seven. Ricky Gill on 35 of 25. Mohammed Yassir on 39 of 18. Looking extremely dangerous and Super Kings, let's be honest, not doing themselves any favours at the moment by bowling so many extras. I wonder, they've got to be get through these quite quick. They've got, they've got eight, about eight and a half minutes to bowl two overs. 
there's no chance of them getting any time back because there's only there's no wickets falling yet. You only start to get time back when you when you get the sixth wicket set, like from sixth wicket onwards, you get one minute back. So it's very very unlikely they're going to get any time back. So they need to get through these quickly. Oh, it's a beautiful shot. It's full. It's wide. There's a man coming around though. It hasn't gone as far, and he's dropped it again. It's been dropped again on that deep cover boundary. I thought that was going for six as soon as he hit it. It looked like it was right off the middle of that. He picked him out. And again, the Super Kings, just their own worst enemies. They just can't catch a trick here. And sorry, unfortunately, it's wide. It's got away from the man out there. Again, you know, just not moving into the field. This ball is just simply unique to get a tough one.
Indonu Pereira, and didn't he bat well in the first game? He looked really, really well. Looked really, really good. So, I mean, there's eight balls left in this innings. What can they do? So here he comes. Naveen again. That's a good ball. Full of straight. I like it. He's punched down the ground. They're going to get one si a single for it. And there's a lot of cheering coming in from the, the dugout. The last ball of the night. It's been punched straight up. It's straight up. There's a man coming around. Surely it's going to be another one. And it is, he's taking it, he's taking it. It's a good catch at the end from Ashik. Two fielders were converging on it. And I did think at one point that they were going to clang into each other or put each other off. But alas, they didn't. And the catch was taken. And excellent stuff. Noeem gets the breakthrough. Two in and over. As I said, a little bit too, too little too late probably. There's already a mammoth score on the, on the board. But nonetheless, you've got to keep pushing all the way. So 140 for two after nine. That is the score. And, I mean, that was the best over they've had so far. Two wickets and, you know, they brought that run rate down a little bit. Hello, everybody, again. Very <laughs> massive apologies. We've had some technical difficulties, but I'm back with you again now. And it was my pleasure to be here as we watch this onslaught from UNEFs again. 140 for two after nine. Last over, Pereira, he batted so well in that first game. I mean, I mean, Shake just ends up with two for seven. That's a good ball. It's a really good ball. It's Nath coming back on again. He bowled a decent over early. We really need him to bowl a tight one here. So maybe the Super Kings can just finish with a little burst. And who comes in again? Nath. Oh, it's wide. It's oh, he's called it. That's pretty, that's, I think that's quite a tough call. You've got to remember it is where when the pop increase and the wide line intersect, that's where the balls are judged wide or not. It's, it is, it, I mean, I'm an umpire myself. It is one of the most difficult things to do in cricket is to umpire those wides because they end up so wide that they might not. Like there, that's a beautiful ball. That's the area needs to be in. Needs to be asking that question. But as I'm saying, I actually think one of the hardest things, jobs as an umpire, is to is to adjudicate wides because the keeper moves. Sometimes the ball moves so far after the, the pop increase that it just looks so wide. But when it went past that pop increase and the wide line, it was inside. Very difficult. You only get a split second. Nath again. Oh, it's a good ball. It's not going to be out. Down leg side. But they will scamper through and get a leg by. Oh, it could be another one. No, they're not going to go up. But good ball. Actually, the last couple of overs have been good here. They've just, at one point, it looked like they were going to end up at 160, 170. But they have stemmed the flow a little bit. They've brought that run rate down under 15. How can he finish? Another good ball. It's been punched into the covers. It'll just be one. But we've got to say, they've, they've finally found some rhythm in these last couple of overs, which is what they really needed to do a lot earlier. But better late than never, I guess. 143, still a very, very formidable total at the moment. And they've come in. Two balls to go. That's a good ball. It's been well, open the face. It's been a sort of square drive to the offside. It's going to be a single. So you've got to say, excellent bowling here. Excellent bowling. And maybe they can take the positive out of this that so they're finishing the, the innings with some rhythm and they can take that into their next games. I mean, let's be honest, the game's not over, of course. We don't know what happens yet. Maybe they come out and they've got the greatest batting side you've ever seen. 
Last ball, here we go. It's a pretty good ball. He's missed out there. He could have probably got that away. But anyway, no, he finishes strong. He finishes strong. I think he's only gone for three in that last over. Unifs are going to finish on 144 for two, which, let's be honest, that's a huge total. It's a very, very big total. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd have to hazard a guess that only 90 of them or 100 of them were, were scored off the bat. So that's what I'm saying. If you're the Super Kings, you probably have to just take some positives away, whatever you can, whatever positives you can actually take. That's what uh, they're going to have to do. There's no other way to do it. But you've got to say, UNEF's in a very strong position. And as I've said before, I've said again, I'm impressed by these guys. They look like the real deal. As you can see here, well, let's, let's call a spade a spade. The first over was nothing to write home about. I think it went for 30, and there must have been 25 wides in there. So they really struggled. They really struggled. The Super Kings really struggled across the whole time to get any kind of any kind of consistency, any kind of rhythm. There was a lot of wides. There was a lot of buys. There was a lot of mixed, just a mixed bag of, of, of seeds. Like one's down leg, one's outside off. Those, those balls that they did bowl well, I mean, for them, unfortunately, were capitalised on by the batters. Every time they had a chance, they bowled a good ball. The batters were in the position, and then a lot of those good balls actually went for six. This is unfortunate, a drop catch. This is the thing you need when you're in this situation. You need to take these chances. You need to take these catches. This is another one, another chance. If the keeper's up to the stumps there, he can take him off. It could be a stumping because he's far back, he can't. So they did have a couple of chances, but then they sort of go back onto these lines, back onto the, the hit me balls and just easily work down the corner. And then you get a couple of balls like this. It really kills the morale and demoralizes the team. And that's what you saw happen in those middle overs for the Super Kings. This is what I'm talking about. They get one on target. Actually, one of the best balls that was bowled in that innings has just been pumped to six. So you got to feel from a little bit. And this again, like this is a good setup. Well bowled by the bowler. Sets him up, draws a false shot, dropped again. But then, I mean, this is it. Here he comes, the first wicket. I think this was in the eighth or ninth over. And there was a good over in the end. He ended up with two for the last, I mean, the saving grace, the, the real, it's actually a good catch at the end. It looked like the, his fear, his mate was about to put him off. And, I mean, the, the positives that Super Kings can take away is that they finished this innings quite strongly. There was the last two overs were very res respectable, and they did a good job to contain it. At one point, it looked like UDFs were going to end up on 160, 170, and they've kept them to 144. I mean, there you see it, the batting scorecard. Excellent work by those two openers, but there was no pressure on them whatsoever, and they just cashed in, basically. You can see down there in the extras, 52 extras. 52 extras, so the top scorer was extras, and as I suspected, only just over 90 runs made off the bat itself. So that's where they've made it very, very difficult for themselves, the Super Kings, 52 extras. Hard to win a game of T10 with that, and you can see there it's very, very expensive bowling scorecard. Ashik first over, we went for 32. How do you come back from that? It's very difficult. And Sari going for 12. Uh, Nath was good. He only went for six and a half and over, two tight overs, but then you got 17 again. Uh, I mean, the, the real pick of the bowls, Naeem Sheikh, seven, uh, one over, two for seven. That was fantastic. Uh, I think. Nath was good at the end as well. That death over, that last over was good, but tells a little bit of a weary story, that one. So there you have it. UNEFs in their second game ever on the European Cricket Network have scored a mammoth 144 for two. And let's see what the Bucharest Super Kings have. They're going to need to score 145 in just 60 balls to win this game. You never know. It's T10. Anything can happen. But you'd have to say UNEFs are well and truly in the driver's seat right now. I'm going to have a quick break. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm Stefan Gooch, and I will see you very shortly in the resumption of this match. Ciao for now.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. A very warm welcome back, cricket lovers, to Bucharest, just outside of Bucharest, the Moro Vlasir cricket ground, looking beautiful. And as you can see, the blue sky is opening up, the sun is back out, and it is a wonderful day for cricket, especially if you're a UNEF supporter or player. If you're a Bucharest Super King, maybe it's not as wonderful day for cricket for you because you're about to have to chase 145 of victory. No mean feat whatsoever. And again, I mean, I, I know I keep saying it, but just you can mark my words. You've got to keep an eye on this UNIFS team. They are they're quality. They look really good. Already knocked off the reigning champions. Just posted 145. What a start to the tournament they are having. And Super Kings, probably coming from the other end of the spectrum, they have struggled in the beginning. They really struggled with the ball. They couldn't find any rhythm whatsoever. Their line of lengths all over the shop. So let's hope that they can put in a better performance with the bat and make a game of this because it's not an easy target to chase on your first outing on the network. It's not an easy target to chase ever, especially when you got Hyder Rally steaming in at you. He bowled really well in that first game. I really was impressed by him. So it's going to take a lot for the Bucharest Super Kings. I mean, if you think about it, without all of the extras that were bowled in that first innings, they could be chasing 100 or even less. So there are some positives to take out of it for them. I know it's hard. It's hard to find them, but, you know, if they can get a bit more accurate and maybe reduce their wides by about 40. <laughs> Here we go. Hyder Ali, Bolinto Ansari, first ball. And Nets are starting with a wide as well. So as is tradition... Wide ball. I mean, the ball is swinging around a lot today. You've got to say that. So that was that's probably adding to it, uh, making it a little bit more difficult to control. Uh, but also, it's nice to see. It's really nice to see the swinging ball. Every bowler has basically been able to shake the ball around. I don't know again. That's a nice ball. It's been pumped out. There is a man out there. He's not going to get there. It's going to go for four. What a start. That's exactly what the Super Kings needed. Not a bad ball at all. A little bit of width, a little bit too full and capitalised on. And they're the kind of balls you do need to score off if you're chasing 145. Like I said, it wasn't a terrible ball, but there was enough there to go at it. And he did go at it and he's hit it for four. So, game on. One ball in. Let's call it game on. Five runs off one ball. But I do like the intent from Ansari. I really do like the intent. It's exactly what they need to do if they want to have any chance of competing in this match. I'd rather in again. Oh, it's a good ball. He's nicked it. He's just nicked it. He's got caught on the crease, and he has just gloved it, I think. He might have gloved it or just taken the shoulder of the back court behind. It's a little bit of a soft dismissal, but it is a very good ball. And he does have a bit of pace, Hyder Rally. Gives him, gives him no width. Kind of just, he's got that angle in, and then the little shape away. You can see it again here. He's, he's not slow either. So doesn't give him any width, just rushes him a little bit. It is off the face of the bat. You can see he kind of tries to open the face just a little bit too much. There you go. And a sharp catch behind the stumps from Yassir. It's unfortunate start for the Super Kings. It's what they were trying to avoid. But very, very good bowling. Really like Hader Ali. Really, really like his fluid action. He's tall. He gets a lot of bounce. He gets that shape. I think he's going to be a real handful for a lot of opening batters in this tournament. You heard it here first, folks. He's going to be a handful. Not easy to play that kind of bowler. Especially with the swinging ball that we've got. Grizzly balls are swinging around. I'd love to see it. It's a bit of a problem. I'm not sure what's happening here. I think there's... We've got a wardrobe malfunction, let's call it. A helmet malfunction. Just getting his mates ready. Ready coming out. A bit of confusion out there at the moment. <laughs> so, Raman Radoy. Facing up, 
Facing up to Hoda Ali. Fired up. The big man's fired up. He's charging in. And here he comes. Oh, it's a lovely ball. There's that extra bounce again and that shape. It's just such a nice line of length. Very, very difficult to play that. Like, what do you do with that? Very hard to score off that kind of ball. It's not even that short, but it's passing him up with his chest high. And Rido, to be perfectly frank, had no idea what to do with it. And I don't blame him because it's not an easy ball to hit. But this is what I mean about Hyder Ali. Just getting that rhythm, just hitting that area, getting that extra bounce. It's going to be a real handful. Here he comes again. It's a bit fuller. It's a bit wider, but he, it's not bad. I like the variation. A really nice start here for UNEPS. We know they've got good bowling in the, in the, in the to come as well. Got good bowling, good balance bowling attack, spinners, good pace. Here we go. Hyder Ali digs it in a bit. He's going to get away with that one. I think it's just passed inside the line. I mean, that's another ball that could be scored off for sure. Just dragged it down a little bit. What I'd like to see is Ridoy trying to play the ball and its merits. There's no need to try and swipe that into the leg side. That's wide outside off. They don't have any protection on the offside boundary in front of square. They've got two players. They've got a deep backward point and a third man. As Hyder comes again. It's a full toss. He has made, he's called a no ball. It's been called a no ball by the umpire. And there's no objections from the players. So obviously a clear no ball. I think that was definitely a no ball. Kind of rushed him and he just popped it up and got caught, caught and bowled. We'll have another look at it now. You can see. Yeah, that's a no ball for me. I mean, you know, ACM, we're strict on no balls. Anything around the belt buckle or higher is a no ball. So this will be a free hit. So a chance for Ridoy to get one away. Free hit time. It's a good ball. Change of pace. Just roll the fingers on that one. And it's going to be a dot. So, UNEF's just, again, winning small battles over and over again. And that's how you win matches. You win the small battles. And what a fantastic over from Raider. There you go. 115 matches since the golden ball. I said the last match had a little feeling of golden ball potential about it. I tell you what, this one doesn't. I'm, I'm going to say... There's no chance that this match is going to be a golden ball. But, you know, I may be proved wrong. And if I am, then I'll be happy to see it because we'll have a serious contest. But right now, it's hard to see how the Bucharest Super Kings could get back into this contest, especially when you've got Usman Ali coming on. And he bowled phenomenally well in that first game. You could almost say he was the pick of the bowlers. He bowled really, really well. This is what I like about UNEF. I said it before, I said it again. They've got a very balanced bowling attack. They've got some good pace options. They've got the leg spinner of Adil Muhammad. You no doubt will see him at some point soon. And they all bowl pretty well. So, they look a tough team to counter. Here he comes. Usman Ali. It's a few very, very good ball. It's just that nagging area. There is a lot of extra bounce on this pitch. It's it's not a short ball, and it ends up with a lot of carry to the keeper. Keeper carry takes it around his chest. See, it just picks up off the off the pitch there. I like that angle as well. Coming around the wicket, angling in and decking it away it can be very dangerous. This one again. That's a nice ball. It's full, but it's been creamed down the ground. One bounce. Four runs, that's what they need. And that's what they need to do. Anything, I mean, that's slightly over-pitched. Again, it's not a terrible ball, but it's slightly over-pitched, and they're going to have to score off those kind of balls. Any, anything that they get from the bowler that is not exactly where he wanted it, they need to score off it. So with that, it's an opportunity, and Nath, who bowled really well, Nath, he has picked it up, and he's got his first boundary. We're spinning again well bowled and pretty well played they're going to scuttle through for a single but that's a better length there that the, the ball before was definitely uh too full and it was a ball that could be scored on that one was just back of a length much harder 
G'day, Mr. Maximo in the chat, asking how I'm holding up. Actually, I'm enjoying myself. I'm really enjoying it as Usman comes in again. It's well bowled again, just back at the length, punched for one. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm enjoying myself here. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Looking forward to when you come yourself, Vinny. Can't be far off now, surely. But what a beautiful place to be. Loved coming back to Romania. I think this is my third or third time here. And always a pleasure. Spinelli again to Nath. It's well bowled. Again, not really the kind of shot. It's, it's a high risk, low impact shot that. But then again, what else do you do? He's bowling a pretty good area. I mean, I'd like to see. Yeah, I mean, right now, the two boundary fielders are basically two third, man, two third men. There's a wide, got sort of deep backward point. And then a, th and a fine third man. It's when it comes in again. It's wide. It's going to be called a wide. There's no protection. I mean, other than that, it's pretty much a, a ring field. 5-4 ring field. We're going to have to be creative here for Super Kings. Usman comes in again. Oh, it's a really nice ball. He's just wobbling that, that seam around. When he gets it right, he gets it spot on. It's just back of a length. Gives him no width. Gives him no room. I, I think the Super Kings have to take a risk here and try and hit that over the leg side. Anyway, we come to the end of the second over. It's 13 for one. Okay, you see UNEF's sitting pretty at the top of the table. As I've said, doesn't tell much of a story at the moment considering this is just the second game. But if you are a UNEF supporter or you're a UNEF player, you must be feeling pretty confident right now. You definitely would be feeling pretty confident. So we've got Ricky Gill coming into the attack here. He batted really well, didn't he? he starts with a what, full toss on leg stump and it's been dispatched. That's a really good shot. Just over pitch, two full. Ridoy, who was going at one off six, has just punched that, will sort of flick that through the leg side for a boundary, much needed boundary, I must say. Really good stuff from him, and it's time. I mean, you know, it's a T10 game. You don't want to die wondering. It's a target of 145. Let's be real, it's a very difficult target to chase, but you've just got to go for it. You've just got to have a crack at it. What's the point in not? So I like this from Ridwell. Let's see how he goes again here. Ricky Gill again. That's a really nice ball. It's been punched through. It is in the gap a little bit. They're going to take one. That's a good ball. It's just one of those things, isn't it? It's chasing 145. I mean, how do you go about it? There's only one way, really. It's a nice shot. There's a man down there for that. It is cult, cult hero Pavel Florin. I don't know if you see him have a bowl. Everyone loves to see him have a bowl. Yeah, why not? Give him a roll in this game, I say. Get him on. <laughs> Just back from a stint in the, in, the, in the big bash, as far as I know. Ricky Gill again. Here we go. It's a really nice ball. It's been edged. There's a man down there. So these two third men are kind of paying dividends at the moment. thought it was an interesting... Interesting idea, but it is working for them. And Gil wasn't any good with the bat. Seems like a key player for this UNF's team. I think we'll probably see a deal Mohammed bowling the next over. No, we won't because he's not playing. It's been punched through. It's going to be another boundary. That's excellent work. It's a good shot. It's just pouncing on it. So just a little bit of a counter-attack here. And actually, I've been talking about Adil Muhammad bowling next over and all that. I just realised he's not even in the playing 11, so you won't be seeing him. <laughs> but let's see who else they have to take his place. Here we go. Nath sort of starting to pick it up a little bit. I'd like to see the aggression continuing. Here we go. Snuck that in. It's a good ball. Good intent from the batter. A little bit too much swing there. That brings us to the end of the power play. 24 for 1 is the total. And if the Super Kings want to get back into this match, they are going to need something very special. Very, very special indeed. 
So let's see how it goes. Let's have a quick look at this. You can see, I mean, look at UNEF. They went at 14.4 per over. Right now, Super King's going at eight. This is not, not enough, is it? At this point, UNEF's for 56 for no loss. Uh, I mean, to be perfectly frank, I think at this point, um, UNEF's off the bat were about 25, and there was about 30 extras already. So <laughs> actually, if you take all the extras out of the equation, they're, they're pretty much neck and neck, but unfortunately... There, you don't take them out. So here we go, down leg side, it's going to be a wide. So you can't take them out of the equation because they're on the score card, so it is what it is. But, yep, but there you go, 56 for none. You know, were, as I remember, I think they were 24 or 25 for that. So this is Amir Ali. So I haven't seen him yet. Here he comes, bowling it. It's a nice ball. A really nice ball. That's excellent shape. There's that little sort of angle in and then shape away. You're seeing it so often this morning and today. It's a very good ball. I'm just really wondering where are the Super Kings going to pull this from? Where are they going to get it? Something's got to give. It's a big wide. I mean, again, I think the big difference here as well, I don't like to single anyone out, but I think for Super Kings, the keeper struggled a bit to cleanly take a lot of the ball. So instead of it just being a wide, it ended up as five wides or as four buys or multiple wides. And I think that really hurt them. Amir again. Really nice ball. It's just that area, isn't it? It's that area. And you're seeing a lot a lot of this this morning. The batter just clearing the front pad and trying to hit. I don't think that's the right the right way to go about it. I'd like to see them trying to hit through the line of the ball, especially when it's there on that kind of fifth stump outside off. There's no reason to clear the pad and try to drag that to the leg side. There's no one on the cover boundary. There's, there's a massive gap out there. So it would be quite easy to just hit through the line. He's, he's kind of still giving himself too much room. There's no need for that. Step into it and hit it over the top of cover. I think this is the sort of stuff they'll need to have a talk about as a unit, along with their, you know, along with their, uh, their bowling and their restricting of wides. <laughs> They've got a couple of things to work on. That's short. Yeah, he's got away with that. That was a ball that could have been scored off for sure. And it's turning into a pretty productive over for Ali here. It was definitely there to hit. And here we go. I'm here, Ali again. There, yeah, that's another ball that could be hit. He's just got a glove on it. It's going to be one, but you do kind of feel like that is a ball that's too short. It's there to hit. He's got to be quick on it. Get some bat on it. Race it down to the boundary. So you can see the the gap really opening up here. At this stage, UNEF's were 69 for naught, And Bucharest Super Kings at 27 for one. So there is a very big canyon opening up between these two at the same times. Amir Ali, last ball of his over. Another pretty good one. Again, batter backing away and giving himself some room. Trying to get inventive. And I tell you what, I think it's I think it's time. I think Colt Hero Pavel Florin is coming on for a roll. You can see him, he's eager, he's running in, you can see him coming in there. He's up for it. Yeah, okay, he is. It looks like it's Pavel. He's warming up there. You love to see it. Much loved around the world for his enthusiasm after being seen all those years ago at the ACL and uh, become a real cult hero across the world. He's a lovely guy. He loves his cricket. He's played for a couple of different teams. Nice to see him playing in this team. New team. Let's see how he goes. Looks like he's going to be bowling around the wicket. Right arm around the wicket to the right hander, which is an interesting, interesting tactic. Here 
it comes. Purple Florin. First time I've seen him in this tournament. <laughs> He's holding the ball behind his back. He doesn't want anyone seeing it. There he is. Oh, it's a good ball. Oh, it's, oh my God, he's almost scored a ball. That could be a run out. It could be run out, you know. It was a chance. It was a chance to be caught and bowled. It's come off his hand and it's it's not dislodged the bales. Let's have a look at this. I like how he keeps the ball behind his back. No one's seeing what he's going to bowl. Let's have a look. I, th I think he got back. It's off. Yeah, he's back. He's well back. No problem at all. But... Can't say he's not creating chances immediately. It was a tough chance for the catch, but he hasn't got there. Here he goes again. Oh, that's Belton. He's coming towards me. Can I catch it? No, I can't. Six runs. Six runs. That's too easy. Just hasn't got his length right there, and it's just sat up and said, hit me, please. And Vidoy has obliged. Pumped it down the ground for six. Pavel firing up the troops, saying, OK, he's, he's in charge here. He's pumped up. He's always pumped up. He loves it. I'm not sure about this round the wicket. It's interesting to see how it goes. Here he comes. It's a full toss. It's up. There's a man coming around. Is he going to get there? Oh, it's right in the middle of both of them. It's always almost been a horrible collision where they've managed to avoid each other, but nobody has managed to get hands on the ball. But there you go. This is what he does. This is what he does. He creates chances. I tell you what, I wouldn't want to face him. He, he's, he's the kind of guy you have to hit. You can't use any pace on the ball. You have to hit it, and it's very easy to miss time. Even if you get a couple of way out of the screws, some one's coming where you won't miss. You won't time it. Here he comes. All right, full start, dead ball. I'd like to understand what his logic is around coming around the wicket. Here he goes. Bubble flooring it again. That's that's not a great ball. And that's been dispatched to six runs. It is a Maximo. And yeah, that's not a great ball. And this is what I mean. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this round the wicket. I don't think it's it's it works as well as coming over like that. If you drop drop a little bit short and it just sits up and it's so easy to be dispatched over mid wicket. So that's why I think he's better off coming over and trying to bowl full. Right, let's see, maybe he's got some tricks in his pocket. Pavel Florin in again. It's a better length, but it's been hit really well. And that's going to be another six. That's two sixes in a row, back to back. Maximo time. And Ridoy is racing now. He's on 28 off 19. And, you know, they've just turned the tide a bit here. If there's another six of this ball, I mean, I don't want to say it, but you never know. You never, never know. It's really releasing the pressure. And you're now seeing the Super Kings just up in the, up in the ante a bit. And T10 can be a funny game sometimes, so you, you never want to write anyone off. Here he comes again. Last ball of his first over. Oh, it's a real moon ball. It's a good ball, actually. That's the one. It's fuller, hard to get under, and doesn't really sit up. So he finishes pretty well. It's going to be just a single. He does go for 21 off his over. The score is 48 for one of five. 97 required in 30 balls. It's not an easy gig. It's not an easy job. Can they do it? Ridoy has started to, started to get going, though. He's on 29 off 20. Nath is 10 off 9. Probably needs to contribute a little bit as well. So let's see. I mean, it's a really tough chance, tough gig, but the game's not completely over yet. This over is huge. If they can have another over of 20, 25, then that will go a long way. Just got to see. They do have wickets in hand as well, so they can afford to take some calculated risks. Saying that, I don't know what's left in the shed. Amir again. It's bowled a full toss. It's been s sort of edged out to deep third man. It would just be one. It's those sort of balls you, you feel like if they were ever going to chase something like 145, those balls need to go to the boundary. Full toss outside off. Again, like I said, there's no real protection on that offside boundary. There's just the two third men. And there's the long off. So there's a big gap between like air, all, the whole cover region on that boundary is open. So Amir Ali, that's a good ball, but it's been hit. It's very high. There's a man under it. 
Should be out. Oh, he's dropped him. He's dropped it. And they're going to come back for two. Oh, it would have been a run out too if he'd hit. But there you go. A little bit of luck. And that's what you need in this situation. And UNEF's had a bit of luck too. There was a couple of catches that went down. So that's uh, an unlucky miss for UNEF. But a little bit let off the hook for Nath. He needs to capitalize now. They need him to step up here. Here he goes. Another full toss wide. He's oh, squirted it away. Squeezed it out to deep mid wicket for one. Again, probably a ball that could have been hit to the boundary. Pretty loose delivery. Calling for a new bat. I don't know if it's anything wrong with the bat. But I'm going to say, I mean, Ali is bold. I mean, he's only gone for seven off his one and a half overs. I think he could have gone for a lot more, but still got to take it off to him. He's only gone for seven. Here he comes again. Digs it in a bit. Just too much for the bat. I di didn't get anywhere near that one. I think he was expecting the full one again and dug it in. So pretty good bowling. Just good thinking from Ali here. You just feel like this next ball needs to go to the boundary. Needs to go to the boundary if you're a super king. Here it comes. Ali coming in. It's wide. It is gonna, it is gonna go to the boundary. It's it's wide on the leg stump and it's been really nicely flicked and turned around the corner. That was a, a classy shot. It's not a great ball, but you've still got to hit it. And it was quite wide. That could have easily just gone down the leg side for one. But Rido thought, you know what, I want I want four. I don't want one. I'm not here for ones. And he's kind of just clipped it around the corner and it has raced away for four. So, right on cue. It's a nice shot. So, right on cue, they get the boundary that they needed. Another boundary here would be interesting. Uh, he's missed it. Just played and missed. Sort of didn't really get up. It stayed a bit low. So Ali finishes with respectable figures of none for 13 off two. The score is 58 for one. And you've got Ridoy, who's looking very good on 36. He's faced 24 deliveries. And Naif has, is on 13. He's faced 11 balls. Have a look at the batting scorecard. And you can see these two have basically done the job. But the real big difference between these two teams is if you look at the extras, UNEFs have only bowled five extras. If you think back to to the Super Kings innings, they bowled over 50 extras. They, they bowled over 35 wides, I believe it was. And they had bowled, by this point, at least 25 to 30 wides. So this is the real difference. If you take the, all those wides out of the equ equation, then there's not that much difference between these two teams. So it's something that the Super Kings really need to think about. New bowler now. It's going to be Yunus Jut. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It could be Jut, it could be Jut, it could be Yut. I will find out. Not sure what he bowls. It's coming right arm over. Let's see. There's not much of a run up. Actually, a pretty good ball. He's right on the money. It's been punched away to point. He'll get one. Pretty no nonsense bowling there, I think. Just comes in and just does the job. But that's what you need in this situation. All they they only need one good over. I mean, right now from here they need 86 of 23. <laughs> I think it's 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 going to be a very difficult task. But you don't want to die wondering. You got to go down swing. That's a really good ball. It could be close. Maybe just sliding down that leg side. Hit him on the back leg. It was sliding. Let's have another look. We're not going to see a set from that angle, but it did look like uh, it was close. But I think the umpires made the right call there. He comes again. Down the wicket. Oh, could have been up to the stumps down. He's, he's keeping back in a helmet. So <laughs> interesting choice for the keeper there. I think he needs to be up to the stumps. There's no reason why. I mean, that, it doesn't really matter if he leaks a couple of runs right now. He might as well be up there and having that stumpy chance. But you've got to say, you're bowling really well. There it is, commentator's curse. As soon as I say it, it's a big wide. Classic case. I just really like to see Super Kings just take this as far as they can. I don't want to see them shut up shop at all. It's a nice ball. It's been punched down to long on. They'll get one. Nice full and straight. Little bit of shape. Yeah, I just want to see the Super Kings just make as much of a match of it as possible. Just take it to take it as far as they can. Just be aggressive and 
They're going to have to reflect and try to take the positives out of this game. It's going to be hard for them to find, but there are some positives for them. They need to be onto that. It's a good ball. There it is again. There's another stumping chance. He's coming down the wicket. But keeper is not up to the stumps, so I'm not going to get it. So pretty handy over so far. Very good ball. And he's been missed time. He's actually, he's actually, he's got him. He's got him. I couldn't see it. There was a cube was in the way. Come down the wicket. He's mistimed it. And Haider Ali, a long off, has taken a pretty simple catch. Actually, you deserves that wicket. That was a good over. That was well bowled. I don't mind the intent there from the batter. I think he had to go for it. He had to do what he had to do. He, he was very cutting off. So, fair enough. Pulling all the bad shots to get someone else in. Anyway, it's not working for him. Come on here. Don't do it again. Oh, well, Come on. Don't come around here. But it's all UNEFs at the moment. And seven overs done. 61 for two is the score. And... But you're going to run away with another big win. Another big win. We're playing mini violins at the moment out there. I can see them. They're out there <laughs> playing air violin. They're a real group of characters. I really like them. Classic. Having a quick look at the fantasy dashboard for match number three. You're going to see the Super Kings again, and they're going to be playing against the Gladiators, who will be looking to bounce back after a big loss in that first game. The reigning champions. Super Kings have just got to look to improve. I think that's all they've got to be thinking about right now. They need to just look to improve. And the obvious one is extras. If they can improve the extras, if they can cut that down by 50, 60, 70%, then they're going to be saving another 30 runs, 35 runs. It's really, really important for them that they do that. So, new bowler. It's going to be Aruna Umesh. And the new batter is Raza. That's a good shot. It's full. It's wide. It's actually squirted down to that third man. Again, thought he hit it better than that when it came off the bat. But I like the intent. So Riddy, you know, he's been a shining light for them here. He's made a few runs. He's done pretty well. Could actually be in the market for a 50, which would be a big lifter for them. This is Razor's first ball. Oh, it's a good ball. Oh, he's leading edge. That's a nice ball. Full and straight. Brings the LBW into it. He's got a leading edge. Could have been a caught and bold chance. But I do like that. There again. Oh, he's batting a long way outside. Oh, that's a really rank ball. That might be one of the most... That's what, that's probably the loosest ball we've seen today, and that's saying something. Since we've seen quite a few loose ones. He's just got that all wrong, dragged it down a long way outside. That's going to be two, two wides. Umesh again, that's much better, much better. But it's been hit really well to that vacant area out on cover. But it's not going to go all the way. And amazingly, they're only going to run one. <laughs> I thought he hit that pretty well. But it's just held up in the, on that cover boundary. And they get one more. So Reza back on strike. That's a good ball. Really good ball from Ramesh the exact area you want to be bowling kind of wide and full inside the wide line that is executed perfectly really really good stuff so handy over so far from Umesh again just adding to this balanced bowling attack oh it's a really nice ball but it's a beautiful shot it's up it's up where is it going there's a man under it he's got him he's got him it's a nice shot I mean just didn't quite get it it kind of went went didn't didn't fully go through with the shot. He went for it and then just checked it and it ended up just going straight up. I think if he had gone through and had a proper hit at it, it would have been uh, a really nice shot. So, there you go. Umesh strikes. I'm not going to say, look at this. This is quite a handy ball. It's like an off cutter. He's rolled his fingers on it. And this is what I mean about their bowling attack. They've, they've got a really balanced bowling attack. They've got a lot of options. 
A couple of the bowls we saw in the last game not playing, and they're full of life. They're full of energy. Real characters, these guys. So the new batter is going to be uh, Nahid Hussain. He will face one more ball of this eighth over. So it's going to be a pretty tough task for the Super Kings to bounce back, playing against the reigning champs after this 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 loss, which is impending. And you have a few people commenting in the chat about my commentator's curse. I'm a natural, I think. Here he comes, Umesh again, down the leg side wide. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks like I'm a natural uh, every time. It happens all the time. There's something about it, isn't there? It's interesting to know. I wonder what it is. It's very curious and mysterious, but. Seems to be a real thing. <laughs> okay, Mesh coming in again. Last ball of his over. It's well bowled and respected. Just played down into the leg side and there will be no run taken. So after eight overs, it is 66 for three. And I've got to say another dominant performance by Uma. They've been very, very impressive this morning. So here we go, two overs to come. Let's see if the Super Kings can just build a little bit of momentum going into the next match. They're playing for the badge now. They're playing for pride. It is going to be good again. It's a nice ball and it's a stumping chance, but it's gone straight through the keeper's legs. And they will pass through for one bye. I'd like to see the keeper up for the stumps. I mean, there's no real point in being back there. I mean, you don't you need any pressure of the, the team chasing the runs. Might as well get in the game. Here he goes again. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Inside out over cover. That's an amazing shot. Shot of the innings. Where has Hussain been all my life? That is beautiful. Just a little bit of width. Goes inside out over cover. One of my favourite shots to watch. Really, really good. Um, Dave is asking what my at name is. I'm actually not sure. I think I'll, I'll po post in here. I think it's just my name, Stefan Gooch. I'm just going to write a little one in there. You can see yourself. It's a good ball. Full. Very full. It's been sort of squeezed down, jammed down to short, fine leg. They're going to get two. Pretty good running. Oh, that's very nice of you, Nick. Thank you. Thanks for all the kind words in the chat, guys. I really appreciate it. Nick's saying I think you should get the commentator gig more often, Gucci. Well, I do enjoy it, and I've put my hand up for it a few times. We've got a very good team of commentators here at the ECN, but I'm always happy to do it. It's a good ball. Advanced down the pitch and punched down the cover. It's good speed in the fielder. It's going to go all the way for four. It's a really nice shot. He just advanced a couple of steps. It wasn't that full, and he's hit it on the up and made it, got, it, got it through the covers. So this is what I'm saying. A nice little bit of momentum shift at the end of the innings can mean that the Super Kings can take some positives out of it and take a bit of momentum into the next game, which is going to be important playing against the Gladiators. It's a good ball. It's nicely played again. There is a man down there. They'll get a single. I like Hussain, though. He looks good. I feel like he should have maybe been up the order a bit. <laughs> nice comments tied the gooch. Hey Helix, good to see you my friend. It's a pleasure to be here. That's a good ball. He's been turning to, oh, he's got him. Yeah, leading edge. Leading edge. And Ridoy, he's played well. He's played gallantly. He's given his best. But he is gone now. That's just a nice ball. Just pitching on about middle of the leg and sort of shaping away to off. And it's just got him inside out. And he's got the leading edge. And... There you go. So a little late shape, leading edge. That man at short mid wicket doesn't make any mistake. And another one bites the dust. So that's the end of nine. We have one over to go. The score is 80 for four. 
And again, you got to think about all those wides in that first innings or the extras. 145 at the target, and there was 53 extras or 52 extras. So, you know, you'd start to think if they didn't bowl all those extras, then this game is a lot closer than it is right now. To be fair, Unifs have been pretty disciplined with their bowling. They haven't bowled at that many extras, and it is going to be Pavel Florin who will bowl the final over. I mean, look at him. I'm not sure what he's doing with the ball there. <laughs> He's a real character, this guy. We love watching him play. We love him having him on the network. And he's going to be doing coming around the wicket. One more over. And the new batter is Naeem Sheikh. He's going to be at the non-striker's end. So this is still going to be Nahid Hussain, who's batted really well, actually. I think he's, he's looked really good. So it's Florent Hussain. And there's the moon ball. It's a good ball. It's a chance. Oh, it's almost so slow that the batter can run down the wicket five paces and then miss it and then get back before the, it even reaches the keeper's gloves. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Actually, a really good ball. Very hard to hit that. There's literally, the, <laughs> the batter can get back before the keeper can, can get the ball. It's fantastic. There we go. Pablo Florin in again. Hiding the ball behind his back. He doesn't want anyone seeing what he's doing with it. Oh, it's a bit flatter ball. It's another decent ball. He's giving himself a bit of room. And he always oh, dropped him. Oh, he's dropped him. It's another decent ball there. I like that. He has. Yeah, that's pretty decent. It's a good ball. He's just giving himself a bit of room. Hasn't really hit it, a saying. And. Unfortunately for Florin, and Unifs has been dropped. He would have loved to take a wicket now. Anyway, he's got four more balls to do it. Behind the back, hiding it. No one's going to get to see what he's bowling. And it's up, it's up, it sits. <laughs> it's hard to hit or get away, it really is. That one's just been punched down to long on for one. Yeah, he's, he, he just, he's got a very unique style of bowling. And I, I think it's hard to get away. I think you'll easily get one, hit one or two, middle a couple, couple of sixes, and then you're bound to sky one or miss hit one because you ha there's no no pace on the ball whatsoever. You have to generate all of the pace by yourself. And not an easy thing to do. Here he comes again. Three balls left. Can he get a wicket? It's up. It's a good one. He's come down. He's punched it. <laughs> punched it down the ground for one. So this is a pretty good over so far from Florin. He'd love to cap it off with a wicket. Two balls to do it. Florin to shake. Oh, he switched it. Oh, he's got something on it too. Dot ball. So after a pretty expensive first over, Pavel Florin is, is improving his figures here. I think he went for 20 off the first over. So he's only gone for four off this over. Pretty good finish for him. Can he finish with a wicket? He would love to pinch a wicket here. A little cheapy at the end. Florin comes in, he bowls. It's a huge moon ball. It's dipped on him, a Yorker basically. It has been swept out to deep mid-wicket for a single, and that will be that, folks. That's the game. So, the Bucharest Super Kings will finish their chase on 84 for four after their 10, and UNEF's undefeated after two matches and a real dominant win in this with one by 60 runs. But again, you've got to think about those extras. 52 extras, if they only bowled 40 of them. If, I mean, if I only bowled 10 of them, if they reduced 40 of them, then this is a cl pretty close game, and you never know what could happen. So it's, the, the Super Kings have got to take that out of it. They've got to take it out, take the positives out of it and think that we just need to improve certain areas of our game and we can compete. And like I said, this UNEF's team looked good. I, I think they look for a pretty sharp team. I don't think they've fluked anything this morning, and I just think they're going to get better and better. So really, really impressive stuff for them. Congratulations to them. Two from two, top of the table. 
As we see the highlights here, Hyder Ali, he bowled really well, didn't he? That was a phenomenal ball just in that area, just nagging, got him going fishing. I really like this UNEF's bowling attack. I think it's really balanced and they've got a lot of good options. So here you can see Ricky, Ricky Gill again, he bowled well too. That's one was just slapped away as one of the one of the few boundaries that happened at this point. But you gotta say, UNEFs have been very, very impressive. I mean, once he bowled 52 extras as the Super Kings did, it's a pretty tough ask to come back and win any match. 52 extras, that's the highest score in their innings. So it was never gonna be an easy, easy task for them. And they never really got ahead of that rate. They really never were really in the match. You know, take your hat off to Unifs as well. Unifs, they bowled really, really well. And we've got a highlight reel of Pavel Florin bowling moon balls. You love to see it. <laughs> and um, yeah, he bowled pretty well too. And this is what I mean, their options, their options are vast. This one was unlucky, put down in the outfield. But they just seem to have a conveyor belt of decent bowlers, Unifs. That was a really nice shot around the corner. Not a great ball, but you still got to hit it for four. I was, I was impressed by Giot. And here he is, Mr. Maximo is in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, he is here. And here we go, Aruna, he was good as well. Umesh, he bowled really well. This was a nice hit down the ground. And it was out. I <laughs> Ali took the nice catch. Uh, but I, I was impressed with him. Giot, he just bowled line and length. He just That was a nice ball, actually. He just put it tailing away the last second and caught it short mid-wicket. And here it was, Papal to finish the proceedings. Bowled a pretty good last over. Had a couple of stumping chances if the ball wasn't traveling so slowly that the batter could get back before the keeper even collected it. But he did bowl well. There's this unlucky drop catch chance. But, you know, he finished the proceedings. And there you have it. Another win for Unefs. They have been fantastic this morning. Really, really impressive. And you heard it here first. They are going to be a difficult team to beat over these next couple of weeks. So you can have a look at the batting scorecard there. And it was Ridoy who did well, 39 of 31. He really dug in and he put up a fight. Nath, he got 14 of 14. Nahid Hussain, a couple of really nice shots. I actually feel like he should have been up the order a bit further after he came in and played that inside out shot over cover for four. Really, really nice. 15 of eight. And as you can see, the difference is extras. In that innings, only 10 extras were bowled uh, compared to 52 in the first innings. So there you go, bowling scorecard. Looks pretty pretty respectable. One Hyder Ali, one over, one for six. Kind of everyone going between six and 10. A couple of guys a little bit more expensive. Ricky Gill went for 11 and Pavel went for 12 and a half. But Yunus Yut, Yut, I'm not even sure how you say it. Two for 16, he bowled really well. And like I said before, they've just got a really solid, bold, balanced bowling attack. So really impressive from them. Bucharest Super Kings, yes, they've got a lot to think about. They need to go back to the drawing board and they need to go back to basics and just improve those small things like line and length and you know consistency and rhythm. But very, very exciting times. What a fantastic start to this tournament. And there you have it in the second game, match two. UNEF beat the Bucharest Super Kings by 60 runs. A comprehensive win. Two from two at the top of the table. Next match is going to be interesting. Super Kings taking on the Gladiators. And Gladiators obviously looking to bounce back after a, a bit of a shocking loss in that first game. I don't think anyone was expecting UNEF to come out and, and knock off the reigning champions. So they will have a point to prove and they'll be out in force. But for now, I'm going to take a break. I'm Stefan Gooch. And we'll be back with Vinny Sandu, Mr. Maximo, who is in the house. He will be here for the next match. Until then, we're going to go and have some lunch. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. And ciao for now.
European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Well, hello and welcome to Romania. That's not just me telling you that. That's what I heard about 20 minutes ago when I arrived in this country. But it is great to be here. It's Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo, fresh off the plane and here in time for at least three matches here on opening day. Match three coming up between the Bucharest Super Kings and the Bucharest Gladiators. So yeah, this should be a pretty interesting contest. I've been lurking and I've been uh, not working, I suppose, because uh, yeah, I did have a bit of an issue with my, my flight getting cancelled, which meant that I'm here a bit later than I expected to be. But I uh, certainly think that Stefan Gooch needs a big round of applause, figuratively speaking, for his uh, great work filling in. In my absence, of course, Rico will be here as well, but yeah, due to the fact that it's his daughter's 21st birthday over the weekend, he'll be here from day three onwards. But anyway, welcoming all of you to the broadcast. Got to say, I've liked some of the, the new kits I've seen this morning already. I mean, what about UNEFs? Aren't they the story of the morning with two wins out of two games? Super Kings found it a bit harder to, to be competitive, didn't they? A little bit earlier, of course, we had the coin toss for this match, match three. Let's see what happened then. Welcome to match three between the Super Kings and the Gladiators. The Gladiators will call. Tail. Tail was caught. It is Tails. We will bet first. Gladiators will bet first. Back to Stefan Gooch in the commentary box. Oh, Meta, you're living in the past because Steph is actually... I tried to keep him, but of course he's quite busy in his role as, as tournament referee, so uh, he's been... I won't say told, but <laughs> he's had to go back and just organise a few things over there. But I'm really hopeful that we can get Steph back uh, a little bit later in the day, or certainly tomorrow, because I'd like to do a bit of a stint with him. Not often we get Steph in the box, of course. It's a very important role, that, uh, that tournament referee role. They're doing lots of things behind the scene also. And one of their roles is to to kind of, uh, I suppose, train and mentor the umpires. And uh, you've got to say, it's nice to see a few familiar faces out there. Also a few new faces. Yeah, so Progress Super Kings uh, went down to UNEFs in that first match. They just played in a match two. Gladiators, though, they also went down to UNEFs. So both these two suffering the same fate so far on day one. But, uh, you know, one player I'm watching for the Gladiators, and he's, he's likely to open up here, Manmeet Kohli. Now, he's a guy we've seen for the, playing for the Romanian national team. Primarily, he's a bowler, but I also think he's a good hitter. Kind of missed out in that first game. Gladiators just lacked that, that one player that could take the ball by the horns, didn't they, in match one. I also want to welcome everyone on YouTube live chat. But first, here's Nath on what can only be described as a brand new and extremely wide pitch. In fact, it made me think of the other opposite extreme we had back in St. Gallen in 2020 when we had a pitch that made the players look like giants. Kind of looks like a bunch of ants playing out there sometimes, doesn't it? But anyway, I'm looking forward to, to settling in. If I'm completely honest, I'm still, still uh, setting up my things. That's okay, is not. Nice little in-swinger. Uh, Coley gets off the mark immediately. Welcoming all of our viewers on fan code in, in India, of course. Of course, all of our viewers on the YouTube channel, ECN European Cricket Network. I was kind of hoping Steph was here because I was going to run him through what I was going to call the story of my last 24 hours or so. A bit like the amazing race, if you know that show. A bit like that. Another in-swinger decides to use the boot. Can be a dangerous strategy. They just get a single. Yes, I will be in the live chat shortly, as soon as I turn everything on. But uh, thanks for all, all the fun we've had this morning. When I have had a chance to chat, when I have been on the ground, I've enjoyed the interaction. Kind of goes back and leans on this. Might get two here. I might get four here, actually. Oh, another flying. Kung Fu style stop. <laughs> they will get two. It's almost more than that, wasn't it? It's a bit chaotic, but I mean, that's the story of the European Cricket Network, isn't it, really? We've had, we've had a lot of developments pretty quickly. Struggle to keep up sometimes with the pace of it. 
hits this into the ground, you know. Colby. So, a little bit lucky there. Maybe some bad on that, you know. I just think he just knocked it into the ground. Yeah. Just gets a little bit of bad on that, doesn't he? I've seen us being pretty accurate here and waveringly so as we get to the end of the first over. The Bucharest Gladiators. They are seven without loss. In case of how the mighty have fallen, really, when the, the defending champions go to the newcomers, that's always a headline, isn't it? And yeah, your nefs knocking over the gladiators in match one. I mean, it's such a confidence boost. I often say cricket's a confidence game. I'm sure you guys got lots of questions. And I don't have a problem with that at all. Stick them in the live chat. And in a couple of minutes when I'm in there, I'll do my best to answer them all. But did spread a bit of fake news, such as that I was coming by Chopper and that there was a police escort. It wasn't quite that dramatic, if I'm completely honest. It's going to be Tala Ansari to bowl over number two. Full toss, and this is going to be worked away for four. It's about thigh high, and I uh, don't think it's quite high enough to be a no ball, but it will go to the boundary. So that's a, a bit of a confidence booster for Tazib. Ul Hassan, who's getting the responsibility at the top of the orders for the Gladiators. You know, Moyes is a big loss. He really carried the, the Gladiators last year. So without him, it's a different seeming proposition, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, this is oh, straightens down the line on the middle stump and hooked into the offside. It's not cleanly handled straight away. They're going to push and they're going to get two. That's, that's very ambitious running. I like it. I like the hustle so far. The one thing I would say, and this goes for most, most nations we go to, every time I visit, things have improved. I've got to say, I've never seen the ground looking as nice as I do, as, as I find it today. And it always looks good. But it just looks next level today. It looks very professional. It's perfectly manicured, looked after. You know, this is a nice shot by Tazib. Smacks this through the leg side and gets four. So... Gladiator is trying to get something going. I know that Ramesh Sathisan, the Romanian skipper, was saying this morning that you know, something like an 80 or 90 plays wasn't really enough for the Gladiators this morning. And we'll keep an eye on that as the series continues. But you don't mind them scoring runs if, if they're earned. Yeah. That's a nice shot. Just kind of knocks it down the... The field, it'd be a big stop. In fact, he just gets there, doesn't he? It's Nahid Hussain, pulls it back and gets a little bit of the boot on it. It's been a couple of overs for foot fielding, if that's your cup of tea. Really searching with the first breakthrough. Like I said, no one for the Gladiators really stood up with the bat for an extended period. Another full toss, and that one is Adios Pelota Maximo. Not the first one of the day, but the first one I've had the pleasure of calling here at the Royal Vasir Cricket Ground. And uh, yeah, once again, a yeah, bad ball, really, no other way to put it. Gets cashed in. I see shot by Tazib, who just like that's up to up to 21. Last ball the over. It's a better one. Better length as well. And get to the end of two. And the score is 26 without loss. Got to admit, I'm still plugging things in, but I promise I'll get to the chat pretty soon. Why don't I maybe just let you know while, while I'm setting up exactly what happened? You know, sometimes you can just be too organised and have a quick look at the table. Just run through maybe some of the teams we haven't seen yet. Okay, UNEF's are new, but we have seen them already. ACCB, we know them. They've been runners up two years ago and, and always pretty pretty competitive. Banyasa are a good side as well. Um, Zalmi are a new side of the competition. Cluj are previous winners. Jamata, they're kind of like the Cluj A team in a way, but they're new to the competition. Transylvania is where I saw them. Um, Zenitis as well. Okay, so like six new teams out of the 11. Previously, we've just had five teams here. This year, we have 11. Anyway, this is up. And it's in the air, and it is absolutely slammed down to the ground. Maximal! 
Oh, what a shot that is. And Hazeem's in a mood, isn't he? That wasn't the worst ball, really. The Sheik that comes on. And uh, just a cleanly struck ball. It is the last over of the power play, don't forget. Very, very well struck. Sheik, never a great feeling when you get knocked out of the park first ball. And then next ball is through the cover region. That's going to be four more. So very good striking at the moment. And yeah, just start to wonder where this wicket's going to come from. Away with a few things early. Very nicely struck. Zeep showing he's not just a leg side player. He hit the one very well. A little wildlife around here as well. It is near a lake. It is a clear lake. Marvellous here. Anyway, another shot down the ground. Lifted up over long on Maximo. The boundaries just keep on coming at the moment. That was a good hit. Good clean hit. And Tazeeb is 38 off 12. He's loving life at the moment. I mean, it's not the worst bowling I've ever seen. It's kind of pick up length. And you've got a guy that's got his eye in now. Victory for the bowler, I suppose. Like it doesn't end up going over the boundary. But yeah, it's a Eve. Dangerous proposition at the moment. Sheik, can you turn this over around? Well, maybe to an extent. Oh, four runs. Oh, he was kind of helpless, wasn't he? Just like you're watching your car slowly run down the ramp after you've already locked the front door. He did get a piece of that, didn't he? That's sort of nothing. We've already seen it the ball increase, but he just did the heavy lifting. But couldn't finish the boundary stop. Fast for the power play. He gets it again, doesn't he? Time he will stop it. This is when the crowd, back in the old days, they'd give you a big Bronx cheer, they used to call it anyway. Right now, it's in the power plant. It's a good one for the Gladiators, isn't it? It's 47 without loss after three. Some thoughts of a sneaky second run, but not on in the end. Getting closer and closer to... I ought to turn the computers on. But I might just have a sneak peek into the chat right now. And... Uh, yeah, Rob's saying I might be off buying an ice cream for Gucci. Well, he doesn't need one. And one thing that has arrived is lunch. I'm looking forward to that at some point as well. After surviving on my two, two chocolates that they gave out on the plane. One for each flight. But yeah, hello to Rob Thompson. Hello to Chris Smith as well. Had to get here. Probably towards the end of, of the last game. And I just uh, got the opportunity to, to meet up with a few people that I have seen before in Romania and a couple of new faces. Like I said, really happy that it's gone from five teams to 11 local sides here this year. So, I mean, what it might mean is you might have a couple of sides that struggle because it's their first experience, but isn't that what it's all about? Exposing more players to the pressure. Yeah, it's a strike to the mid wicket region. That's going to be four. Well, sort of enough does come back for the next over. Just angles in. I've got to say, I like the way that like the way that Tazeeb has opened up that leg side without what I'd call you know, hitting recklessly across the line. Brings up the 50 partnership as well for the Bucharest Gladiators. Just the start that they were hoping for. Super Kings haven't found a way through so far. This is hit offside. This, this field is quickish, but not the quickest we've seen. It's actually one of the easier fields to field on. If you go by you know, some of the fields we've seen, it's good running, by the way. It's Coley legs it out for a couple. But you know, this ground, if I had to compare it to a ground that we see on ECN, I actually would compare it to the Cardamom Oval in the way that the ball reacts when it hits the turf. Like, it is it is fast, but it's also it's fairly predictable. You're not going to see too many Tortugas out there. We shouldn't anyway.
anyway. See, yeah. Super Kings have a lot to think about at the moment. off a bit to Zeeb, who's gone to 49 in what seems like no time at all. I did get up on him, didn't it? Nath bowling out here. Super Kings, led by Raman Ridoy, likely to open the batting in this game. Yeah, we'll get through for a single here, just... And it means that Tazeeb gets his 50. And what a good innings that is. He's really taken this game away from the Super Kings early. And yeah, he'll be feeling that he wants to go on with it because he's, he's had the, the majority of the strike. He's got a lot of balls still left to come this innings. And he's already 50. In fact, we're not even at the end of the fourth over yet. It's a real opportunity. I won't use the, the word, but you know what I'm thinking. Coley. Stuck in the role of second fiddle at the moment. Hasn't had too much of the bowling, has he? Golly, he doesn't need to go into his shell too much. I kind of get that you want to want to give the strike back to the guy, but you've also got to play a natural game. Yeah. Up in the air. Almost carries. It's good effort, actually. From the field out there. It's name Sheik, I think, that you can see the value of the wicket, I think, at the moment, because they need to make something happen, don't they? But right now, it's the end of the fourth, and the score is 55 without loss. So let me go back to that chat, and then I'll, I'll take you through the story of the wife a little bit late, by a little bit, I mean, four hours, but what's four hours between friends? Not too much, actually, when you have to move countries. Go through plenty of countries on the way. So Dave asking, where am I? I'm here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I also want to say well done to Gucci. I'm trying to get him back at some point today. The guy's got a job to do. That's why they pay him the big bucks. Well, the robot's in there saying love a wide pitch. Yeah, it is wide, isn't it? It's a fair landing strip. Reminds me of the runway, actually, that I touched down on not too long ago. So same field here. I've got to say the field's looking even better than at any point I've ever seen it. Maybe it's the time of year we're coming, uh, but it looks magnificent. Yeah, so new pitch, but same field. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is a hanging full toss, and it's out of the ground. Maximo! As the captain comes on, Roman Ridoy doesn't get it right. And Coley gets his first blow in anger. A little touch of the shoulder saying, hey, you weren't meant to do that. Looks like Keanu is, is looking forward to seeing Transylvania tomorrow. This will be called wide outside the off stump. A bit of a way shape there from Rudoy. Dracula for Transylvania? You never know. This one's probably wide as well. It comes back, but not quite enough. The accuracy is important. I think the bowling depth being tested here as well. Nothing's worked so far for the Super Kings. Short and wide again. This time goes with the angle. I think pitch is just inside. Four runs. And not a good ball, Ridoy. It's kind of pick your poison, wasn't it? Because about as Probably got a fair inkling, Coley, that it's, it's going to be a wire, but he says, you know what? It's help yourself stuff as well. I'm going to take four. I've got to say, when I came here, it reminded me, and I don't know if any Australian viewers will remember this, but in the old days, <laughs> the old days when I was growing up, they used to have a Lilac Hill match to start off international touring teams in Australia. So it was basically a, a first grade ground they'd convert into you know, slightly more than that. Oh, another full toss. And that's going to be put away. Maximo! I'll probably check this for height as well. I think it might just be okay, but it'll be an interesting one. 
Here, co here it comes. Yeah, it's okay. And uh, yeah, not a good ball, not no ball, but still gets whacked. Now the next ball is it's called a wide. Steps inside this one. He's going to get four more. So Rodoy's over goes magical and it's not finished yet. Still two to come. Yeah, so who remembers the Lilac Hill match? I went to a couple in, in the old days. They would even occasionally get ex-players to come back. And I remember Dennis Lilly played with his son Adam once in the Lilac Hill match against Pakistan. And I think his son, who, who was a second grader at the time, ended up taking I think four wickets. Gets in the national side. Ooh. I think that's just on the pitch. This is a pitch you shouldn't be missing. It's just like imagine if you saw, I don't know, like a big green desert in front of you and they said, right, <laughs> try and hit that all pretty close. Yeah. All right, this one's up in the air. Kind of finds a pocket of space. Field has a lot to do, does well though. A few twos out there as well. Running hard. Part of that is I, I'd say the outfield's a little bit slower. I don't think it's slow, but it's slower than what we've seen lately. I think what we saw in Sweden was was crazy the way it was it was taking off and running, you know, 50, 60, 100 metres past the boundary. Oh, this one is lifted up and out of here. Maximo. And unfortunately for Rido, he goes supersonic in the fifth, and the Gladiators are out of control now. It's 87 without loss after five. <coughs> so very good start. And the Gladiators almost eclipsed their score from this morning already, haven't they? Rita always over goes for 32. And I said that bowling depth is going to be tested. I think there's your, there's your proof of that. Rita, does he risk a second one? Or does he hope that maybe... His batters are out in particular. Well, either one really. They're both. Maybe brings himself back. Or do you try something different? Right now, looking at Ahmed Ashkul Sana. He's going to bowl for the first time in over number six. There's nothing to lose, really. Looking so confident at the moment. That's well handled though down there. It's Nahid Hussain. He keeps it to one. Yeah, Helix remembers the Lilac Hill matches. They were great. You see about 10,000 people around. It's all temporary stands. Right by the Swan River. It's a bit of a shame with the crowded schedule now. Probably don't have those kind of tours anymore for international teams that kind of stick to internationals and not a lot else. Oh, this is down the leg side. Keeper gets a glove on it. Oh, he's going for four. Not the greatest running, to be honest. Maybe a bit of fatigue coming in. It's pretty warm. Pretty warm in the cube, to be honest. 25 degrees currently, heading for a maximum of 26. I even heard whispers of 27, 28, you know. Hello to Arun. Arun, thanks for your support as well over the last 24 hours. I want to be playing for Kim Arto in this tournament. It's in the air. It's a chance. And it's taken. Really good catch by Tala Ansari. Tazeev gets to 51. I just lost the... Lost the talking stick a bit, didn't he? To Coley, who grabbed a bit more of the strike. This isn't a bad shot, though, at all. Cracks it. But he's not able to get the elevation to get over the outfielder. And the catch was taken well by Tala. I mean, you've got the time to, to turn this around, I suppose. Like I said, the Gladiators didn't exactly... Turned on with the bat earlier. Anyway, nice innings. But as he departs, it's 90 for one.
Anyway, let's see the new batter now, number three. He's been waiting a while, hasn't he? And it's going to be Josh Akkadka. So left hand, right hand combination now. And yeah, Ashkul Sana came on. I mentioned he didn't have too much to lose and drew the, I suppose, slightly false shot out of Tazib. Good innings, though, 51 of 21. Oh, this one just gets through the infield, but won't get through the outfield. Quick work. Well, it's not too, and he slipped over. Well, at the keeper's end, might have had a chance. Oh, he was batless, wasn't he, Coley? And, and so, yeah, he almost ran himself into trouble. I suppose it's one thing to be to be taking on the second run, but I think you've got, you got to at least have a sneaky look first. And look here, takes it on, then completely loses his bearings. And then, to be honest, better throw even, the better relay throw. Might have had him, you know. Coley survives and faces up. Now he whips one away, it's high, and it's out of here. Maximo! Can't get on his pads. I said, I like Coley at the top of the order. Now he'd probably say, how's our batting line, line up looking if I'm opening up? But I think he's a talented striker. Didn't have a lot of the strike early. But that's a, that's a very, very well-timed ball over the leg side. Ashkul Sana, back to earth with a thud. Tries again, this time leading edge. Don't think Thurman picked it up straight away, but he does eventually. Just a single. Colley to 40. Coming off the half century, I'm sure. Yeah, I know the Super Kings new to the competition. A bit like the Bucharest Gladiators were last year, and they won it in their first attempt. It was five teams last year and the year before, and the year before, actually. In 2020, it was just a two-day competition, expanding to six-day competition in 2021-2022. That's well bowled. It's good heat from Sana, not a bad over at all. And it'll take us down to six. The score is 98 for one. <laughs> hey, Bucharest Super Kings, they're mostly of Bangladeshi descent. So I know quite a lot of the time the people of Bangladeshi origin, they like the, they like the orange colour because it reminds them of the tiger. And the tiger is a very important symbol to Bangladeshis. All right. Six over check-in time. You keep going at this pace. You've got 160, but I think they settled for maybe 140. First one. Not really located well by Rifat Raza, who gets the seventh over. Looks like Dave Bod in the chat is a Manmit Coley fan. Yeah. There's only one Coley on your TV screens today. And you're watching him. A little bit short. More in line, though, from Reza. Get through for a single. So you can see, since the, the wicket of Tazibul Hassan, things are a bit more under control, but still the 100 with plenty of time left. On the offside, so Kadka just happy to give the strike back. Probably not a bad option at this stage. Yes, yeah, so I think that said, still setting up, but, but you know, people want to know about my story in the last 24 hours or so. Yeah, I had my, had my flight cancelled, and then it's news to me. Probably the one day that I was doing back-to-back -back on my own in different countries, one day in the whole year. But, you know, Murphy's Law and all that. But uh, yeah, we ended up making a bit of a plan. Full toss, probably misses out. Probably can hit that straighter, you know. But, uh, yeah, so there is another airport in Stockholm, but I wasn't going to make it in time by the time I found out that I wasn't going to have a flight, which meant 
first flight this morning. Pretty wide. Yeah, it's close, but straight over the line, I think. And so, yeah, we had, we had, well, I say we, me and probably only a couple of other people that are affected spent the night. And then, oh, I should also mention, there are some, some really nice, oh, first, that's really nice because it's short and Coley pounds it. Maximo moves to 47. Good batting. He is really settling now. I suppose when you're not used to opening, it can be a, a bit of an initiation early. you just got to find your feet. But once you get in, it's once you get to this stage, he's batted this stage many, many times. And now he's got the benefit of having been there for seven overs already. 47 for Coley. Oh, bad shot, you know. Holy, it's across this. It's, I suppose I'm not straight on. Let's have a look at the replay from straight on. Wide of the crease. Yeah, maybe just hit him outside the line. Or it might have even hit the toe end of his bat. It's a good call from the umpire. Now, Coley goes up. Does he clear the boundary? He does. And that's his 50. Well done to Man Mick Coley. 53 off 18 balls. Didn't have the lion's share of the strike early. Both openers firing with half centuries for the Gladiators and the Super Kings find themselves chasing leather again here in match three. It's a good knock, isn't it? He's trying, but not trying too hard. I think that's the, that's the key to his innings. And you see there, he's got shots all over the field. Particularly good on the cut. He's looked for that a few times. Doesn't really hit too many down the ground. Seven overs down, and Ansari comes back, and that ain't great. That's going to be five bonus runs. And a left hander. And Ansari gets it completely wrong. And uh, he just completely gets that wrong. Can't get the angle right. That's good times. And sorry, that wasn't one of them. This is pretty well struck, and I think this will beat the field up. It does just. Nice effort from Nahida Hussain, but he can't stop it. So basically, nine off the first ball of the eight. I know amongst Bangladeshi people, the 75 shirt's very coveted as well. Shakib Al Hassan, where's that shirt for Bangladesh? And around the world. And cut, cut. Nice shot by him, though. Now it's full toss. Hits it straight through the mid wicket, and that's going to cost him four. It hurts, doesn't it? I mean, not too many bad bounces. It didn't really rock it to him. And yeah, unfortunately, for the Super Kings, ends up going to the boundary. Tough times. Oh, even tougher now. To be honest, at least they've learned from it because they put a fielder there. He does stop it in the end. <laughs> and uh, and sorry, maybe it's worth just going over the wicket to the left hand and see if you can get it right. I mean, that one, a bit worried for our camera at the moment. Well, you can see I put a fielder there this time. i will just get two wides. It's a lot more accurate. It seems a lot more comfortable with the right hander, doesn't he? Something that Steph was mentioning this morning on the coverage, the importance of giving away extras or not giving away extras. Right on cue, we see an overthrow. It's an unnecessary. Now it goes after the offside. That's a pocket of space. See the difference between this outfield and probably where we were in Sweden in how that ball reacts when it bounces for the first time on the field. It's not a full plug, but it certainly has the ground take the sting out of it. Sorry, he's gone for 38 now. Some of those are self-inflicted. 
Yeah, he's called it. I think this is probably a wide. Yeah, it seems like a harsh call, only because Ansari missed the proverbial barn door earlier in the over. But I think that, yeah, it's a good call. Outside of the ball's definitely on the line. Now, is this a chance? Probably not. Feels going to come a long way. Doesn't get there. Now they'll get two. He's running hard. It's Coley dropped his bat again. Yeah. We might have to start tying that thing to, to Coley's hand. We have to start tying that bat to Coley's hand like a surfboard. <laughs> because he has a few issues holding on to it for the second time, in fact, in this innings. Out to deep cover. They're going to probably get two there. In fact, they do it fairly easily. You can see, tough one for the Super Kings, who had some, some tough times in the field so far today on their first day of ECN action. It's the end of the eighth over the score. It's 139 for one. Two overs to go, time to party. You've got nine wickets in hand. And yeah, a little bit of a dip in the fourth over. That was a decent one. Apart from that, it's been pretty heavy scoring, as you can tell. And I guess you know, in these situations also presents opportunities for someone to step up. Now it looks like, in fact, we've got a, re got a retire out situation here, I think. No, I think so. I had some applause. It sounded like the applause from somebody walking off. But this cut got walked off and walked straight back on again. Maybe just needing a change of equipment there. Well, that was very sporting, maybe to give someone else a hit, but the cut cut a face up. Over number nine, all happens in the ninth. Sarah comes back, sneaks first one past. And oh, what, what's that? That's a, I don't know what they're putting on the top of the stumps here in Romania these days, but watch this ball hit the stumps and actually actually not, not the bail off. That'd be unlucky, he was home anyway, but have a look at this. It gives a little wobble. Good old fashioned chewing gum job. Oh, well, Coley gets lucky there. Don't know how that's missed. He is very lucky to survive there. Oh, just missing leg. Don't know how. But he has survived. You can feel the, the weight already on the minds, I think, of the Super Kings here. Oh, this time he doesn't miss it at all. It's going, it's going, and that is miles gone. Maximo! Oh, they give him a good target with the big Romanian cricket banner, which I'm loving on the hill, by the way. A bit of the grandstand there as well. And Coley has absolutely moosed that one out of the ground. And Mishkul Sana puts it in the challenge place, and then He's hit that so hard. Oh, he's broken his bat. Gets a new one. Didn't sound too broken to me when he hit it. Just trying to find a way through. It's a tough one, isn't it? Like I said, you've got six new teams to ECN here. You're bound to have a few teething issues. Especially against the defending champions, like here in match three. A slow ball. That's well done. Oh, but they go on the hit. Feel it. Pulls down a manhole, and they're going to get two when they should have got probably one. If he feels it, maybe he can throw the stumps down, but he just lost his footing at the, at the critical moment there, didn't he? Couple to come. And this score's approaching 150. Ready, we've hit the highest score we've seen so far. 
And it's going to keep on going. Fielder can't get off his feet. Long chase. Won't get there. Another five wide. Oh, third set of them in this innings. I don't even know how you can do three, five, three high fives at once. Probably have to bring the foot into action, but... Yeah, just a tough one for the keeper as well because he's missing by a long way. It's better. And... Who oh, doesn't pick it up at all? It made a difference. I'll just get a single. So, Coley hit 70. A confidence boost for him at the top of the order, though, in all seriousness. Last ball of the over, though. Cut, cut. Pretty much pin his ears back on this one. Get one, and that's it. And it takes us to the end of nine. Well, Chris Clay, that is 155 for one. Yeah, so anyway, let's go back to how I got here. So I slept on the floor at the terminal because three beautiful airport hotels were all booked out. I couldn't get a room at short notice. I could have gone to another hotel, but with only about six hours before I had to check in, I thought, you know what, I'll rough it. We organised, obviously, Steph. And a bit of a contingency plan, which worked out okay this morning. Big thanks to Steph again for stepping in. And then I had two flights to get here. I had to go um, Stockholm to Munich, then Munich to Bucharest here in Romania. Oh, he's got him. And she comes back and induces the chop on from Kudka. So something to shout about for the Bucharest Super Kings. Just a bit of a gap between bat and pad. I suppose this is the time for it, isn't it? Pretty much going for it no matter what. And gladiators not quite batting as deep as last year. So I think they'll be really happy the top order's done the job. Card cut. Sticks around for a while. Didn't mind his innings. He's going to have to go at 155 too. This is a good angle of it, actually. I see the big deflection onto middle and leg. And nice to see the, the Super Kings celebrating a little bit. Probably not celebrating on the level of what we saw earlier from UNEFs. Only a few people, people were asking. I think put it in the chat, but yeah, UNEFs, U-N-E-F-S. Basically, it stands for Universitatia Nacionala de Educatia Física Si Sport, or the National University of Physical Education and Sport. So pretty fitting that they feature here in the European Cricket Series. Swing and a miss. Oh, now that's super clever. Now he's throwing at a target that doesn't exist. This is experience. Uh, Coley wants to strike back and he basically gets Mendes to set, put the cheese in the trap. And as soon as those stumps go down, you can see Mendes and Coley, they're ready. And now the keeper is throwing at something that doesn't exist in the part of the space-time continuum after he throws the ball the first time. Hey, Coley does get the strike back. What can he do with it? Four to come. Hey, he waits for it and he hits it. And he hits it into an area of space. Why not go? It's a good piece of fielding, in fact. They'll be happy with two there. Coley keeps the strike. Yeah, Coley to 72. It's ready to come and the score looks like it's going north of 160 the way things are going. Coley probably likes the idea of two here, but he might give Mendes a hit. I think it was so nice to give him the strike back before. And with the score around 159, I'm feeling pretty confident. Anyway, see, so my first flight to Munich, you guessed it, got delayed, stuck on the tarmac for a little while, and I almost didn't get my connection. I had to sweet talk my way through the passport line a bit quicker, but I, but I got there. Got there in time, got here, okay, and now there's only one, I suppose it seems like a minor complication after you've slept on the floor, but uh, my bags did not make the plane, even though I did. And I was moving pretty quick between the two planes. It's, uh, no Mr. Maximo suits in Romania yet, though I'm here. Anyway, 
Uh, this one's going to be a real teaser. All the way back to the line, but it's going to be six. Maximo. And Mendes shows what he can do. So that's a positive for the Gladiators as well. They have had a very good time of it at the moment. That's a nice one for Mendes. Now he's got time to party. Score has climbed over 160. 166 plus this. Probably just going down leg side. And they'll just wander through for a leg by. So at the end of the 10 overs, the score is 167 for two. And Sheik ends up one for 32. Yeah, this one is just sliding. But yeah, I've got to say, Coley, he's deserving a lot of a lot of praise for his innings. And he's going to finish with a half century to his name. So, like I said, it's a good confidence booster as far as his series goes, isn't it? But, yeah, the score gets a bit out of control. 167. And, well, if the Super Kings thought they had it bad before, they've got it even worse now. And well, while we're here, as we roll into the highlights, and, yeah, it was... It's a, Good toss to win for the Gladiators to win the toss and bat and see if they can get their their bats clicking and that's basically exactly what happens. It's an interesting one I think bounced into the ground and then up into the gloves or almost into the gloves. But I don't think that was a chance. But yeah, how good was Tazib or Hassan early? You can see. And he was hitting the ball all around the ground. He wasn't just a one-trick pony, was he? Didn't go leg side all the time. And I like this, down the ground, he went the other way as well. Now this was one that went hand to face to rope. That's not a good combination if you're fielding on the straight boundary. And he was just powerless. He needed to go the army crawl to get there, couldn't do it. Coley, then he took over, didn't he? Stole the show. I mean, I don't know how you almost miss a pitch this wide, but we almost, seen, almost saw it done there. Eventually, they'd have a wicket to Zeeb. Well caught down on long on boundary by Tala Ansari. Coley, he batted well, but he didn't always hold the bat well. Have a look at this. He loses it. <laughs> he sits down. It's like one of those, I think they call them suicides when you 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 have to go down to a push-up and jump back up again. He was able to do that and get, get home. It was more our camera that was under attack as well, not just the fielders, because three sets of five wides in the innings and inflates the score, doesn't it? And you right, saw the left hand, right hand combination out there. That was a weird one. Hit the stumps, didn't got the bail off. This one certainly did, as Kadka was collateral damage in the 10th over. This was smart. IQ 150 moment from Coley, and then he throws at stumps that don't exist. And Mendes, after doing Coley a solid, he gives him the strike and says, Oh, can you hit one out of the park? Was able to. It's Coley getting a two. Mendes then coming up with the goods after the next one was a single. Slamming that one out of the ground. They were past 160. And now hit my, my mother-in-law in the morning after New Year's Eve. It was a little bit ugly for the Bucharest Super Kings on debut here. Just struggling to penetrate with the ball. And uh, well. Bit of a retro shot there, because that was Tazeeb early on, who was able to smack that away. And so, yeah, twin half centuries at the top of the order, setting up a big total. Super Kings, well, if you want to think positive, they could set a record, because the highest target ever achieved is 164. They'll need 168, and that's because the, Super, the Gladiators have a good batting innings, don't they? Ul Hassan set the table, 51 of 21. Coley batted through 73 of 28. Nice knock from the handsome man from Romania. Kat Keller lefty stuck around for a while. He made 11. Mendes was able to grab a six at the end. 26 extras though, including 23 in wide. You just can't afford to give that many away, especially when guys are hitting the ball well. I'll draw on the pos positives in the bowling figures with Sir of Nath. None for 15 off two, but apart from that, doesn't look too good, does it? Ashkul Sana had some good moments, took one for 26. The other week it went to Naeem Sheik, but he got uh, Ansari just failing to locate a few times. And 
Don't forget, Rudoy, the captain, he went supersonic in his over. That went for 32. We'll take a break. We'll be back very shortly. And we'll see the chase and we'll see what the Super Kings can put together. Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo. On behalf of Stefan Gooch and all of the European Cricket Network crew, welcome to Romania. We'll see you after this for more Fan Code European Cricket Series.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Hello, cricket lovers, and welcome back to Romania. Vinny Sandu here, Mr. Maximo. Finally catching up on the action. I hope you are enjoying it as well. How good does this cricket field look at the moment? Moira Vlasia, cricket ground. And right now, we're watching the second half of match three. It's Bucharest Super Kings versus the Bucharest Gladiators. The Bucharest Derby to it. There's a few of them here, though. 11 teams this year, up from five last year in the European Cricket Series. It's going to be Joshak Kadka, who batted pretty well. He's going to be out there, and as far as the Super Kings, looks like they're going to open with Tala Ansari and Saurav Nath. 168 would be the highest ever total achieved if they could do it. Here we go. And wow, didn't we see this earlier as well? It might have been a world record for the amount of false starts that we've ever seen. Bowlers running and forgetting to bowl. This is whacked away, and that's a good start from Ansari. Well, the first one was a false start, but no false start for the right-hander. He played that on length, and he smashed it away to the leg side. If you are going to chase something this big, you need somebody that, that's going to kind of play a big hand, especially when you're playing for a team that struggled a bit with the bat. Just made 84 last time around, chasing a big target. Good fielding this time. Oh, I like a little handoff as well, a little shovel pass from Rasika Mendes. I like that effort. Cut, cut. Gets a chance then to bowl at Saurav Nath. Ready to go. Oh, yeah, this one gets up a bit. Not too bad at all. From Kaka. Say the Progress Gladiators. A few people noticing they're looking a bit minimalistic on their strips this year compared to last year. Yeah, having a look at this. Highest chases ever achieved. You can see the target here is 168. So that would be a record. To our athletic side. I just won. Working it pretty well. I suppose the thing is, you need 17 from the get go. You know, that's going to be tough. Maybe if that target does get beyond reach, you just concentrate on maybe trying to crack the 100 for the first time, get a bit of confidence with the bat. Each team does play 10 matches. Right at the end of the bat, they've got a fielder down there. Two outfitters in the power play. How's everyone traveling as well? Just popping back into the live chat. Nick and Dave just heading off for a little while. Hello to Keanu as well. Great to have you with us, Keanu. I bet you're enjoying the ashes at the moment as well. Once again, can't deal with that bounce. It's a ball's hard to cut because you're fighting the angle. Also, the end of the first over. So it was seven without loss after one. The one thing, of course, that makes my heart sad, there's not much that does, but when we get a run without golden balls, when we get over 100, it starts to get a bit itchy for one. And, uh, well, there's the count up. 116 matches since the golden ball now. We did hit the ton. I think it was Thursday night, wasn't it? In, in Sweden. <laughs> Romania surely is going to bring it. I remember we had a golden ball back here in 2020, in fact. Pretty good game, that one. Coley gets a ball, gets an edge, almost gets a wicket. It's well handled down there in the end. Just a single. Yeah, 
trying to think about if there's been a second golden ball in Romania. But yeah, remember, it was a team now known as ACCB against United. Do you think Pavel Florin might have been playing in that one? 12th of September 2020 it was a golden ball. And that one. And it was a fumble long on which allowed the second run. It meant that ACCB won it. Got a side. Coley just trying to get a bit of extra pace. Loses the direction. Yeah, but I think that's the only golden ball we've had in Romania. So come on, let's do the right thing. It's been almost three years since we've had a golden ball in Romania. It's time we had another one. I'll even give you another bit of trivia. The highest ever scoring golden ball match, it was 167-167. And you know what the, the first innings was here? 167. Spooky stuff. Having a look at the first eight balls, though, as Corey would say, it's probably more chance of the world stopping and spinning the other way than the Super Kings getting this target. But still, I'm going to try it. Keanu's multi-screening. I wouldn't expect anything less, Keanu. How are you anyway? Let us know. He's in European Cricket Network. Always here for you. Slip in place now for Coley. Catch it. Makes sense the way that I've seen some swings and misses. The only thing I'd have different, I'd probably have this slip right back on the circle. So I think it's more likely that the ball will fly over. I think it's Sudan Pereira in that position. You see where he is? I mean, he's, to be honest, he's pretty close. I just put him back. Yeah, actually, it's kind of where he's camping now, more or less. But have him right back on the circle because I think it's a pretty good position on that line. But yeah, he's probably a metre inside, to be fair. Wow, this goes straight over the stumps. I like the bounce in this pitch. It's a new playing surface here. So a new pitch. Same field we've, we've become accustomed to here, more or less here. It's one of the premier cricket grounds in Europe. Certainly in this part of Europe. He tries to pull this, but he pulls it straight to the fielder. He does his best to drop it. Rosie Kamendis always pops out of the end of the fingers. Bit of an ice cream cone, but it is the first wicket, and Nath just cannot get anything going. Here in match three with the stick. Ends up going one off seven. And in the second over, it's nine for one. Just never got on top of that pool shot. And just couldn't have picked out the fielder any better, to be honest. You can see the gladiators still you know, trying to trying to keep themselves up and, and energised, I suppose, especially after their slightly lackluster start to the tournament. They'll be very, very keen to put in a good performance, a complete co performance here. New batter comes out. This is Nahid Hussain. Oh, well bowled. Tries to play his leg side. Really takes off Collie's good bowler, isn't he? In fact, that'll be the end of the over as well. It'll be nine for one after two. But just track this ball. You can see why he's thinking leg side because it's angling into him. But then it certainly leaves him excellent bowling. That looks like it could be a bit of a tough slog here. Not a breath of wind here in Bucharest at the moment. Have a look at the table, early days, but how good were you Nefs earlier on there? Two for two, take a picture of that if you're a UNEFs fan. I think they might have won over a few fans this morning. Everyone else is playing catch up. They've hogged all the points. Is there only two matches of day one? Of course, they've got eight more in the tournament. Here's Makas Ahmed getting a ball. Oh, this is hit up in the air to open space. It'll probably stop. The race to the ball is on again. Good teamwork. Excellent throw, right back over the bales. Gladiators trying to do their best to keep those standards high. Yeah. So we're going to be 
Davis. You can see trying to drain that leg side. I mean, Steph was talking about it a lot before, wasn't he? That shot selection. Keanu's asking if the pond's still there. And also, glad that you're back with us, Keanu. Hopefully, things are turning around for you. Yeah, the pond is still there. Well, it's, it's more a lake than a pond, if I'm honest. It's a big hit to get it there, though. Probably 150 metres, but I have to call it the Baltic boss. The funny thing is, this one is quite pullable when he blocks it. So, <laughs> probably just a bit of a golfing experience here between these two teams. On the, on the positive, good high elbow. wide and certainly we saw some issues as far as the the super kings went with extras it was a real hassle for them they gave up 26 in the first half of this game big swing and a miss again this one is called a wide Too much, I think. So, you have seen these balls swinging, these grizzly balls. They're probably compared to the kookaburras, they probably retain their hardness a little bit longer. This one is called. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm um, an expert in reading body language, but he doesn't think this is a wide. And to be honest, that is. <laughs> uh, you know what? You call it as you see it. But I suppose I think he calls that more on how far the ball's away from the batter rather than where the ball actually is. If you were to be more realistic. Well, gets that one right. I like to stay positive. And let's be honest, Super Kings, they can probably use all the help they can get at the moment. Doesn't matter where it comes from. Still keeping that slip in there. Marcus. Oh, there we go. There was the edge. It's well handled down there. It'll be one, but tell you what, that's got to be frustrating, doesn't it? You put a slip in just for that. Was he a bit close here? Try and, try and see his positioning. Yeah, he's, well, I don't think it would have made a difference if I'm honest. He was pretty close to the edge of the circle. Fast ball, the power play. <laughs> Probably isn't wide, actually. Does a bit too much. And I think you can tell by the different expression from Marcus Harmon that he agrees <laughs> with that call. No, it's not the one that he wants. Yeah, a few people looking forward to seeing some of the other teams, including Cluj. Yep. I'm sure the, the Cluj guys would love to come and get the title back after the, they lost it last year. Oh, he just kind of taps this one up and he's caught. Nice catch there by Coley running back. Never committed to the stroke, did he? And Ahmed, he will get a wicket with the last ball of his over. And so 16 for two. It's been a bit like a tip to the trip to the dentist at the moment. We almost are coming up to 2:30. Do wrong here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know it doesn't look good, but you got to remember batting timing is is a funny thing. And when you get it slightly wrong, there's big consequences. About it comes to the crease. Mohamed Ashgul Sana had some nice, nice uh, moments with the ball. Never all his own way, of course. Oh, this one goes very wrong, doesn't it? He must have slipped 
when when he bowls this. And so I mentioned that two kings were pretty off target. Still hits the pitch though. Swing and a miss. And sorry. Run a ball ten. I found the swings and misses. Not a good time so far. Get your money's worth. Hello, KG1. I just took a dodgy wide call to lure you out of the shadows. I'm really happy to see you. In the chat, at least. Hello, Shrug, as well. Wow, there we go. It's a bit of bad on this, but how much? Well, Coley doesn't drop too many, and he won't drop this. So another good catch, and Mendes comes on and gets a wicket with his third ball. And the Super Kings finding it tough going in the big leagues. It's 17 for three. See there. A, a few things I'm sure that when the, the Super Kings look back at their batting today, they'll be able to highlight a few things that they, they could have done better. So, 17 for three. New batter out there. His name, Sheik. Talansari going 10 off 12. One boundary in this inning so far. Trying this round the wicket attack. Oh, did a bit, didn't it? One thing that Rasekha Mendes can definitely work on is making sure he gets off the pitch the right way. He's got plenty of pitch to work with there, but he shouldn't be following through in front of the umpire because he just won't get a decision. Look at that bounce. Actually hits him on the, the back arm there. It's got to be a bit nasty. The ball. Actually, it wasn't the right spot there. He would have fielded it. Did anyway. Didn't give up a run in the end. In towards the stumps again. And we'll get a single. And Mendes keeping things very quiet on the prairie. It is 18 for three after four. And now, interesting to see what bowling options they use. And look to me like Cosman Zavoy will be bowling over number five. I actually think his bowling is pretty effective in this form of the game. Or maybe any form of the game. Well, those two lines, they went with each other for an over, didn't they? But then they separated. A bit like a wishbone. You think it's unlikely they'll ever meet again. Shrug's got a very good question. Stefan should definitely follow this up. Does Stefan Gooch get double pay for comms and refing today? I'm going to say he wasn't doing a lot of refing, was he? Or was he? <laughs> Although... I suppose he's doing the job of two people. Of course, Rico will be joining the series on Wednesday. I hope he's enjoying a bit of time with his family. And happy birthday to his daughter, Sonia. He turned 21. So, yeah, Rico will be here. Uh, and it's, it's a bit of a funny series, this one. I'll make to that in a second. Here's Cosman, though. Good to see him at the bowling crease. Whoa. This one's going to be called a wide. Only just, though. Yeah, so Wednesday is actually my last day. It's Rico's first, and the reason is... I've had to take my time off a little bit earlier because I need to get back for the Valletta Cup, which is going to be a big seven days of cricket in Malta, international T20s. Straighter from Savoy this time. Shriek doesn't get a lot of it. Around the corner, gets a single. Yeah, so to cover me, 
uh, once he's finished in Bulgaria, that will be Charlie Hunt. So it's going to be a big, big few weeks of cricket. Romania will be one of the countries that are in that Valletta Cup tournament. It's pretty well bowled in a way. It just loses the direction, but I like the general shape from Cosman Zavoy there. Yeah, so shrug. Stefan probably deserves it. Yeah, Cosman's pretty consistent. It's a good pick up. Oh, that could be gone, you know. And oh, I've got a feeling he's gone. Direct hit. I mean, I might be wrong, to be honest. I have no idea where the batter is. Just thought, clean, one hand pick up and throw. And, yeah, he's putting his gloves back on, so he's acting super confident. Let's have a look here. I tell you what, we'll never know because of Budika. Because Budika is in the way. So he's going to get the benefit of the doubt here. Yeah. And so it might be one of those things where they go with the umpire's call. In fact, he's given out. And so I think the umpire's call was out on the field. I feel like it's hit there. In the end, you can see the bales over the shoulder, but it's uh, I actually think they might pull this back now. Yeah, see, so he's kind of in there, and I, I think they'll give this in now. Yeah, I think he's in. I think he's been saved. Yeah, he's saying come back. Hey, that's really good umpiring. We were sure, weren't we? When we saw it the first time, we thought there's no way we're going to be, t be able to tell here. But actually, Budika, maybe because he's been on the diet milkshakes, he's just skinny enough for us to see the, the bail over his shoulder. <laughs> so, excellent work. And Patrick's doing his first day in the booth. That's a, a very good piece of work. And, well, at least yeah, the batter out there, Graham Sheik, is back from the dead. Nothing to fear now. And then we always see a carbon copy, although this throws wider, and they'll scramble through for a single. Voyu does get on the stumps, but he's a bit full for the first time. And well, it's a fancy bit of footwork from Tazib. Look after those feet. He's an important player. We saw him batting so well in the first half of the innings. But Ashkul Sana gets four runs. Four welcome runs. For the Bucharest Super Kings. Cosman, I'd love a wicket here. Two to come in the over. Oh, he caught a wide. Only just though. He's, he's been an LBW candidate. Cosman's just got to get it straight, I think. Cosman, native Romanian player. Could see so many of them here. Oh, no ball called. And it's going to disappear out of the ground. That's no ball plus six. Maximo! Ashkul Sana, he enjoys it. So let's see what Cosman does here. Yeah, he steps over the line. It's a quick call. It's a correct call, I think, from the umpire. There's no real excuses for a spinner to be bowling no balls. But now Ashkul Sana is going to get a free hit. And he's going to cash it in. That to me looks like back-to-back -back maximals as the boy goes magical. This wasn't in the plans. Ashkul Sana. The boy, he ran his partner out. Now he's just hitting balls out of the ground. 
And Keanu's asking, is Charlie doing the Bulgaria series this week? Yes, he is. And he has a lot of top T20 national cricket coming up in Europe. There is Keanu. I'll be doing the Valletta Cup as well. Uh, that's as far as men's goes. But we've also got women's in national cricket coming in in July and August. Netherlands women taking on Scotland, Thailand. Then Ireland, then Jersey. Cosman gets pinged for a wide here. Doesn't look too happy about it. Trying to get out of the over. Bit of a harsh one, to be honest. Maybe a tiny bit of line. Oh, no ball called again. And it's dispatched. So this is going to go supersonic. And it's a crazy over, really. I mean, to be honest, I don't mind the, the ball he bowls, but because it has a chance of taking a wicket. That's if he keeps his foot behind the line. But he didn't. And Cosman just misjudging his shoe size here at the moment. Yep, there's the shoes, the offending shoes. Another free hit. You can probably charge it if you want here. Right, stick to what's working. He doesn't quite get this. Holds up, gets dropped, but shouldn't matter. And so he's avoid for a 32 run over. That was actually a pretty decent one, but it's still a 32 run over. It's the second one we've had in the game. And at the halfway point of this chase, Progress Super Kings have brought up their 50. The assistance of that over. The score is 50 for three. <coughs> you once again, hello to Helix. Nice to see you in the chat saying double max. Yeah, so if you caught the whole shebang of the, the tale of how I got here, and you're missing the first two games because of my, my travel getting getting thrown off. Uh, I got told my bags will be here overnight. Do you think that'll happen? You'll know if you see me in the bright suit tomorrow or not. I'm, I'm going to have to be honest with you guys. I'm wearing exactly what I was wearing. For the four ECIs yesterday, I'm still wearing it. Yes, 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 yes. Don't look side. Normally these hit the leg. But there's the occasional one that's the exception. It's not always interesting to see the replay. Charges. Definitely off the leg. Off the trousers. No wide though. So, hold up a second. This ball is a good one. Goes out this time. Tazeeb getting a ball here in the sixth. Yeah, I think this may be the first time I've worn the same clothes to consecutive days on the European Cricket Network, and it's out of necessity. And I have to be honest, I'm kind of glad that I'm alone at the moment because they were also my pyjamas. It's straight. Two fielders converge. After you, after you. In the end, Wakas does the fielding. Hello, Kroom. How are you? He said catching up on some high run scoring after work. And how did you go on the weekend, Kroom? Let us know. Push and run. Fielding from Zavoy. One handed pick up. And we'll get a single. To Zeeb just looking like he doesn't have a care in the world. Batted well in the first half of this game as well, didn't he? 51 off 21 balls with three maximums and five fours. Thick edge. This might fly away, you know, and it does. Four runs. Nice shot. I'm trying to find a bat from somewhere, aren't they? Ahmed oh, You know, if you put in a good performance here, I think you, know, you can probably, probably pick him up the top of the order just to try and provide something. Somebody that's in form. Recent form's good form. Oh, it's a good ball though, isn't it? It's a very good ball from Tazeeb. Decent over as well. He goes for six. And it's 56 for three after six. So, always tough, I think, when you step up in competition and have a new format as well. Probably would have played a, a little bit uh, of the T10 staff, but yeah, you really learn on the fly here. And Super Kings, we'll see them later on tonight in match five against ACCB. Gladiators actually play back to back games here and play in match four, which is around about 35 minutes away. The quarter past 
times. And we're starting here. Quite sure we've had that before. Not for a whole series anyway. All right, I like this. Going back to Cosman Zavoy here. Saying, all right, the first one didn't really go your way. See if you can get an over in. And, and I suppose there's no better practice than being out there in the game. Got to watch that front foot then. That was really close again. It's called a wide anyway. I'm watching that front foot pretty closely. That's better. All right, he's gone, you know. He is out. Yeah, it seemed like a good call to me. And it kind of saw this coming. There were a few balls that were hit off this top. But it works every time but once, this tactic, doesn't it? Goes a long way in front of his stumps. The only question is height, and I don't think at Cosman's pace that's going over. And I think it's a very fair decision. And so Sheik is going to have to go. And look, credit to credit to Zavoy having the courage to bring himself back. And he is the skipper. I suppose if you are going to go for 32, you want another over. It helps if you are the captain. So, one for 33 of 1.1. I thought for a while, that the fact he comes back, if he keeps dishing up those no balls, he could be the first bowler to go for 60. We saw the record broken, actually, in the last series. And this is hit, and it could be two in a row. You know, it is. Well, just like that, Cosman Zavoy is on a hat-trick, and how things turn around. And so Zavoy has gone... From pauper to prince here very quickly, hasn't he? And well, that's disappointing. Go out and get out first ball. And so, well, Derek, by the way, I had Derek in my luggage. So that's why he's not here yet, but he is coming. So don't worry, Derek the Duck. Probably good stuff. It'll be Masrul Islam to come out. We've turned up. One thing that interests me, we never got a hat-trick in Sweden in 68 matches or so. Anyway, here we go. Back to the action. Hat-trick ball. Oh. I reckon this is out. I reckon he's out, and I reckon it's a hat-trick. He can't believe it, but the video is going to tell the story. I've got him out. I'm giving him from here. Yeah, he's in, but then he lifts his foot when he's when he's overbounced. Yep, for me, he's out. Foot in the air. Foot in the air. And you see. Then it comes down. He's a hundred percent right to the umpire. So, Cosman Zavoy, of all people to break the hat trick, Hoodoo, Cosman, after going supersonic in the first over, he gets an LBW, a court, and then a stumping. And I've got to say, that was really, really good work from Vivek Tuari behind the stumps. So, in between, we had Coley taking his third catch of the innings. And, well, Masrul Islam, he's a keeper himself, so he should know better, really, shouldn't he? And you can see, he's looking up and he's saying, hey, you can't give that out. And I said, well, I will. And you know what? We'll even confirm it on the replay. And pictures don't lie, even in this day and age of deep fakes. Which are, uh, I suppose, catching on all around the planet. But, Cosman Zavoyu, welcome to the ECN Hat Trick Club. So, unfortunately for Soup Kings, they fall for further into a hole. They're 58 for six. Cosman Zavoy, you beauty. Oh, I tell you what, anyone for four in four here? All right, <laughs> Cream has cost him. Here we go. Oh, not quite on target. That's Raman Atik, who, yeah, he's actually stumped off a wide. Is that a wide? Oh, oh you know what? It's not a hat trick then. Now he's getting another wicket. All right. Hey, boys. There's a lot happening here. 
of the voice taken for in the over. I had no idea that that was called a wide. Didn't seem that wide. But you can't have a wider and over and a hat trick. So we're going to have to get the... We'll have to get the, the tip X, we'll have to get the white out, and we'll have to scrub him off. Oh, wow. Okay. This is one I might have to privately go back and have a look at. Because it, you know, look. Well, looks like chaos is following me from Sweden to Romania. Hello to Amjad, who's in the chat watching from Sweden. Thank how am I enjoying Romania so far? And how did I enjoy Sweden? I enjoyed it a lot, thank you. Cosman this time does his own work. Wow. <laughs> Did not see that twist coming. Called a wide. All right, I'm going to go have a look at it back in the stream. Let's have a look. Oh, I don't think that's a wide. Oh, boy. I mean, I don't know what to think anymore. That's uh, Ridoy's out there now, anyway. Oh, controversy reigns here in Romania. A lightning rod and Kroom probably asking for his money back after that. Oh, what do you think, Kroom? <laughs> Kroom has this thing that whenever someone takes a hat trick or a century or a FIFA or a Team 200, he'll gift a membership and cost him a few quid. He'd already gifted it in the chat. And no take backsies, Kroom. I'll give you one in credit, though, if you want. And now we're going to see... One to finish the over. It's funny how the the technology can sort out the wide, but it, uh, sorry, can sort out the dismissal, but it can't sort out the wide. Yeah, all right. Oh, well, this is action. I'm not joking when I say you won't get this kind of action anywhere else on the planet. The Voy has got 434 now. Could get the most expensive five for ever, potentially. <laughs> oh dear me. <laughs> well, now they're trying to sort out what's going on. I mean, I'd love if it if it ain't a fight if it's if it's unwided now. Retrospectively, I mean this is the one you take it to the you take it to the High Court, the Court of Appeals, the Supreme the Supreme Court. And now they're trying to sort it out. Oh, <laughs> Kroom's sent the money flying away emoji a couple of times. Oh, Kroom, I'll tell you what, I'll give you one in credit there, mate. Now, oh, trying to sort this out. Oh, boy. All right. Where are we at? I said there was a dead ball one. One ball. Somewhere into the over. All right, what's happening here? We had wicket on 6.1, 6.2, 6.2, 6.4. Okay. Uh, yeah, chaos personified here at the moment. Oh, so I feel like Cosman, this is the first asterisk hat trick we've ever had. If you want to be really technical, he takes three wickets in two balls, which is actually, you could argue that's even better. He takes three wickets in two legal balls. And then I think the new batter's come out and gone to the wrong end. So, yeah, welcome to ECN on a Monday. Uh, so, it's just one of those things. To be a hat trick, a hat trick, well, by definition, you can't get a wicket off a no ball. But you could, for, for example, go wicket, wicket, no ball, wicket. So you can't, no balls and wides just can't exist in a hat trick. It's one of those things. Yeah, Helix saying it's the vibe. Oh, well. Anyway, this ground is looking a lot softer than Terminal 5, Stockholm Alanda Airport. Was well, it about 3 o'clock this morning? Maybe I'll have to get you guys just to send me a few messages when to wake up, but it's a void. So it's a void. Well, he does have 4 for 34. Uh, one of the more dramatic turn, turnarounds of overs you'll ever see. He took none for 32 in the first. I mean, maybe the most dramatic thing is that Zavoy bowls three balls where he doesn't step over the line in a row. Um, but, yeah, anyway, tell you what, Cosman, if you're not going to be on the hat-trick takers list, why don't you take a wig of this ball? And if you do, you'll be you know, the, the highest conceding 
bowler to be on the five wickets list. He's left five for 34. Who knows? Might just keep stumping people on wides and clean up the tail. Yeah, Helix saying you can't unwide it now. Yeah, you can't really, can you? Didn't see the signal, to be honest. I wasn't expecting it. Now, uh, maybe this is about whether it was a wide or not. Because I think the issue was that, that, that the wrong batter went to the end after the stumping. Yeah, so I think that's the issue. It's not... Yeah, so the issue was... Okay, here, here's the biggest issue we got. So, there was a wicket, and they changed ends. I, I think it was when Coley took the catch, and they changed ends. But remember, these days, you can't cross on a catch. So the wrong batter was facing. But then, the wrong batter was stumped. So you can't... You have to respect that delivery as, as ha having happened once once the ball's faced. So in a way, it's a fake, fake hat trick because it's the wrong batter that was facing anyway, but then it was the established batter, not the new batter, which you'd think would be easier to take a wicket. Everyone get out your, get out your whiteboards and start drawing red lines between everything because I think this is the Illuminati confirmed here. All right, yeah, and, and now they're going to have to try and sort it sort it out. Yeah, so they must have crossed on the catch. That's all I can think. And so it means that Ashkul Sana was on strike the next ball, and then he got stumped. And then you just got to carry on. But it won't change as the voice figures. They're still four for 34. All right. And Cosman, he's bowled one of the longest overs that we've ever seen. But I think they have sorted it out. All right. How are you guys enjoying Romania? I am. There's a boy. I tell you what, if he takes if he takes a five, I know that Pavel once ran into the comedy box. I might run out there myself. If he if he takes a fifth here. It's uh I mean I think they might have run out of ink in the score as tent from scrubbing stuff out. How's the wide call though? Can we can we focus on that? Oh, I don't think it was a wide. I see it in the highlights. Yeah, show me a calm blue ocean. It's not quite that. Here's Moira Vlasia though. Beautiful little village. And for those who don't know, the opening scenes of Borat are meant to be uh, in Kazakhstan. They actually filmed in an area not too dissimilar to this. It's actually a village called Glod, just outside Bucharest. And so when we do come to the ground in the morning, you'll see a few things that you wouldn't necessarily see in, a, let's say, the modern hustle and bustle of city life. I like it. All right. How are we doing here? Okie dokie. <laughs> Still waiting, and well, maybe while we do that, we can talk a little bit about what's coming up and, and the plans here. Yeah, because we'll see. I'm here for day one. Meant to be here for match one, but I'm here for day one. I'll be here tomorrow as well, and Wednesday. Rico will be joining me Wednesday, and, and uh, because of the Leather Cup coming up, I have, to, I have to pop off a little bit early. But yeah, you can see the schedule there. But, uh, we've got T20 National Cricket. And, uh, also, night series in Portugal. Well, that did the trick. So he's put that up. We're good to go. Could be a fifer. Could be. Who's catching? Got to get there. Got to get there. He does. And he takes the fifer. Can you believe what you're seeing in an over that's gone for about 34 minutes? Cosman Zavoy comes back. And after going none for 32, he takes five wickets in an over. And it's only the, only the second time we've ever seen... Five wickets in and over. And it, uh, the craziest thing about this is it, it doesn't contain a hat trick, but it's five wickets in and over. So Savoy is going to finish with five for 34. 
<laughs> so he takes five for two off the over. And look, this is the universe realigning because if you had to give him the hat trick, he would have never have taken the five for because uh, there wouldn't have been an extra ball, right? So, <laughs> so what do you think about that? It's 58 for eight. Oh, and I'm not normally cheering things on, but I mean, that over deserved it. Deserved a fifth wicket. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, we have to call the Hall of Fame hotline back up now, don't we? Wow. <laughs> okay. Who's next? It's Coley. And he almost takes a knife. Well, Super Kings, welcome to the ECS. Oh, wow. Cosman's a boy, you little beauty. Misses out on the hat trick on a technicality. <laughs> and Kroob's still good. Kroob, you didn't have to give another one. What are you doing? <laughs> you already can credit that over. He gives a membership for that five <laughs> Oh, no, he just hits him because he wants to. Cosman's a boy. You've got to be kidding me. What an over. And if you want to say shrewd captaincy, I mean, most captains that have gone for 32 and an over and bring themselves back, there's, there's issues <laughs> in the racks. And he knew exactly what he was doing. Cosman's a boy. Five for 34 <laughs> of two. Oh, I've seen it all now, as Corey would say. Swing and miss again. Right. You want entertainment? Stop right here. I don't think you'll see that on the Ashes today. <laughs> so we had a couple of five-wicket hauls in Sweden, but we didn't have an actual uh, hat trick, like we said. I get some bat on this, but I won't carry down the third man. I'll just be in single. Spot the ball contest. Bit of thunder. And I did hear there was some rain as on the horizon, potentially. Hopefully it doesn't hamper us too much, but I can hear the thunder in the, in the background. Bit of, bit of rain here. That's all we need now is a rain delay. Really, if I ever wanted someone to bowl a third over, it's Cosman <laughs> right now. Oh, well, what's happened here? Is that a club? Yeah, he's gone. So, it's going to be a ninth wicket now. Runs a bit of if is the next man that's going to have to go. Yeah, straight off the glove. So it's nine out. And uh, it's a fairly simple catch for Vivek Tawari. And you'll only see it here on the European Cricket Network. Number 11 comes to the crease, and it's Shahrub Shizad. Ah, that's a pretty good shot. For number 11, he does what plenty before him could it. One of the all-time great collapses. Where, I mean, how, many, how did they lose those wickets? They were they were 57 for three, and you blink, and they're 59 for nine. So they lost six for two. <laughs> there you go, Cosman. Congratulations, you're on the Hall of Fame after all. Not in the hat tricks, because I actually think the police are on the way for second-degree burglary for the umpire at the bowler's end there. But <laughs> Cosman has somehow stolen five wickets of his own. Five for 34. Here in match three. This is going to be a wide. Play. Meanwhile, Coley's bowled out. He's had two for four. That's well, boring, man, meat. But I will say <laughs> that you have been involved in five dismissals because he's taken three catches in addition to his two wickets. Yeah, one more wicket will do it. And, uh, well, give us your thoughts. I feel like... In a hundred years, they'll still be writing poems about Cosman's famous sixth over. Was it the sixth? No, it was the seventh. It was the seventh over. Cosman's seventh over in match three. Down the side, to be called wide. 
Yeah, Ramesh saying it's around about this time last two days they had some, some pretty heavy rains in Moravlis here. Give me your thoughts on the value of a hat trick versus a five wicket haul. Before today, they actually had 13 of either. Right, again, trying to swing it here. Mike Huston, it ain't happening for him. Oh, no, the throw to the keeper. It's not watching. Oh, yeah. Well, we're in Romania. We've gone from five teams to 11. So keep your eyes peeled for action. Yeah, I, I actually think you get more hat tricks than five wicket hauls. If you're certainly going on history. This year we've had exactly the same until that point. So actually now we've got 14 five wicket hauls and only 13 hat tricks. So Cosman's broken the tie. So you could argue you can't have both. Now where's he going? Yeah, well, while the police are here, they might need to bring back up because you got you got some some wandering around, some disorderly while batting from the left hander there. It's uh, Masrul Islam, who was a man everyone thought was stumped, but can't be stumped. He's left-handed. It's called wide. It's a tie. I think you can probably put a delay to match four in the book. The way things are going, we got we got about 15 minutes till the first ball. Oh, now this is going to be all over here. And yeah, that's all she wrote. And so it's going to be a chaotic finish to a chaotic innings. It only goes eight and a half overs. I mean, security might be required to just uh, to, to sort that conversation out. You're running with the number 11. We'll take it on the replay. Hey, where does this all go wrong? I mean, to be honest, he never leaves home. Once he does, suddenly. Left hander pinching his home there. So, well, in the end, <laughs> it's a funny innings. You don't laugh, you cry, don't you? But I think it's it's Shahad, Shahad who's going to be a run out, uh, who was the non-striker. Okay, so this is what's coming up, match four. Uh, at the moment, it says we're on time, so it should start in about 15 minutes. Stay tuned, though. ACCB, uh, they're a team that have a lot of experience. Go Hamada, watch out for him at the top. And Abdul Asif, very powerful opening combination. They've won the toss and elected to bat in the next game. And the Bucharest Gladiators, well, they'll, they'll certainly be buoyed by the fact they had their first points in the series. So, yeah, stay tuned because that's coming up in around about 13 minutes, although it may just be put back a little bit. We'll have to see. Anyway, let's go to the highlights. And you can see a nice little bit of butterfly action there, but not so beautiful on the field as the Super Kings. They struggled early. I thought they struggled early, but if you thought that was a struggle, if you saw the second half, I don't really know how to describe it. And you can see that Wakas Ahmed, he was moving the ball early, wasn't he? He induced that edge and slips could be further back than he was, I suppose. I suppose he came back and he didn't really find the same swing and had a few control issues late in the piece. Coley caught well, though, didn't he? He was important. And he has a void. He had a, a bad start, to say the least. Although, you know, we saw... I, I, we, I even forgot about that. We saw about a resurrected after. Seemed he was out, but then we found an angle that showed that he was just in. And then Cosmo's bowling a bunch of no balls and long hops. And you thought it was help yourself stuff, wasn't it? 32 came off that over in the fifth. But then, talk about your dramatic turnarounds. Things turned around quickly, didn't they? And yeah, eventually he was able to get that one. Yeah, the wonderful wide. Again, you can make up your own mind about it, but it was called it cost him a hat trick. But after some delay, eventually it was a, a fifth wicket for Zavoyu <laughs> as Wakasama takes the catch. And uh, apart from that, there wasn't much happening. And in the end, it would be a self-inflicted wound that would finish off the Bucharest Super Kings. Uh, running with the number 11, do it at your own risk. And uh, rather than drag it back to his crease, he takes the opportunity to off offload a, a piece of your mind. And I suppose, you know, all communications, good communication. 
Let's have a look at the scorecard. It's going to make some interesting reading. Oh, Derek hasn't turned up yet, but he would have been needed five times in that innings. 29 for Ashkul Sana, who I suppose is the only one to really get hold of the bowling. There's that big over, wasn't there? Off Cosman's avoid, but then we turn around. And Sari opened the batting for 10, but couldn't quite go run a ball pace. Ramad Ashkul Sana may be an option at the top, I think, based on what we saw there. And the tail it did not wag. It was frozen in time. 19 extras, probably not a great look either. Makes 45 in the match, I think. So, padding the score a bit as the Super Kings get rolled for 65. Well, watch this and take a picture. It'll last longer. Man, Mick Coley, I would have said he's the best of the bowlers, two for four. That was until Hurricane Cosman came in after he went for 32. His first throw, he took five for two, including a fake hat trick in his second. Mendes with the wicket. Marcus Ahmed with the wicket as well. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back. Just quickly, I'll give you the latest as if there's any delay. I can tell you, there's a five minute delay. So we'll be starting in around about 15 minutes from when I'm speaking right now. Hopefully you enjoyed us for that. Well, I'm enjoying it, enjoying it so far. Hopefully you are too. We'll see you very shortly after the break for more ECN action. You're watching the Fan Code European Cricket Series.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Hello and welcome back to Romania. Great to have your company here. What chaos we saw in the last game. Now it's time for match number four of the day. Gladiator is going back to back. And this time they'll be taking on ACCB, who are here for the first time in the tournament. A little bit earlier, we had the coin toss. Let's see what happened. Okay, Gladiator's the call. Head. Heads is the call. It's tails. Yeah, we're You're going to bat? Yeah. Okay. Good luck, guys. All the best. Okay, thank so you. ACCB have won the toss. They're having a bat back over to you in the commentary box, Vinny. Thank you, Stefan Gooch. Well, get that man a raise because he's been covering me. He's also doing the coin toss today. He's also setting records in the ref tent for the amount of issues to deal at once. If you looked at the chaotic seventh over of Consumman Zavoyu over the Gladiators last time around. So, yeah, ACCB winning the toss and electing to bat. Seems like a good toss to win for me. For a team, we know that uh, they're very experienced in the format. Gohan Munnan, very, very good player. He's really been able to reproduce it in national level, certainly at club level. He's hit some very big scores. He has an ECN century to his name. Abdul Aziz played one of the best innings I've ever seen here. We were talking about retiring him out once because he was going too slow and then he finished up something like 97 off 31. <laughs> so... He, He's a guy that can really turn it on. Also a very good bowler. And uh, for the Gladiators, we just saw them sweep aside their opposition, the Super Kings, in the last game. So, yeah, we've been trying to get Steph back, but I think as you can realise, at the moment, there's a lot happening on day one, so I'll leave him to do his job for a while. You'll have to settle for me as we get ready for the start. It's going to be Joshua Kutka to get us going. So, ready, steady, let's go. Match number four live from Bucharest, Romania. Oh, no, we've got a big problem here, and we're going to have a run out. Oh, and that's a total disaster. And it's Jay Singer who runs the length of the pitch and he gets the big don't argue gesture from Manan who says, no, we ain't running. And it's your problem. So, uh, pretty red diamond duck. And uh, well, the diamond's pretty heavy. It looks like it's landed on Derek's toe, but uh, that's an absolute worst possible start. Uh, so, Katka breaks through in a way. It was Coley that came in and finished the run out, you know. Yeah, so a diamond duck, for those of you who might not be aware, it's when you have, when you get out without even facing a simple, single ball. All right, Manon has another go. Now, this is up in the air. Oh, he almost goes the very next ball. So... Let's see if the new batter is basically going to open, isn't he? Because uh, it was listed to open, funnily enough. Let's see if, though, sometimes a slow starter but can really turn it on when he wants to. He's rattled it all by what we saw then. I don't think Doha will be too, too bothered by it. it. means that he gets to continue and I suppose they're relying on him a lot. Right now it's as if. <laughs> Luke Simon, this is how the first run out started. Lively start to this one. So, I welcome everyone back to the live chat as well. He's in European Cricket Network. Abdul might have forgotten his shirt today. Using a kind of variation of Sukhvinda Singh, the captain's shirt. With 
nudges away. But yes, Cosmin Tavoy, who was an absolute lightning rod for action last game. And he was, was whacked for 32 in the first over he bowled. And then came back and took five wickets in and over. That is the second time we've ever seen five wickets in and over on the European Green Network. Dish Panika is the only man to do that from Switzerland in 2020. All right, this is a pretty good leg glance from Manon. He does like to go leg side. He does it pretty well on that occasion, but also a good chase. He's not necessarily huge at running between the wickets aspect of the game, but does like to whack sixes. Kadka is bending the ball down the line, though, isn't he? Oh, that might be five wides, you know, unless it gets, yeah, no, didn't get any pad. It's a bonus for ACCB early in this one. And so that'll be re as well after a fairly tight start. And so I think the swing's good, just the, the, the direction it needs to be sorted out. It's been angle of approach thing. So Kroom's already putting in some research. He's asking statistician Andy Zoltman if it's done for wide, can get out the hat trick. I had this question as well uh, in the break. I'm 100 is a strong, but I'm 99% sure that you can't have a hat trick. Now, look, here's the thing hat tricks are, they're not in the laws of the game, by the way. It's eight for one after one. So a hat trick's whatever you want a hat trick to be, right? But as far as wisdom is concerned, I remember reading it as a kid and don't read too much into that either. But I remember it was very clear that you can't have no balls or wides involved in a hat trick. So you couldn't, for example, go wicket, wicket, or wicket, wide, wicket, wicket, with a wide in the middle. I, I get that it's slightly different if the delivery does actually, the wide actually takes the wicket. I do understand that. But yeah, do your best. I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page. It's always a good place to start, isn't it? Big swing from Mana. This is what he likes to do. But Coley, this is sometimes national teammate. Gets a bit of a, a rise on him. So. Right. Okay. Okay. Doesn't say anything at the moment. There is a whole section of unusual hat tricks on the Wikipedia page. I feel like you can throw that one in there regardless. <laughs> but yeah. Go and have a look. Yeah, and, and one answer is there's no official rule of what's a hat trick and what's not because it's it's just a thing that we say. It's just it's more around the culture of the game. It's not exactly a rule or a law, playing condition. But, uh, you know, so maybe it's going to be one of these ones where you say it's up to your opinion. And I guess suppose it is. My feeling is that convention would say it doesn't go on the list. And there's a kind of nice, <laughs> there's a nice balance to it, though, because if it wasn't for that wide call, he wouldn't have had a five foot. So at least he's on the Hall of Fame. Can't go back to the well, Cosman. Anyway, just kept us interested up here. Anyway, this is high. Anyone getting there? You probably reach. You'll have to go a long, long way. Can't quite get it. And it was like a race to the ball there, to be honest. Wakas Hyde. Oh, well, pardon me. Wakas Ahmed. He was the man who was going back there. And he had the best position to take it. He's a good fielder. We saw him run a long way to to pick up the catch that brought Zavoya's five for in the last game. Uh -oh. oh, I just kept going. Coley doesn't get any swing here. That's going to be five waves. We've seen a lot of these, haven't we? Oh, not, a, not a great look 
is that, I mean, it's just one of those ones, maybe he's trying in swing, or maybe he's trying out swing, just doesn't go right. Yeah, but I'd say you could argue it's even better than a hat trick. It might not be a hat trick. It might be something better that I don't know if we'll see again. This one angles in as well, and Manon's after him. That's out of here. Maximo! And it's not a good ball from Coley. It's a close up, but. Close, but not close enough. Yeah, some people think there might be three consecutive deliveries. Yeah, the delivery might be an illegal delivery, or yeah. All right, up in the air. Um, this should just be one. I think they're really pushing for twos with Manon out there. End of the over. He'll retain the strike. And the score is 22 for one. Here's what's swaying me, and I'm not getting a lot of information in this internet age, but I remember very clearly reading, probably in Tom Smith's Cricket Umpiring and Scoring, or, or a Wisdom or something like that, probably Tom Smith's Umpiring and Scoring, actually, around 25 years ago to 30 years ago, that a hat-trick cannot contain any wides or no balls. So even though it gets off a no ball, to me, it still contains a wide, and that's why I don't think it's a hat-trick. Okay? So, I will also say, you're allowed to have your own opinion on it, but I don't think it'll count on our Hall of Fame for hat-trick, but it will count as a five up Kind of bowls just having a bit of a, a bit of a struggle controlling the the new ball here. Kareem noticing Diamond Derrick's made it. Yeah, he has. All right, this is in the air. Keeper wants it. Oh, he's never going to get near it. He just kept on going, didn't it? Indian Amma Sharma. He's going to put it down. Don't know where Tuwari was going. He went up saying, yeah, high ball, that's mine. But this was Usain Bolt. He wasn't going to get close to that. Cut, cut. Being brought back for the last over the power play. Didn't go according to plan for him. Did get the false shot, though. Both these two big hitters. When you get through them, you have a slightly easier time. I'm sure Chris on Jack Singer wished that time and Derek never turned up. Short again, sliced up. Another opportunity. Two fielders going, one takes it. And it's Delina Buduka that takes the catch. Well done. That was not an easy catch. Another example of fielders have to go and take it over their shoulder. And so this tactic of kind of dragging it down into the pitch, it works for Kutka in the end. And go Hamana, and that's a huge wicket in the context of this game. He's a guy that can hurt you. He's done it before. He'll do it again, but not this game. And he's probably got an interesting conversation ahead with Jay Singer in the dugout. Right now, he's gone. Well caught by Baduka for 13. And ACCB, 24 for 2. Batter comes out. Mr. Santa Arachilagi. I don't recall seeing playing before for ACCB. Let's see if he can make an immediate impact. He's listed a little bit lower. But yeah. De Santa on ECN debut. So, cut, cut. With his tail up. Oh, it's a good ball first up. Pretty well dealt with by Arachilagi. Love the way that straightens down the line. And that's what you want from your left armour. A team that can conquer the extras will have a big advantage in this series, especially in the first week. Well, Arun has sent me a message, Arun Kumar. Well, McClure skipper, I think we'll see him from Jim after in this series. And he's basically, you might you might be quoting me here, Aaron. He hasn't given me a source, but he says a bowler has to take three wickets off three consecutive legal deliveries 
for it to be considered a hat trick. Give us your source, though, uh, Aaron, and it can't be Mr. Maximo, because that's pretty much word for word what I said. Ochilagi searching for his first run in the European Cricket Series. And he'll get it, but it's not convincing. Zavoy, slight fumble, but he'll get away with it. Thank you, Aaron, though. Jeez, we've got great viewers here, don't we? Shrug saying so many extras today. I suppose, in a way, it's to be expected on day one. I mean, things go up a notch. It's kind of humid conditions here. You've got lake nearby, so I think swings around a bit more. Again, scientists can't quite understand why humidity equals swing. Maybe keeps the ball shiny longer. But it seems to be going, doesn't it? Play for the swing a bit though. Oh no, it's a step over from Tezib. That wasn't good fielding. It'll just cost him. Oh, in fact, it just cost him one in the end. So, I think that might be the end of the over. Wait and see. In fact, still one to come. So, we've got two wicket dot, one one this over. Cudcap searching for a second wicket. Side. Inside, into the over. Interesting power play. Something for everyone. For me, probably to win for the Gladiators narrowly. But the score is 26 for 2 after 3. Have a look at the three overs. Oh, look, it's nice to see the numbers have come back down. It's a little bit of the. Uh, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory about this, or Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. The numbers are flying off. And I'm glad they've been brought back down to their bars now. It's going to be Tazibul Hassan. I don't think he's going to be winning any football contracts soon, judging by that last effort. But tell you what, his cricket's been pretty good today. Half century in the last game. Here he is bowling. Over number four. Good shot. Really good shot. Apple as if he's such a danger man here. Just kind of hits it top of the bounce. Grabs the boundary. A little bit of width, a little bit of outswing as well for Tazib there. ACCB playing in their first match of this tournament. Let's keep this one out as well. They need absolutely everything early, don't you? Be a bit careful if you need to be. Oh, this one swings away. And oh, it's so close. Watch the ball. Oh, it's going to be four. He touches the rope when he pulls it back in. I think you see that they're, they're pretty quick to to give it four, that's correct. Yeah, I think nobody spotted the ball. I mean, firstly, it was an opportunity, wasn't it? A big chance to get a safe. Let's check it on the replay, thanks to Spring Productions. It was a great effort. Ended up going up with one in the end. And have a look at this. And the issue here... See, he actually touches the rope there. And yeah, you can see that's why it's given four, correctly so. But that was a chance to get rid of a safe on six. Now it gets a Gundy ball, put it away. So Tazeeb just losing his line, losing his movement that time. Back-to-back -back fours for ACCB. This could be a close game, you know. Those things can matter. Yeah, ACCB. Team we saw make the final back in 2021. It's also the year I think they made the biggest power play. It was 77 at the time. So it's been eclipsed by a couple of teams. 82 is the biggest power play now. But the funny thing about that game, they posted 158 ACCB and lost to Cluj. They chased it down. Oh, oh, in the middle, didn't know where to go forward or back. Ended up choosing back. Not getting too much of it. Yeah, that 2021 series it was an entertaining one. It was super high scoring. When they posted 158, they actually didn't qualify a one. And then...
Clues chased it down. And they chased it down with 10 balls to spare. Well, glances this well. And it'll race away to the outfield and beyond. So another boundary to Zeeb goes for 16 in the fourth. And ACCB, they're 42 for two. All the way back to 2020. It was, it was then ICC progressed. Now ACC progressed. That won the final over United. Got over United in that final. I think I mentioned that earlier in that tournament, the same two teams played. A golden ball. Yeah, ICC Bucharest. Now yeah, it's ACC Bucharest or ACCB. Getting over United in... Well, it was United that won the golden ball back then. But ACCB, they got their revenge in the final, didn't they? Wackass to bowl over number five. Let's see if he can move it. Not really, slides in. Very optimistic. Appeal for LBW. So Nintendo Goldmore, I remember that. Went too long on. I couldn't pick it up cleanly. Towards the bowler. Marcus does the rest. Well, Aaron, he's followed up. His his source there, or why he's saying that it has to be three wickets of three consecutive legal deliveries for it to be considered a hat to be considered a hat trick. He said the same thing happened in the IPL in 2020. So maybe the debate was settled back then. Oh, this one it's called wide, not too far away from the flicking the glove though. I'm always in favour of viewers that. that that write in and tell me I'm right. So it makes the long trip worthwhile. Ruckus has been funny today. He's kind of swung the ball sometimes, but not all the time. He hasn't. He's bought a lot of it leg side wides. This time, pretty much makes up his mind. He wants to pull no matter what. Rachelagi just struggling. Early in his innings, it must be pretty hard if you haven't played a lot of this format of the game to kind of work out how much you preempt and how much you just kind of sit back and see what comes. This is going to be four straight enough and hit well enough. That'll settle the nerves for Aaron Chilagi. Not a bad ball from Wakas. On pretty wide there. Two more orthodox long on, but it was hit too well. He gets four. He's got something to smile about. Yeah, Aaron's saying. Hat tricks have to take place on three consecutive balls. Ball ball in the match, not in three consecutive legitimate deliveries. I think Rabada took three wickets and four deliveries. But I suppose that's a bit different. Bowling a wide in between three wickets is different to bowling three. Because, I mean, now I don't mean to argue against myself, but... Cosman did take three wickets of three deliveries. It's just that one of those was both a wide and a wicket. I think in Rabada's case, he took a wide. One was a wide and one was a wicket. They were separate balls. It's actually bowled four deliveries. Oh, cute. Marcus with wide down leg side. So it's a slightly different situation, but I'm going to stick to my principle that you, you need... Well, basically, you can't have any wides and no balls involved in a hat trick. Oh, goes back and pulls, but he's found the fielder, and he's gone. Rauchulagi wanted to pull. He missed out earlier in the over. This time he gets some of it, but he's picked out the fielder, and that's Josh Kudka that takes the catch. So a wicket for Wakas Ahmed, and disappointment for Rauchulagi. was just settling in, wasn't he? And Wakas tries him out the back foot, and the ball ends up in a deep square leg. We'll hold on to there. By Kadka as well. He doesn't really get up more than bail height, does it? But well taken. 
a nice effort, but I would like to a few more. New batter coming out is Asad Abbas. This guy will see doing the keeping. Seen a fair bit of him in the European Cricket Series, haven't we? Gets his opportunity, batting at number five. Yes, that is a guy who's played 23 matches on the network. And has a high score of 60. He does strike at about two runs a ball. So, obviously, knows what he's doing. Wow, well, almost gets his head knocked off first ball. Wow, well, Waka's saying, if you're going to come out without any headgear, then I'm going to make you rethink your life choices here. Yeah, you tell you what, he gets a long, long way back here. Oh, yeah. Pushed him right back. Almost fell under his stumps there. You know, I'm very pro wearing a helmet. I think that's, that's just the one bounce over the over. I don't think it's over the head. Because it almost took out his head into the over, though. It's 48 for three. After five. Pretty interesting game, this. Looking at some of the bowlers ACCB have got. For me, about the 100 would be par. It's just kind of what I'm feeling. This outfield not quite as fast, as unpredictable as in Sweden, where we saw 120, the average score. I think for me... Around about 100. He still should be able to hit plenty of sixes. And the outfield doesn't even come into it. But for me, yeah, about, about 100 for me. It's about a par. Can win games with less. Bowl and field well. Get the threats before they can hurt you. Hey, Keanu asking, is this ground the only one in Romania? I believe so. Ramesh says as much. All right, this is a bit short. Now Sif pumps him out of the ground. Maximo! Montezib tries the same trick as Wakas, but he gets a very, very different result. If climbs into that one. When this guy gets going, he just pulverizes attacks into submission. Keanu wondering, where's the size of the pitch putting some of the bowlers off? You'd hope not. I mean, if anything, I'd be more worried if I had to bowl on a tiny pitch. <laughs> I actually saw one a bit like that in, in Switzerland back in 2020. <laughs> Call two out of the blocks, but I don't think they'll get there. Tazib. See what he does to the Abbas. Well, goes wow. forward, he knocks him over. And I think this is gone. You know, I, they may want to have a look at it for height, but I, to be honest, it's pretty flat. It's not like it dipped. If it dipped, there's a chance it could have been over the waist, but for me. Oh, it's interesting, isn't it? See you go on. I don't know here. Probably he's slightly bent leg. I think that's out. And I think you benefit the doubt of hitting the stumps and then goes to the bowler. Yeah, I think they've upheld the decision. I've got to say I agree with that. It's the kind of ball that if you hit it, because you don't know it's going to hit the stumps, it could well have got given a no ball. Shrugs gone to the <laughs> Merriam-Webster dictionary. So the hat trick is the retiring of three batsmen with three consecutive balls by a bowler. Yeah, it's not really a cricket dictionary though, is it? The Merriam-Webster. I'll oh, take you, take your point, Shrug. Oh, oh, that was going to get given. That is the new batter. Tazib, knocking over, knocking over Asad Abbas with the high fastball. He's going over. Mm. 
Malifu toss. Not going to get so lucky this time. It's going to crash into the banner. Cuatro Carreras. Nice shot. And I mean, Kunta, again, not a player I've seen live before, but it's pretty well struck and was listed down at kind of the bottom order. That was a, a pretty accomplished shot there. Last ball, the over. That pushes, gets one. And as we get to the end of six, the score is 61 for four. <coughs> so to Z, one for 29. A bit hit and miss, wasn't he? How about still be kicking himself? I suppose wrong shot selection. Although it was high enough. He hit it. No one would have said too much about it. And I feel if he'd hit it, he I mean, probably would have got a no ball. But I I, I'm comfortable with the call. It was borderline. I suppose the name of the, name of the game is to, to hit the stumps. First one down the ground. As Coley comes back into the attack. This is the seventh over. I say Gladiators took the competition by storm last year. Big underdog story. Knocking off Cluj in the final. We've had many national championships here. Swings and misses at this. As if he's annoyed with himself. As if has been good, but he hasn't gone full. Absolutely as if beast mode just yet. Coley, they brought him back to take a wicket, I think. If they can get a sift now, they'll feel they're right on top. Gladiators. Oh, oh it's a good seed. Coley, getting the ball to talk here. It's not a brand new ball either, but this is a proper seed. Look at the angle in. Just takes off. The keeper takes that. No, Steph was talking a lot about the carry in this surface earlier on today. Keeper takes it over the head. Tawari. Good ball. Certainly gets in your head, I think, as a, as a keeper. As a batter as well. Yeah, he's thinking more defensively after that close call. Coley fascinates me as a cricketer. He's a lot of raw talent. It's nice to see him getting a bit of an extended run in the national setup as well. Oh, it's a good shot, though. And this is more Abdul Asif at his best. And that's going to bounce straight off the Bears' head, isn't it? Maximo! Well, it's not your average Bear, and it's not your average off drive from Abdul Asif, who smashes that one miles. This is what I've seen from him before. He kind of wanders through the first part of his innings, but when it's time to go, there's not too many better in the country. And then goes back in his shell and says, all right, I'm happy I got one away from you. I'm happy to see someone else because that's the end of the seventh over and the score is 68 for four. Just a reminder, what's coming up on the European Cricket Network over the next few weeks, we are jam-packed full of cricket. Do yourself a favour, go out and buy some more screens because that week, the 10th of July, we'll have ECS Cricket from Hungary. We'll have the Netherlands C20 International Women's Series, which involves uh, Scotland and Thailand as well. We'll also have the Letter Cup, which is an international T20 international tournament from Malta. I'll be there for that one. Three games at once, plus whatever, whatever else you want to watch. But Czech Republic coming up. Also, the fan code. ECT 10 Portugal starting on the 18th of July, running for two weeks. So make sure you stick that in your calendar and join us. If you want to know when there's cricket on ECN, just know it's all the time. Here's Mendes. 
Oh, wow. This one really should have disappeared, but that was a bit too early on it, I think. Kunta gets one. Probably not a bad result at the moment. Zef checks on the valuables and uh, gets ready to face up. 31 of 17. Going well, isn't it? This will be an interesting battle. Zef lifts him up and gets enough. Maximo! Good hitting. The thing with this angle from Mendes is pretty much everything is going to pitch outside the leg stump, which means Zef can just just step across. He can't be LBW. He can protect his stumps and he can just kind of swing away with immunity. The only way the batter can get him out is on a miss hit, maybe a top edge. And he's not looking like a guy that's going to edge one the way he's going at the moment. 37 off 18. He's also shown after hitting a six, he's not doubling down the way we used to him seeing. Used to seeing him do, he just in for the long haul. That's the feeling you get. Probably thinks if he's there at the end, they're definitely getting that 100 plus. Probably a few more. Yep, same issue here. Pitching outside leg stump. And see if he's so, so good on that pull shot. Maximal, second one in the over. Time for a change of tactic. Alternatively, look, if you've got your field set this way, which is you've got deep cover back, so you've got three protecting the boundary on the, leg, on the offside, then you've got to bowl it out there. You can't be pitching balls outside leg. So maybe attack the stumps less. The thing is, as if it's pretty good driving over the offside as well, what makes them so hard to bowl to. And that ball might be halfway to the leg, so new balls, please. If as if he can go to the well again. Oh, he will. And this one is even bigger. That is a maximal. Oh, thrice as nice for as if. That one, I think, was the biggest of the lot. It's a beautiful cricket ground, the Moira Blasia ground, but that ball ain't in it anymore. As as if moves to 49, we knew he was the danger man. And uh, right now, Mendes. Isn't working out too well with this tactic. Gone for 19 with the ball to go in the over. Keanu showing off all the screens he's got. Yeah, they might have to go fishing for that ball a little bit later. Because that went miles. Goes back, pushes, we'll get a run. And well done, Abdul Asif, who brings up his 50. He brings it up of just 22 balls. And look at that. What an innings. As he's struck five maximos and four fours in there. Abdul Asif has turned it on. Shots all around the ground. I call the spokes of a bicycle tyre there. 28 for four. And... It's the way he brings it up. Also, last ball the over, so he probably knew one's a good result to keep the strike. And yet, I think he is just riding out 50. And then finishes off with a little kiss. I like that. Spread the love. That's what we're all here for when it comes down to it. There's a lot of love in Romania as well. Ninth over. They say it all happens in the ninth. Glad he has. We're hoping it's not that way. Ziff. wants to run hard. He wants to. And he says no because he knows who it is. It's Coley. He knows Coley's got a good arm. And that's a classic case of knowing your fielder. That's if he wants to face as much as possible, but he doesn't want to run himself out unnecessarily. Especially because he's got Kunta there. He's not a bad bat at all. What's Kunta do here? Does he... Just look for the one, or does he look for something more? He looks for something more. This could actually almost go all the way. And they're going to take on the two. Would have been gone with a better throw. 
Yeah, Kunta scrambles back. I thought maybe that was one they'd be happy with the one just to get up to the Silph on strike. You see, three came in, beat the batter there. Would have been interesting if the keeper had taken it, actually. Oh, what bold. Oh, he hit the stumps. Very close to it. That was a very good Yorker from Marcus Ahmed. Spun away. That's why I thought might have hit the base of the stumps. It was pretty heavy. Doesn't always knock the bales off. That jams down. And then what happens? No, not quite. Close call, though. Pretty tight on time, but I think they'll make it. Jinxed him. The other thing here is if there's a wicket, you don't get an allowance for the fifth wicket. So I actually think that if you take a wicket here, it's a bad result for the fielding team because it's going to cost you five. I suppose not taking a wicket can cost you more than that, though. This time, Paul from Kunta, just the one. The thing with that clock is pretty much almost all adjustments are made in the run, so you can normally trust it. And you, you need to deliver the last ball of the ninth over before it hits zero. So it won't be taking too long. And this is when a wide can really hurt you. It can cost you six. Not a wide, though. Good shot. Pradjil Asif just leans on it straight over the bowler's head. Maximo! Moves to 57. Couldn't remove all the big fish, could they? The gladiators. Come to rue the fact they've let us if about this deep. Yeah, so as long as this isn't a wide, I think it'll be fine. Just has to bowl the ball before this before the clock runs out. Pressure though. Oh yeah, it's off the stumps. Turned away. Feel that. Come around and I think the batters are happy with one there. Brings up the 100 as well for ACCB. In pretty good shape here. Scores 100 for four after nine. Let me look at this innings. A 48 at halfway. So already 52 in the second half and there's still an over to go. Mendes went for plenty. Didn't really have a change of tactic. Nothing he needed one. Rockcast one for 18 despite getting whacked last ball there. One for 12 cut cut was pretty effective. Coley decent. Tezzy was unpredictable. I can see Coley and Tezzy opening the batting I'm sure in the second half of this game. Pretty good job in last game. Slightly different caliber of opponent, though. No disrespect to, disrespect to the Super Kings, but is their first day in ECN cricket. Lachmal to roll the tenth. This is only over. It's a tight one on the wide. I don't think originally was it got a bit of the line, but Andrew Begg didn't think so. Yeah. I suppose the pie has a little bit of discretion. Charges, that's a good result as well. I'll give you a hypothetical. If you say you threw it away and offered one overthrow there, is that a good result for you as a fielding side? And if you're the batting side, would you take it? I'd pay one run to get that off strike. Otherwise, you might go for more exactly like this. Maximo! Oh, there's a bear in there. It's been hit a couple of times. And uh, it's going to roll down. And the bear droppings here look like grizzly bears, don't they? As a sieve moves to 64. It was an interesting hypothetical, just thinking out loud. I thought it was a good stop by the bowler to, to prevent the single. But I think you want to give him the opportunity of taking it. Just going to have to deal with this guy. Now charges. It's straight up in the air. Three fielders come around, and it's a good catch. So they do get rid of him in the end. You can still save you some runs. And so, yeah, Lakmal done a pretty good job here in the last over. I know he went 
for a few runs. And it's uh, absolutely safe. Such good innings. It's, uh, and the catch was taken. Absolutely safe. Has to go over 64 of 29 balls. And he yeah, gets a good reception from his ACCB teammates. He even gets the tape <laughs> fixed up. You can see well, he's put their team in a very good position. Nice catch though taken by Amar Sharma down there. He struggled with a real steeper earlier. New batter comes out then. Two to come. Let's see what they can get to. Proper heave job, wasn't it? And it's a player that I think actually it's a, it's certainly a player to watch. Sayudullah now sporting the 888 jersey. All right, last ball. Seatbelts on. Bowled him. So, Mike Mull gets two in the end. Pretty good last over. It's always going to be hard to deal with Hurricane Asif, but he did it pretty well, didn't he? And then, yeah, in the end, he only goes for seven. Seven off last over. Six or one. Two wickets. And two dots. So, ACCB, 107 for six. Look, it's a decent score. I wouldn't say that by any means they've battered the Gladiators out of the game. I think a lot of responsibility on the openers for the Gladiators. We saw TZ or Hassan batting very well earlier. We saw Coley in the runs. And uh, I think ultimately, fairly evenly poised as we head into the highlights of this first innings of match four in this back code ECS Romania. And early on, Kudkut caused some chaos, didn't he? Quick to jump on that ball and causing a run out. Very first ball. And you got to feel for Jaya Singer, who had to go. There's a few radar problems creeping in during this innings as well. Got to say, though, there were some very good shots played as well. To Zibo Hassan. Coming in and there's a bit of chaos cricket here for a while. This is one. Just, I think, hit the rope at any rate. The hand hit the rope when they tried to pull it back. Nice to have a look at DeSantha out of Chilagi, but he's only able to hit the one boundary before he hold out to the deep square leg boundary. Kadka doing a job. And then, what's that, Abbas? He had uh, something to think about first ball. And then, it was the full one that got him. He was hoping for a no ball. It was borderline, but I think ultimately the right call's made there. I think that one is fractionally below the waist. You can see the Gladiators. We've been jumping around as well. It's not just UDEFs doing that at the moment. It's an absolute peach from Coley here. Who pulled pretty well without taking a wicket. The bear was under attack, wasn't it? Abdul Asif climbed into his innings. 64 off 29 with seven sixes and four fours. And that was his 50. And he finished off with a little kiss. Late in the piece, so scrambling. A mixture of going for everyone possible, but also trying to, trying to skew the strike towards Abdul Asif. And have one curtain call before he'd get out. And then Kutta, he'd go off the last ball. So, yeah, 107 for six. Decent score from ACB, ACCB without essentially making it too much of a one-sided contest second half but they're gonna have to bat well the gladiators but don't forget they are the defending champions Abdul was 64 off 29 apart from that didn't get a lot of help go Manan never really fired 13 off 11 for him Jay Singer run out without a ball faced that's a bit of a disaster for him Arachilagi showed some talent in his brief stay at the crease couldn't touch with 10 played a sport role at the end 14 extras the scary thing is today that's actually not too bad compared to some of the innings that we've seen. As far as the bowling, Kadka was pretty effective, wasn't he? Got the early wicket one for 12 for him. Wickets for Tazib Al Hassan, Wakas Ahmed with a decent spell. But for me, Lakmal, his last over could prove to be really important. There were 100 going into the last, and he kept them to seven. Picked up two wickets along the way. So he certainly deserves a mention. Mendes going for plenty, unfortunately, in his over. We'll take a break, and we'll be back 
in just a few minutes with the second half of this match, match number four. And it will be the Gladiators chasing 108 for victory. Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo for ECN. We'll see you in just a few moments with more Fan Code European Cricket Series.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Hello, welcome back to the Moravlos here Cricket Ground here, just north of the nation's capital, Bucharest. It's great to have your company in this European Cricket Series. It's day one and it's match number four. I can't say it's my fourth match, but uh, it is day four, uh, match four of day one. And right now watching what's a, a pretty interesting contest, I think, between ACCB and Bucharest Gladiators. Bucharest Gladiators won the, total, won the trophy last year, getting over Cluj in the final. It's only their second series. They won it on Taboo. Quite an incredible effort. And the men in the dark blue and the red. ACCB, they're also previous champions. They won the two-day series back in 2020. So, yeah, it is a battle of two ECS winners here in match number four. Now, the format in this series... 11 sides taking part. That's, that's a really good result as well because previously we only ever had five teams take part. And typically there's been, say, seven or eight teams around the traps and they've had to qualify for the ECS. And so a couple of teams miss out. But now with the expansion, and with more clubs being involved in cricket in Romania, now we've got 11 spots and yeah, more inclusion, I suppose. It might take a bit of time for some of these teams to get up scratch, but, but still... I think it's good for the game as a whole. Hello to Josh Sayers, who's watching from the USA. Hopefully you're well, Josh. I just shot a quick interview in the break with Cosman Zavoy, who is the Bucharest Gladiators captain, native Romanian player. Wasn't he incredible? Went for 32 in his first over last game. And then the second over. He took five for two, including a fake hat-trick. Anyway, 108 to win right here, right now. He's going to start with a bang six. What a shot from Tazib. Maximo! Abdul Asif, he's not slow, but it was a bit of a warm-up ball. Kind of a ball of a guy that's just batted around about eight or nine overs, and it got smashed. What a shot. Just plays on instinct. It's an early shout, but anyone for a golden ball here? We've already had a five fuck. Oh, hit hard, doesn't quite carry. Now, oh, not strike or over commits. We almost had a second diamond duck in the game. So, pretty good fielding. I think that's Saidullah that makes the block. So have a look at Coley. He, he actually runs without looking. If he looked quicker, he would have known he had to get back quicker. And directly it would have been super interesting there. Yeah, Apple is safe. Been very, very destructive so far with the bat. Trying to do it with the ball now. This is hit hard into the gap. That's four. So gladiators. Yeah, their depth, I suppose, sometimes a bit of an issue when you look at the squad they're putting on the park this year. But certainly the top looking very, very at home. This guy, Tazib, he's been a revelation today. He pulled fairly well as well. First time we've seen him in ECN cricket. Oh, this is hit pretty hard as well. And that's coming cube-wise. That's four as well. Wow. What an over. He's taking down Abdul Asif here. Abdul hasn't really tried to, for example, try a bouncer on him or a genuine Yorker. Kind of put it in the slot a few times. It's funny, the slot is where you try and bowl early, you know. You're trying to get a bit of movement and, and nick a guy off. There's Andrew Begg in the background. Good to see him there. Haven't had a chance to say hello to him yet. It's been pretty, pretty frenetic since I arrived. Here to Zeeb. He's only young as well, you know. He's only 22 years old. Oh, yeah. It's a good comeback. This one seems back. That's the, that's the movement do the work. As if being bowled here in the first. He would have been one of the trump cards, you'd imagine. So, yeah, I think you don't need to get out to him here. Probably take the one. If it's there to hit, go for it, sure, but got the hot hand. Huge swing, of course. Even bigger swing the second time around. At the end of the over, it's 14 without loss. Totally at the other end. Bit of a spectator. A bit like he was before. It was Tazib that did the early scoring. 
And, and Coley essentially caught up once he had a chance to, to contribute. Oh, click over the golden ball counter. 117 matches since the golden ball. What do you think, guys? It does seem in the golden ball habitable zone. But time will tell, I guess. Well, we've only been here for the first three days. I certainly hope we can have one before I go on vacation. And now the bad thing for me is, and look, I'll be, I'll be happy to do some T20 international cricket just to change things up a bit, but they don't have golden balls in T20 international cricket. And that, I find... A little bit disappointing. It just means we can't get the tingle when we're watching T20 Internationals. Do enjoy watching it for other reasons, though. Hello to James Stewart, watching from Estonia. Hopefully you're well. And, uh, James, how did you think Estonia went on the weekend? I know they didn't really get the results on the points table. There's Nalanga coming on with some left armers, but Coley makes a confident start, just whips that away. Fairly correct shot, fairly still. Four runs to the total. Yeah, nice shot by Coley. I think he'll, he'll feel a lot more confident coming off some runs in that last game. Ended up top scoring with 73 off 28. Wasn't out. So in a sense, he'll just feel probably like this is a continuation of when he was batting before. Pretty well bowled by Nalanga. He's got some good mechanics to his left arm seam bowling. Glad he had his, though, you can tell. Pumped for a big start here. Don't want to get the staggers. First time we've seen ACCB this year. No stranger. No strangers to the European Cricket Series. I think they've played every time we've been here in Romania. What do you think about the wide pitch as well? I guess I like it. Like a big wide fairway. If you're teeing up in golf. Oh, well, speaking of teeing up, that's exactly what Kazib tries to do there. You can see his teammates saying, stay there, stay there. It's not so much stay there, it's just make better choices. Wasn't really in a position to play that shot. He's ready. Shown he can hit straight down the ground. He kind of took the bait there with the mid on and mid off back on the boundary. He tries to go a bit more sideways and misses out. Yeah. He's. Let's have a look at him here. Look at his action. Angle across the left arm up. Uh, in the air, it dropped. It was straight in, it was straight out. And almost causes a run out. Almost causes an overthrow, but Tazeeb gets dropped on 14. Oh, yeah. Jay Singh is not having a great game so far. He's run out without facing a ball. But to be fair, that was hit pretty hard. Does make the stop. Tazeeb just taking his chances. But uh, yeah, quite unlucky that went to the field and then got lucky that he dropped it. Sorry, this will have to be called. Andrew Begg making the signal. He's a very, very experienced cricket official and umpire here in Romania. National team coach as well. He's been around the traps, does a lot for the game. Andrew, and big shout out to, to all our umpiring crew that we've got here so far. Nishan Devray. We've also got Vijay Krishnan. He just gets the run up wrong. Last ball, the over. 11 and over pace. That's what you're shooting for if you're Bucharest Gladiators. Pretty much there. If they score anything off this one. In fact, he's 
going to change angle. It's going to be interesting. outside the legs, and that's even further outside the legs. That's put away by Coley. Maximo! And Manmeet, he's already shown he's very good clipping off the pads. He's got his timing. And you can just feel he's growing with confidence with the bat, can't you? Nilanga gets it wrong, last ball, and the gladiators pull ahead in this chase. It's 27 without loss after two. I'm sure we've got a lot of viewers watching from Romania as well. Hello to all of you guys. And we talked about some of the new teams we'll see. If I go from the bottom up, I mentioned Zinetis, Transylvania. Uh, Super Kings, of course, Giamata, as well as Bukhres Salmi and UNEFs. The six teams we're seeing in this series that we've never seen before on ECN. So what a great opportunity to get some more teams and players involved. I can't remember the exact amount of teams, but it's in the hundreds of teams we've had on ECN now. And I feel like we're up to about 7,000 players that we've seen involved in the European Cricket Network calendar. Yes. New bowler here, Saidula. His first one is lifted away. It's away from the field. I go Hamanan. That long off. That's another boundary. This good start continues. And the Gladiators, for them, it's kind of a game. It's kind of shades of last year. They held Cluj to just 98 in that game. And then they chased it down. They did it pretty easily in the end. It's a bit earlier in the year, though. It'll be a wide, even though he jumps away from the ball. Yeah, that Cluj, obviously, would have been pretty heavy favourites going into that, but Mohamed Moyes was, was great in the final. He's missing from this lineup at the moment, but they've got a pretty able replacement in Tazibul Hassan. Yeah, last year, they chased down the target of 99 in only 6.1 overs. Yeah. Doesn't get up, so do all that. Just kind of sling them onto you. And a lot of the time, I don't get up too, too high. Just get slightly lower arm action. It's his back, bowler cuts it off. Good understanding that time between the batters. So much of running between the wickets is looking at your partner. Calling's important, but people talk a lot about calling. I don't think they talk enough about looking. Mirror your your partner's body movements. Saeed rocking the eight 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 shirt now. Yeah. Nice little ball. Tell by the grunt. Say it all of Oh, Cops out on the way back in. Might just hit the edge of the pitch, and that's why he just lost his composure momentarily. <laughs> Can he get out of this over right now? ACCB winning the over. Short. And really comes on to Coley. He'll have to settle for one here. Crazy couple of games since I finally made it to the ground after I was held up overnight in Stockholm. Stefan Gooch doing a great job filling in for me for a couple of games. So wing and a miss, and it's the end of the power play. I'd say Gladiators a shade ahead, but only a shade, partly because the bowlers have already had to deal with. So 34 without loss after three. Interestingly, all three overs, the first ball went to the boundary. So, a proper yo-yo job in the first half, wasn't it, from ACCB? It's almost like you're playing at different ends. And there's one big scoring end and one more defensive end. Seems like all the odd overs would, would tie it. Except for the night. But... Uh, even though it was pretty high scoring. It's one of those things, I suppose. 
Coming on the floor to begin. Looking to bowl out. Nilanga here. Yeah, he bowled some good balls, but he also went for a few. Went for 13 in that second over. This is up in the air. Fielder comes around. He drops it. It's gone for four. Oh, boy. Coley gets a life. He's been really good off his pads, hasn't he? But oh, that hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, just lift it up. Fielder was pretty well positioned. Uh, down went the catch. I mean, Kunta in the right spot, in the right time, but not the right result as far as ACCB are concerned. <coughs> Coley has a life on 12. Yeah, plays this a bit more correctly. Curious how he bats now the power plays over. I'm going to say, still pretty attacking. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a little cover, I think. Can't be out, but a bit of bowling from Malanga. Which sounds like next stump. I've got to say, I like the ACCB uh, New Jerseys as well. Bit of an update since last time I saw them anyway. Slightly darker blue. It's got a few more layers to it, this new shirt, doesn't it? A bit of orange tinge in there as well. Maybe a little bit Indian inspired, I think. Got players from a variety of groups, though. Of ethnic groups in the side. It's interestingly, uh, when they were known as ICCB, so for Indian Cricket Club for the rest. 2021. We're named to Asian Creek Club put a, put a Bucharest. That's where we are. <laughs> Always did the step thing there. Because I just think they had a great variety of backgrounds in the side. And who knows? Maybe one day they'll just be Cricket Club, cricket club Bucharest. Pitched up. And it's a deep point. Just the singles. They've done pretty well just kind of reeling this back a little bit. ACCB without taking a wicket. Nice ball, nice ball the over coming up. Nilanga, it's been okay. Nice ball is over. Coming up right now. Wow, it's absolutely smoked. Oh dear, that one could be up in the camera tower. Maximo! Kalanga, he'd avoided punishment for so long, but Tazib's after him. And that was a perfect length to play that shot, and he absolutely got every piece of it. 47 without loss after four, and with one swing of the bat, Gladiators go from behind to ahead of that red line, just fractionally. You can see from this, it's pretty close. And if you make the calculation at the end of every over, but if they hadn't hit that six, it would have dipped below the red line after four. Said comes back for a second over. Touch with the breakthrough. Don't think they'll get it here because Coley lifts him up and he's over long on and that's actually in the tent. Maximo, what a strike from Manmeet. Side all up. So here's the thing about him, he doesn't get a lot of bounce, he's more skiddy, so you can be pretty, pretty, pretty confident it's not going to jump on you too much. You get in that front foot, that's exactly what Coley does there. Shorter goes after it and he gets enough of this as well. Maximo on well, the 50 came up with the last shot. Now it's up to 59. 50 partnership as well coming up in the fifth. Very good opening partnership. I 
forget, hasn't all been plain sailing for the Gladiators, but right now ACCB struggling for answers. Got to break this partnership, then you can I suppose, see where you're at in the game. He moves the third man to fine leg. That's interesting because Coley likes to dab down the third man as a kind of get out of jail shot. He might go looking for it here. Won't be able to though. He's too straight. I thought maybe try him out with a the bouncer there. He's already used the bouncer, I think, but it's a more shortish ball. Well, Gladiators, not the start to the day they wanted when they went down to UNEFs in match one, but yeah, since then. Counting for the Super Kings pretty easily. With a win here, they'd feel this is a good day. And Tazib just angles this. And that'll run away for four as well. So, raining boundaries at the moment. The Gladiators making hay at the Moara of Lassier cricket ground. And that was a very intelligent shot. And right now, took to sing the ACCB skipper. He's Looking like a train conductor, really. He's left, right, and one of those guys that directs traffic. Just moving people everywhere, trying to come up with a way to stop these runs. Steps up, hit hard. If it got through the fielder on the full, I think it was a genuine chance, but it will be four. So another hard hit ball from Dazeeb, who's eyeing off back to back half centuries here on day one. What a good performance this is at the moment. The Gladiators, the longer they can keep this run going, the harder it'll be to, to stop, even with a wicket or two. All right, he walks at this, and he hits this out of the ground as well. Oh, it's action of plenty, and oh, well, Shoop. He's going to regret that one, because he had so much time to get under this. And uh, so, well, how many were off this over? I'm still counting. Anyway, while I'm counting, let's have a look what what happened here. And uh, Shub does get incentives to take catches, but he's put down a sitter there. He's even done everything right. He's thrown the papers away. He's just in a bit of a tough spot confidence-wise. Shub is in charge of the player and match officials area. Luckily, he's not the fielding coach for any of these teams. Right now, though, it's 74 without loss after five. Oh, shot. Really good shot. That's powerful. Oh, it's a sight screen bust up from Coley. He's gaining confidence. And it's almost like, you know, the walk-off. A walk-off scene in Zoolander where they're trying to outdo each other. I don't know who's Derek Zoolander and who's Hansel, but right now it's entertaining the crowd. Unless you're an ACCB supporter. Now he's gone. And so, yeah, very quick to give give that one out. Andrew Begg will see on the replay. Yeah, it's tough to get an LB from around the wicket. Oof. But anyway, it's going to be Coley that goes. Uh, Coley looks disappointed. I can't understand why. For me... Super Shorts is pitching in line. But uh, well, the umpire liked it, and that's all that matters. So, ACCB catch a break there. Probably was hitting the stumps, so had that going for it. Probably not a lot else. But as far as the neutrals go, they might be happy with that because he might have a contest in our hands. Probably shouldn't be, though, from this position. Because that's Tanusha Lakmal coming to the crease. Like Mark, does the right thing, gets one, gets to see back on strike.
Have to see if though. It was brought back to take a wicket and he did. Well, Sabir in the chat. Hello, Sabir. Sabir Sarko. Asking, can I participate in this game? Well, the 11s are out for this game, Sabir, so you probably struggle. It's pretty hard. See, spending time grieving. This goes on, hitting. Just remember, I don't want you watching here on the European Cricket Network. These are genuine European cricket clubs in the European Cricket Series. Right, as far as the internationals go, looking forward to the ECC. 98 days to go now. Countdown started on Saturday when we had 100 days to go. Number 31 nations, including Romania, will be taking part. Pretty good shot by Lakmar. He's just getting settled out there. Yeah, so Romanian national team, we saw them in, in Italy a little bit early in the season in an ECI. We'll see them in the ECIs here, of course, as well. And it's a great opportunity then for for their national team to come together and, and tune up, I suppose. Because, yeah, the ECC group they're in is pretty interesting. Up in the air, slashed away. This will probably run away for four. It does. So, no wins in sight. That's the end of the over as well. As if does get a wicket. And he's probably lucky there's no DRS in the European Cricket Series. Uh, but he also goes 27, doesn't he? It's 87 for one after six. Coley had a really well 37 off 13. He shouldn't be too put off by that dismissal either. He'll be really happy with himself. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing the ECIs. We'll get to see Romania, Croatia and Slovenia in the ECIs coming up 1st and 2nd of July. So that's going to be awesome. It's going to be really, really good. And Slovenia, well, they're not even an ECC country yet. We are planning you know, to expand it to all European Greek countries. They're one of the only, a couple of them, like Serbia are one, Slovenia are one. Uh, we, we, we'd, like, we'd like to make it open to everyone. Oh, well, it's not a good start. Is it's going to be a no ball. And it's going to go for four. So, he looks very perplexed by this, Sukbinda, but it's way too high. It's way too high. See where he hits this from. Yeah, that's an easy call. Andrew Begg gets that spot on. Mr. Binda. I think there's been a few times today players have had their kind of normal reactions for if things weren't televised, but then the TV shows the umpires have been spot on. Hello to Mike Seal. Hopefully you're well. Oh, in the air, but it doesn't matter because it's a free hit, but it might cause a run out, and it does. And look at that. You just have a look at uh, to see with the other end. He's, he's hitting his head. And, yeah, I suppose I mean, Lakmal's got egg on his face, but he's getting a little hug from from Al Hassan. That shows me that there's good camaraderie in, in, the, in the side because... Yeah, Tazib was frustrated, but... So you, you can't be caught of no ball, but you can be run out. Mal finds that out the hard way. And just have a look. He's saying, oh, come on. You had to remember that was a free hit. And they get a, get a break from somewhere. And that'll make it 92 for two. Should still get there, though. Cut, cut, new batter comes out, left-hander. He brings to the table. That's good variety in their attack. Still should get home from here fairly easily. It's pretty well bowled. And also, well played by Cut, cut. See the keeper, Zanabas, gets a... Mixer between a hug and a tackle there. Yeah, so Slovenia in the ECIs, that's going to be awesome. I have seen Ljubljana, a Slovenian club, play in ECS cricket before. They normally play in the Croatia series last couple of years. 
be well bowled, but Tazeeb, pretty smart cricket from him. You know, he's eight. Less than a run of ball required. I'm not going to let any kind of collapse take hold. I'm just going to keep scoring. So Bindle looks in good shape, you know. Be looking after himself. All right, Kadka's had about enough, and he goes long. Oh, it's a really good effort. And I, I don't think we can see from the camera if this is four or six. So we'll probably have to see what the what the fielder says about it because I think his body obscures where the ball bounces. So maybe we can check this out in the replay. You can see here, it's a... Uh, I think that's four, but I just think it's four. Uh, based on what I'm seeing. I mean, there's no way of telling because his body's in the way. But just judging about where that ball ended up, I think it's four. And, yeah, four's given. And I don't even know if Kat, if uh, the fielder knows because uh, he had his back to it, didn't he? Regardless, probably will be all academic, although this is in the air. Oh, two fielders come in. Oh, this one's spilt again. And I've probably got time to get two. That sort of sums it up, really, doesn't it? That's Santa Ruin out there. He's having a torrid time. I like the attack on this. It's not tor uh, Pardon me. It looks like... Yeah, it looks like Manon was going the other way, wasn't he? But yeah, this, no, this Santa Ruin that came in. And yeah, Doha Manon isn't someone you want to run into in a dark alley. I'll tell you that much. Hundreds up. Just eight to win now. Smart batting from Kadka. Yeah, as we get to the end of the seventh over, and the score is 101 for two. And, uh, yeah, Mike, good to see you in the chat. I'm going to come back to you in a minute, but first, let's have a look at what's coming up last game of the day. Bucharest Super Kings versus ACCB. And uh, the news from the toss is that the Super Kings won the toss and elected to bat. So, yeah, that's coming up. And look, chance for them to, to, I suppose, try and put something together with that. We don't have that big pressure. And uh, the ACCB, though, I think they'll be feeling fairly confident considering their superior experience in easy end cricket. But still, much is coming your way. Scheduled to start in just under half an hour's time. Looking forward to that for sure. Anyway, Gladiators, they've batted well, haven't they? Even with a couple of, just say, mental errors, like the run out of, of luck mile. Seven to win. Have to fall over to lose, really. And only one question is, will, will Tazeeb be able to score his half century before they pass the score? And cut, cut. Decides to kind of premeditate behind square. Just a single. Let's be a wide down leg side. So, yeah, Mike is saying that, that uh, you know, the pitch is pretty wide. It's being brought to his attention. Yeah, it's true. This is a nice little cart to Z. 48, 49. No advances. We'll stay at 49. Yeah, so... Yeah, Kareem saying enjoy this because he likes to bowl very wide of the crease. My main issue is the players look like ants out there on this wide pitch. Reminds me of when we had the opposite in St. Gallen in Switzerland back in 2020 and the pitch was really narrow and it looked like a bunch of Gullivers out there. Okay, here we go. Tazeeb going for back-to-back -back half centuries. It's on 49. And he'll get 50. 
And hasn't he been brilliant? Tazibo Hassan has really stepped up for the Gladiators. And he's going to lead them to a second consecutive victory. But uh, he's been excellent. And yeah, I gotta say, he's got his own little... Oh, it's a love heart. Isn't that nice? And he's kissing, he's kissing the imaginary badge. Is there a badge on there? It must be very faint. Kissing the shirt anyway. I like it. 50 off 24. Well batted to Zeeb. Now just two required for victory. Be over with time to spare here, I think. Flicked away leg side. This will tie the game. In a way, it'd be fitting if Tazeeb gets the chance to hit, to hit the winning runs. The score's tied up at 107. Dr. Hussain saying super duper to Zeeb. He's put on a bit of a show, hasn't he? This is Amanullah getting a, a bowl. You wonder if he'll get the finishes over here. Any score wins it for the Gladiators. Oh, that's one way to stop them winning. Yeah, I've got to say, wide pitch. I don't mind it. I mean, yeah. The, I am told on good authority the lines are regulation. But can you really trust anyone these days? Here's what I think is the last ball of the match. And it will be because Tazeeb is going to knock it down for one. He'll finish 51 not out. Nice little red inker for him. And the Gladiators, they win it. They make it two out of three on day one. Final score, Gladiators 108 off 7.5. Defeat ACCB 107 in a battle of two former ECS champions. It's the 22 champions getting over the 20 champions. And the Gladiators they didn't have the, the start to the day that they planned, but they certainly came good at the right time. And I've got to say, they had some concerns about their batting. You know, just speaking to the guys because of who they lost, but they found a couple, haven't they? And I've got to say, Coley looked composed once he kind of got over it at the top of the order. But Tazeeb, yeah, back-to-back -back 50s. Getting a good reception. Just seems to be a good feel in the camp. I mean, why not? They'll have fond memories of last year, those that, that did take part of how they weren't expected to do much, but they came through to win the whole series, beating the highly fancy Cluj in the final and beating them pretty comprehensively. And they'll love to go back to back, but they're going to have to beat a lot of good cricket teams to get there. Yeah, but they certainly are a team that provided us a lot of highlights. That's uh, uh, right now. Match four, second innings highlights. 108 was the target. I felt it was pretty much a 50-50 coin flip at the halfway point. And well, it was a fairly decent start by fairly decent. I mean, a really good. As Abdul Asif got smashed over his head. We almost had another diamond. Two in a match. Would have been absolutely crazy. So Kabudu Nilanga creating bit of havoc with that left arm angle but really when it came down to it they couldn't remove the openers until the gladiators were well ahead Coley he looked pretty good off his pads that was one chance that he gave unfortunately couldn't, couldn't deal with it but, uh, yeah the odd moment of, of luck but I don't think there's anything lucky about this run chase I suppose ACCB we know them as a a very strong batting team, but uh, yeah, probably their bowling, not quite where their batting where, where their batting is. This was, a, I suppose, it's not funny, but we made a few viewers laugh when Luckmal got run out of a free hit when he got sent back, and it caused a literal face palm from his partner Tazibul Hassan. And uh, then again, this was a, a decent effort. Probably saves two runs there, doesn't he, Senderawan? Uh, when it came down to it, that 107 just didn't hold up. Again, he was in the act again. Sandaru one, very next ball. We saw Tazi bring up his 50, kissing his own shirt. I'll have to look closely. I know we're a bit far away with the camera, but we'll have to see if there's a badge there or not. But you can see these loving playing for the Gladiators, and why not? They take two out of three. And so, having a look at the scorecard. 
Top order does the job. Al Hassan, second consecutive 50, 51 of 25 this time around. Coley, 37 off 13. Could be considered a little bit unlucky to head back to the pavilion, but maybe there's a positive there for the Gladiators. It does give Lakmal and Kudka a hit. And they had to, very few dramas actually chasing that down with over two overs to spare in the end. Just the four extra, so there's that for ACCB. But once again, the bowling not getting the penetration that they'd like. Looking at that bowling, you can see no one was really able to stop the flow of runs. The wicket went to Abdullah Sif, and even that one is probably questionable. He's also run out of free hit there. Amanula came on but couldn't quite complete the full over as the Gladiators win match four with 13 balls to spare. We'll take a break. I think we're back on target, so we should start the next match in 20 minutes' time. Super Kings trying to build a total in match five. We'll be taking on ACCB, who I'm sure are keen for their first points of the series. Vinny Sandu here, Mr. Maximo for ECM. We'll see you after the break for more Fan Code European Cricket Series.
The European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fancode and Grizzly Bear Sports. Hello, cricket lovers, and welcome back to the Moira Valencia ground here in Progress Romania. Vinny Sandu here, Mr. Maximo. Opening day action will conclude with this match. It's match five, and it is going to be a pretty interesting clash between Progress Super Kings and ACCB. Bit of a mismatch as far as the experience levels go. Right now, let's have a look back at what happened at the coin toss when we had Stefan Gooch and the two captains. Okay, Super Kings to call. Heads is the call. It is heads. Okay, good luck, guys. All the best. Have a good game. So, Bucharest Super Kings have won the toss and they're having a bat back over to you in the commentary box, Vinny. Thank you, Stefan. Oh, he's the Swiss Army knife of, of ECN Blue Crew members today, isn't he? Stefan Gooch. And he he uh, oversaw that toss and we saw the Super Kings skip up. Raman Rudoy winning the toss, lengthening to bat. I think it's a good move when you consider they've struggled in the face of some huge targets. And they've had to deal with. And so this time, they can set their own narrative. But uh, I suppose the Super Kings, the question is, where will the runs come from? ACCB, a lot more experience. And both of these teams without any points in the series so far. ACCB going down to progress Gladiators earlier on. Also a team that accounted for the Super Kings back in the match before that. So yeah, it's interesting one to finish the day. Looking forward to seeing how it pans out. Anyway, looks like everyone's out there and ready to go. <coughs> ACCB, when they get their turn to bat. I'll be on Gohamanan and Abdul Asif. Another look at Christoph Jayasinger, who has run out without facing a ball. That's disappointing for him. But anyway, should be a good challenge for the Super Kings. Ain't never easy on your first day of ECN cricket to compete with teams that are more experienced. They're just waiting for the clock to tick over. Two quarter past five local time. So they kept the the top batter the same as in Ansari. I thought maybe we might have a, a slight change, but anyway. Almost ready to go. Shake, rattle, and let's roll. Match five, live from Buc Bucharest. Starts with a wide down league side. Opening up with Aman Ula. He didn't quite get to complete his over in that previous game. Because the Gladiators reached the target. Right away the captain at the other end. Pretty well bold. So he has to be careful. Kick this one out. Yeah, I suppose when you ever go from five teams to 11 teams in the series, you're going to find teams that are, I suppose, find it a bit harder to, to catch up to the level. They've had a bit of a rough draw, to be honest, uh, at Super Kings, when you consider who they've drawn today. Oh, you nefs that were actually on fire, weren't they? <laughs> and then, of course, Gladiators and ACCB, both previous ECS winners. ACCB winning the title back in our first ever European Cricket Series. European Cricket Series here in 2020. And the Gladiators winning last year, 2022. Sorry, looks good enough to keep him out, I suppose. If you want to be, be a bit brave, if he knew these balls are a missing leg stump, which they are, he could get across a bit more and rather than play straight back, just try and clip them. That ball's not hitting. It's missing by a stump or two. It does do exactly that to a ball that was on the stumps. Uh, so it's going to run away for four. So Ansari, fourth time lucky for him. And he gets off the mark. It's a braver shot. It's a shot he probably should have played to the last couple of balls before that, but still. So, maybe if the Bucharest Super Kings could sneak up to, let's say, 100, 100 plus, get some of the key wickets. 
Come up, getting some good movement. Now, oh, Missville almost causes a run out. And then they turn it down. Well, Ridoy doesn't want to join the list of golden duck makers today, does he? Yeah. So Super Kings, we saw them open up with some different combinations so far. Just trying to find, find some runs. That's well bowled, though. This one, instead of coming back, goes straight across. It's a very good over from Amanullah. The Super Kings get one boundary, but not a lot more. It's five without loss after one. Once again, I want to welcome everyone in the chat, ECN European Cricket Network, on fan code. Or, of course, if you're in live chat, you're probably watching on our YouTube channel, ECN European Cricket Network. Yeah, so, Mike? Maybe he was telling us where the creases should be. I mean, yeah. That is generally how it's done. <laughs> I suppose sometimes you get some manual errors in there. Not to say whether it is or it isn't. To be honest, though, I kind of like the idea. Okay, certain distances you can't mess with, like the pop increase and the stumps. I kind of like the idea of, could you have some wider pitches or thinner pitches? Why not? You can have some slightly bigger fields and slightly smaller fields. What do you think? Maybe if it was really a tolerance. Just some food for thought. It is random. Random. Last match of the day. Random question time. Is into the gap. And, well, I think the foot fielding. Well, and take two here. Should have. <laughs> but uh, in the end, I think Ansari pulls rank over his skipper and says, "No, no, one's fine." Knocked him over to Ansari. Probably shouldn't have been on strike there, if I'm completely honest. He sent back his captain and said, don't you worry, I'll handle this. A bit like when your mate in the passenger seat says that he'll talk to the police after they pull you over at 2 a.m. on a Saturday night. But, uh, he was the one that ends up having to do the walk of shame, doesn't he? So the Super Kings lose the second wicket at six for two. Yeah, the... Four before it was a definite two, but Ansari was saying, hold on, one's fine. So maybe a bit of an experience there. And, uh, over goes the castle. Good in swinger. And so that'll bring Nahid Hussain to the crease. Bowling though by Kunta. He's provided something a bit different for ACCB. A couple of players I haven't seen before put on a blue shirt today. All right. So Hussein faces up. Kunta got over so far. Swing and a miss. This one actually goes out. So he's shown he can swing the ball both ways. Oh, there's the innie again. It's very good swing bowling. Kunta, one for two. I'd love to make that two for two, I suppose. This one hangs and hit into the gap. Nice shot by Hussain. He'll get off the mark with a boundary. Kunta had 
four on a string, but just lost the handle on it last ball, didn't he? And the Super Kings after two, they're 11 for one. Yeah, I know a few people watching the Ashes as well. We're keeping track of the score here as well. I won't mention it in case some people are looking forward to watching the highlights later. Have a look at this. Gladiators with two wins. Really not too much between them and UNEFs, but you've got to remember, UNEFs only played the two matches today, so they're undefeated so far. ACCB without a win, Super Kings without a win, so a battle of the have-nots here in match five. Okay, back to the action. Oh, good seed from Amanola. Straightens a few down the line, then has this one that goes the other way. It's not easy to play. How can you pick the one that will and the one that won't? <laughs> they might get a run hit. No, they won't. I mean, firstly, let me just tell you, you can take my word for it, that this would have knocked a four stump out of the ground. It's, uh, was he out here? Would he have been out? Oh, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. Oh, wow. Know where you are. <laughs> Read away the captain. I would have been stumped. Unawares. Wow. <laughs> that was out. Don't know what to think. Anyway. Oh, how about this time? See if he's learned his lesson here. <laughs> it's pretty much a carbon copy of the ball. Yeah, well, that time gets the bat down. It would have been funny if it bounced back up in the air. In which case, he could still be stumped. And this is out again. This one well stopped by Asad Abbas behind the stump. It's pretty experienced back there. Well, this is why we love the European Cricket Series. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's harsh. <laughs> mm. Oh well, Super Kings, like I said, need a bit of help here in the first series, and they get a bit of help from the bowler. It's a drop catch. And uh, all that. Might have one there. I suppose the one good thing for him with that wide call is that he gets another opportunity to take a wicket. Speaking of opportunity to take a wicket, this was an opportunity. Instinctive though, can't be too much technique. away for one end of the power play. They might have a look at this, you know. I think he's in, but I mean, I thought that earlier, didn't I? Let's have a look. He kind of takes the accelerator off, doesn't he? Is he in? Oh. I think he's just in, but I tell you what, that's close, isn't it? Tight one. Anyway, into the third over, it's 13 for one. Oh, 
Five, six, and two. Not a lot happening. Scale's only 10 on that graph as well. Yeah, I think maybe I should go and get my measuring tape out overnight. First thing I'll probably do is go grab a bit of sleep, though. Looks like they're going to go for some spin, and it's going to be Sukhbinder Singh. The animated conversation right now with the umpire, Andrew Begg. I don't know why. Okay. Just checking how many outfielders he's allowed, but you should know by now <laughs> that at the end of three overs, you can have up to five. And uh, that's normally what teams go for. It's interesting. He's going to go to himself in the spin option here in the fourth over. Yeah, first one after wait by Ridoy. He's up to three off ten. Well, it is random question time. Who's got some random questions for me? Come on, guys. I'm waiting. We love Mondays, don't we, as well? New venue, new scene. Slides past the outside edge. Those of you that just joined us probably realise that it's the... You might have heard that missed the first couple of games. Jesus, the travel just having a couple of kinks in it that weren't expected. But straight from the airport to the ground today. And I've got to say, as soon as I arrived at the ground, it looked magnificent. I mean, it really looked like, yeah, I've got to say, it looked like a professional cricket ground, the way that it's been looked after. All right, gets a bit of bat on this, goes back and drops. Pretty good effort, actually. I think it's actually going to end up being... That's going to be four, I think. I'm sure he touches the rope, so I think this is going to be four. It's uh, Abdul Asif that runs back. And yeah, I think we'll find this one. It's a good effort. Knocks it forward, but then just have a look here. Just at this point here, you see, you see the rope move. So, yeah, it's going to be four runs. Great use of the technology as well. As well. Got to say to Patrick Santos and to Dennis today from Spring Productions, they've been top class. Anyway, to the action. His next ball isn't going to get over the ball up, but he will drop it. He might have another chance to run him out. Uh, so Linda couldn't quite jam it in reverse quick enough. So, one goes down. It's two drop catches in two balls. It won't be three. This one isn't handled cleanly first up, but it will be a single. A couple of missed opportunities, but no real damage on the scoreboard as yet. Progress Super Kings 21 for one after four. Now, just stressing as well, you know, you, you're mixing teams from different divisions essentially because of the, the decision to include as many teams as possible in this ECS. So the fact that we're seeing 11 teams now in the remaining ECS, that's up from five every time we've been here before. So, I mean, you are going to see occasionally teams that wouldn't normally play each other. So, maybe a few bowlers keen to trying to win at the moment, given that the batters are going to have to try something. Try and get this run rate going. Still not quite run a ball pace. So, Sandaruwan is going to grab the ball. And let's see what he can do. Continue with some spin, I think. Turns this into a full toss, but can't get it back past the bowler. Some good loop to that. Just didn't quite pitch it right. Much better. Hangs in the air. Again, tough one. And it's going to just fall out of the grasp of the fielder. Yeah, that's Amanula who was at mid-wicket. To be honest, you know, it was his catch. He did what he could to get there. It was just out of his reach, wasn't it?
Oh. I think this is off the bat, isn't it? It's a weird one. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's off the bat, I think. It's a leading edge. Didn't quite tell, originally. Yeah, straight off the bat. We'll take it. Gets to the other end. This is a single. All right, goes after this, sliced up in the air, can't drop this, drops this. Oh, ACCB couldn't catch a cold at the moment, could they? If they locked themselves in a freezer. <laughs> and just can't believe it. Oh dear me, end of the over, and it's 26 for one. And you can't even blame the sun because <laughs> it's behind you. Not even the end of the over. And this will be struck and we'll be right with the score. At the end of five, it will be 26 for one. So, what a day of action in Romania. So Pavel Florent featuring earlier for UNEF, who scored two victories in their first two games. So Pavel had a catch, dropped off his bowling as well. Like Captain Sukbinda, he's going to pull rank and say, hey, I want another go. Here he is bowling to Hussain. Oh, and he knocks him over. Hussain just backs away, tries to cut to the offside. And Sukbinda probably saying, that's what I was thinking all along. So... We saw a pitch actually in Sweden that had a few keep down. I don't think that's this is that so much. It's just kind of missing the line of the ball. So captain is in the wickets and Super Kings lose a second. It's 26 for two. Oh, what a swing! It kind of swings in there. I suppose it does come back a bit, doesn't it? Maybe that's what causes the the miss. The batter comes to the crease and it's Naeem Sheik. Naeem. Saw him briefly in match two, scored two off three, not out. Four off seven in the, the next match. Here's the guy that started the right. Cosman Zavoy took five wickets in and over earlier on today. Only the second time we've ever seen that. Crazy, really. Yeah. We've, we've seen some interesting things today, put it that way. All right. Yeah, this goes to reverse. Right, trying something on straight away, Sheik. Yeah, look at the way where this other hand goes. It's down like below the bottom of the handle, actually holding the whole wooden bit. Right, goes after this. Hanging in the air. Fielder can't get there. Wipe out. And they're not going to go off at two. They're going to go bowlers in here. Good throw might have had him. It was a long throw, wasn't it? But Sheik gets off the mark with a couple. Quite carry. He's after him, but he gets it higher than it goes long. T testing catch this one, and he's dropped it. 
never looked super confident. Now you almost have another run out. Oh, Romania's certainly bringing the entertainment back to back. Not that it ever really went anywhere. It's, uh, you can just tell with the body language. Let's go. Go up under there. Doesn't drop many, but he's normally further back on the boundary, and he has a nice loop. Sometimes they're higher. Sometimes they're more difficult when they're higher. When you don't really get an arc on them. Six overs down, though. Only five and over at the moment. Super Kings at 30 for two after six. And Keanu saying we need to see Pavel to celebrate because yeah, they've been really loving life out there, UNEFs. Pavel's been their dance coach, won their bowling coach. And Ruan, he comes back on. This should be gone. This one is taken. So, Redoy, been there for a long time. Got to do too much with the bat. He goes off the first ball, the seventh hand. Sandra Ruan finally has a wicket. And yeah, the issue here hasn't so much been losing wickets, but the fact that the batters just have not been able to kind of deal with has been served up at him. <coughs> Got a good catch as well. Abdul Asif makes no mistake that time. A lot more of a simple catch for Abdul. He's a guy we've seen at Kartam as well. A couple of times with the Romanian national team also. Some cameos at the ECL as well. There's a wild card. Okay, here is Mohamed Ashkul Sana. He's the top scorer last game for the Super Kings. Which is the first one to his pad. This run's probably not there. If it hits, he's in trouble. Sneaks there. Gets off the mark. With that inside edge. Oh, he gets the reverse. Wrong. Now he's sold his. Partner up the river, and he's going to get away with it. Have a look at that. I mean, number one, he almost reverse sweeps into his own teeth. Uh, and then you can see he just needed to catch it there, didn't he? That's that Abbas. He had plenty of time, but he kind of made the motion. He rushed towards the stumps and didn't have to. Slight judgment error there. Now it goes with the spin. Fielder jumps over it, should still just be one. Slight fumble out there by Karad Chilagi. He recovers in time to prevent an extra run. Yeah, so I'm sure when Pavel takes a wicket, and I say when, not if, sure we'll see some dance moves. Oh, he's gone, what a catch! He's just taken that one hand and he's off to the races, Amanola. How about that? And what a day of entertainment we've seen here in Romania. <laughs> it is to his correct side, but nonetheless, brilliant catch. It's a Jalebi catch, as Rico would say. He absolutely launched himself towards the ball there. It's more a fall than a sideways dive, if I'm completely honest. See it on the replay. Dragged with the spin. Oh, yeah. That's a very, very good catch. Come on, all up. The old catch and run play. Awesome fielding. And honestly, we've seen some real easy catches go down, haven't we? That one makes up for all of them, I think. So... Four down. Nah. Has to hit at six this time. Plays this out. Manhunt grabs it, hurls it. End of the seventh over. Score is 34 for four. And coming up tomorrow, day two. And listen, I promise I will wake up in Romania tomorrow. That is my promise to you. And uh, when I do, we'll get to see 
some more new teams. Now, the one team we have seen before that we'll see tomorrow is Baniasa. Uh, they're playing first up uh, and actually play three games, one, two, and four. Zanitis are a new team. Uh, Transylvania are a new team. Uh, Progress Army are a new team. And so five more matches. It's matches 6 to 10. Join us tomorrow, 6.15 a.m., 8.15 in Central Europe and 11.45 in India for day two in this Fancoat European Cricket Series. Right now, ACCB kind of showing their experience a bit, aren't they? Over at Super King's side, who are still adjusting. And look, guys, this is no different to if you had a couple of teams out of a hat. You had South Africa versus maybe like a Kenya or something like that. Just trying to pick a couple of countries out. These teams are in different places in their development right now. You just have to understand that, I suppose. And you get better by playing better opposition. Pretty good shot, though. And they've got the fielder out there patrolling the boundary. That'll just be a single. Traditionally seen a lot of high-scoring games here in Romania. Still some of the big teams to play. And Cluj, we'll see them later in the tournament. Obviously, they have to come a long way, about 500 kilometres to be here. We've got UCCB, United CC Bucharest, that were in the... ACL this year. Slices this, gets in the gap. It's probably run away for four, and it does. So, yeah, I should call Sana. It's a little bit of a shame we won't get potentially see him bat longer or bat earlier because he does seem to have a gear that some of his teammates don't. <coughs> That's very ECN, though, isn't it? Uh, see a couple of sodas go down, and you see an absolute all-time one-hander. And Mike saying he'll be talking that, about that in the bar tonight, yeah. But he's left-handed, so no excuses there to drop that one. Oh, really good shot. Once again, you've got to get this guy up higher. I think when you look at how your top orders performed in this game, you've got to start searching for answers. So the top four, they use up the majority of the innings. And if I was to add their scores up, they scored 28 of 39. That's their top four. And that means this guy has tops 21 to face, and that's only for faces all of them, which he won't. He's ready to receive Nilanga again. Full toss, and that disappears as well. I think that's gone all the way. That might have just bounced inside. Quatro Carreras. Well, there's the bear. Famous. Here in Romania, of course. Yeah, I mean, that's a full toss. Not really a leg stump full toss either. It's more on off than a link. And Keanu definitely looking forward to Transylvania. Oh, I know Rob Lever. He's been in the chat a couple of times. He's going to be playing for Transylvania tomorrow. So get behind Rob. He also runs quiz night that I started to visit tonight. Anyway, this is a good shot as well. And this is going to be four. So... It's a missed opportunity here to get Ashik up a bit higher. So he is handling it and doing a very good job. So Rob has invited me out tonight now. Because my bags haven't arrived yet, I will be wearing these clothes. And if you see me in these clothes tomorrow, you know what's happened. But I think because I'm only in Romania for a short time this year, it would be wrong of me not to, not to drop by. Last ball the over. This is a wide, doesn't hit anything at all. And Langer saying, hey, can that be a wide? And Andrew Begg can probably say, well, because you didn't hit the stumps. If you hit the stumps, that's fine. But if you miss, it's going to be a wide. One thing about Ashkul Sana, he's just looking to be a bit more proactive than some of his teammates. So he's trying to get across, trying to make something out of even nothing. Even though it might not work all the time. But he survives the eighth over, and the 50 came up during that over as well for the Super Kings. They're 52 for four after eight. Mike Seal asking, why is Ashkul Sana betting so far down the order? You tell me, Mike. I suppose they would have had their plans going in. And maybe they're sticking with them for the day, but I think with seven matches to go, you've got to go on what you see. And I think it'll be such a benefit for the Super Kings to go and actually watch their matches back. Yeah, for them to... To actually you know, see what they might be able to do differently batting. Cricket looks completely different than it feels when you play it. I don't know how many guys have played a lot of televised cricket out there. I know televised a bit more these days at different levels. But 
Yes, it's Kunta coming back. All happens in the ninth, as we say. This one, yeah, probably a wide. Goes over the wide line. Uh, but yeah, it's one thing the players say all the, all the time. They say, oh, you know, I thought that this was going on when I was out there, but when I went back and watched the TV, it actually was completely different, or it looks a lot slower when you look at it on TV. I think that's very true as well. All right, sliced away, gets it over Abdul Asif. And it will run to the boundary. So, well, Nath will take it, Sir of Nath. Boundary's been hard to come by in this innings, haven't they? So, I suppose bear that in mind. There's a lot of people who, you know, watch European cricket and they say, oh, you know, I'd be smashing that up and X, Y and Z. Truth is, we've seen some pretty good players find it a bit more difficult than they realised. Oh, well bowled by Kunta. Nath goes four and out. This is where you've got to be at this stage, I think. Just be bang on target. And that is a very good piece of bowling from Naveen Kunta. Still, Nath will take the boundary. Super Kings. Just trying to edge their way up to maybe 70 plus, something like that. As that is now, it is 57 for five. Good little inducker. Straight through the gate. Cracks middle and leg. A new batter out there is Mazarul Islam. Ten balls to go in this innings. Yeah, Mike saying he would have loved to have been able to watch matches back. You learn so much. It is honestly so true. Let's start something, speaking to Azam Khalil. You might assume we did an extended feature on Albi Zalmi and their story over the last three years. And Azam said, when they first played ECN cricket in 2020, that's the first time we realised, oh, that's, that's what we bat like. That's what we bowl like. And you can see how much they've improved. Not just them. And all the Swedish teams have improved a lot in the last three years. It's not the worst shot either. Leans over. Cover. Just the one, though. As well as I'm off the mark. Yeah, it's so true. I suppose it's becoming more accessible as well at different levels. Obviously, we've got a pretty sophisticated production here given you know, the resources we've got on ECN. But the fact you get a multi-camera with replays, with you know, some some uh, third umpire decisions. Yeah. Oh, well, this is high. Who wants this? Now, I think that Sandra Ruan's catch. Yeah. And he takes it. Don't know how he takes it, but he takes it. And uh, that's the main thing. And that's a nice moment for him. Had a long way to run there, didn't he? So that's going to be Ashkul Sana that goes for 18. But I like the intent that he's showing. See this, and he'll peer around now. Watch this, bang. Oh, in fact, he had lodges between his forearm and his chest. You should actually get extra points for not using your hands in a catch. Which is essentially what happened there. By the Super Kings now, 58 for six, and saying, you know, Rashik, if you can use that bat, I'll use that bat. And it's going to be Rifat Reza who's going to bat now. Saying, hey, pretty good for you. Give that to me. Yeah, Keanu, telling us the Oman defeated Ireland. Is that right? That is a big upset. So, eight to come. We can't get over how big this pitch looks compared to the players. It's a brand new pitch. In fact, it might have been one of those. You know, buy one, get one free, and they've just put them side by side. It does look pretty, pretty, pretty wide. Three for 12, though, Kunta. Can he make it four? Last ball of his spell. Almost, but not quite. This one doesn't leave the infield. Manon jumps all over it, and it's the end of the ninth over. Super Kings, 59 for six. Well, I suppose we have had maybe 13 or 14 teams defend scores in the 60s. But this does seem like a bit more of a case of a bit of a mismatch considering the experience levels of these two teams. Look at the bowling. Well, Foreman orderly Q. And Nelanga copped a bit, didn't he? But... Sandaru won two for nine. I think he's actually bowled pretty well today. 
get too much reward last time. Three for 13, Kunta, good spell from him. One for 12, Sukbinda, but Amanula didn't take a wicket, but only conceding seven. Went very close to taking a wicket on a number of fronts. And so we'll head into the last over. It looks like it's Kusal J. Singer who's going to get an over. Well, I hope he, hope he bowls a good over because he hasn't had too much luck today. He's run out in a huge mix-up with Kohamana without facing a ball earlier on today. That's pretty well bowled. Left arm orthodox. Being left-handed is a bit of an advantage, I think. We've talked about it a fair bit on the network, haven't we? Wow, what a shot. That's out of here. Maximo. Wow, where have you been all my life? Reza. He steps down confidently and he nails it. And what I love about this shot, he doesn't try and drag at leg side. He's not lazy. Holds his shape. Poor Jay Singer. His day not improving yet. I'm going to go stumped here. Oh, he goes back in his crease. Edge. Knock down. That's even clever. Everyone expected him to dance, including me. Instead, he went back. Maybe th think he might get a short ball as an overcorrection from the bowler. Smart batting. At least they're thinking. They've got a plan. I think earlier in this innings, first half, didn't really have a clear plan of what they're trying to achieve. Oh, this is, should be gone. It's caught. And so, this time it's Masrul Islam who's going to go. Jay Singer with a wicket. Ah, oh, well, if you ever want to get up in the, wicket, the wickets column, just put yourself down for the 10th over because you know the batters, they're going to have to go for pretty much everything. You never saw the arm guard rattled of, uh, of Masril. But, uh, I mean, right idea. Didn't quite get the contact he wanted. So he becomes the seventh wicket to fall and the score is 66 for seven. Couple to come. Here's Habib Ramanatik. Nice to see a friendly conversation. Between the umpire, Andrew Bag, and the existing batter. He's enjoying himself out there as well. Refund. All right. Couple to come. I think we'll see him. I don't know. He'll be swinging hard. I'm not so sure Reza will get another chance to face. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. This is out as well. And so it's going to be a golden duck. And Jay Singer has two in a row. Like I said, Reza might not face again. It's looking that way now. So, yeah, kind of sums it up. Oh, there's Derek. He's in a rush. He's a bit late to the party here, wasn't he? And it's, uh, yeah, it's a disappointment. And I suppose, really, a top, top ball. All right, here we go, last ball then. 66 plus this. Jihad gets a chance. Oh, misses. And I think we'll have a run out here. Yep, we do. So, uh, but uh, in the end, doesn't get the hat trick, but they do get a run out off the last ball. And they're going to finish 66 for nine off the 10 overs. And, uh, yeah, well, we didn't see the hat trick. That's, uh, of course, we had a fake one earlier today. But uh, I'm sure we'll get one somewhere along the line here in Romania. So, well, didn't mind the theory of the Bucharest Super Kings winning the toss. At least they get to write their own script here in match five as they... Decided to bat first and, and didn't have to worry about a big target to try it and chase down. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, it wasn't quite the pace you'd hope for in a T10. Got to say, though, ACCB did make it pretty hard for them as well. With some pretty tight bowling. Swinging the ball around early. That was a funny one. No, he wouldn't have been laughing if he was stumped. Two feet outside the crease and daydreaming. This one would have been caught. Ridoy, though, most part couldn't get going, could he? 
But uh, it's just one of those innings where, where they have had to struggle for every, every run, including that one. We're just not home. There's a case of what might have been, though, because then we had a couple of drop catches in consecutive balls. That's up to Lazith to put one down. Ended up being four as he flicked the rope. And, uh, well, this one, pretty inexcusable, wasn't it? And uh, Zukvinda lost the sunglasses, lost his composure. And he said, well, don't worry, because what I missed there, I can make up for if I give myself two overs, and he did. We saw a few audacious strokes in here as well. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot happening on the scoreboard, but there was a lot happening out there. This was an absolute rainmaker, wasn't it, that Manon wasn't able to hold on to. Never got set under that one. I like the off-spin of Sandaru. I don't think he offers a lot. I like his kind of natural loop and spin on the ball. That was a nice catch running back, wasn't it? Tough chance for the keeper there on the, the short hop, but Abbas wasn't able to hold on. Got slightly better. Well, it got very much better there for Amanula, who was off to the races. And as the wickets fell, you know, for me, Mohamed Ashkul Sana, he was super important as he was able to, to hit some quick runs when his teammates couldn't. Eventually, he was caught. And then last overtime, you saw Jaya Singer. He hadn't had too much to celebrate before this over. He was able to grab a couple of wickets. He was on a hat trick at one point, but in the end, the Super Kings managing 66 of 10 overs. Well, thinking of positives, if they do defend this, they will be on our highest chases Hall of Fame. But as it is, seems like it'll be a matter of when, not if, against a strong ACCB lineup. You can give some some positives there. I think Ashkul Sana looked okay again. I like that he was pretty pro proactive and at least was trying to be aggressive, uh, but still playing cricket shots. 18 off eight for him. Apart from that, you know, it's hard to see where the runs are going to come from. It might be time just to try and yeah, try try and get Ashkul Sana back up there. Even though I know I think he had a goal up there early, it didn't work out, but it looks the most likely to me. None for seven. Amanullah, really good effort from him without taking a wicket. He did take a sensational left-handed catch. Apart from that, three for 13. Kunta, two wickets each for Sandra Ruwan and Jaya Singer. The spin twins, perhaps, took pinned up with one. Nilunga, the only bowler to really suffer any kind of damage to his figures as he went for 18 in his over. We'll take a break. Won't be too long before we'll be back here in Romania. Starting in around about five minutes, so don't go too far. 67 will be the victory target for ACCB. Or can the Super Kings pull off a miracle defence? Join us to find out. Vinny Sandu here, Mr. Maximo. Hopefully you enjoy it. The few minutes break, but then come back for the last things of day one in this fan code, European Cricket Series, Romania.
European Cricket Series is proudly brought to you by HCL Software, Fan Code, and Grizzly Bear Sports. Hello, folks. Welcome back. We are ready for the last things of the day. ACCB taking on the newcomers. Press Super Kings in the first half of this game. Super Kings won the toss, batted. I didn't mind that. They're trying to just write their own story with the bat rather than face a stiff target. But they weren't able to do too much. 66 for nine. They scored at their 10 overs. Now ACCB require 67 for victory. And uh, ACCB, their previous game, weren't able to get a win. So they'll be super keen to, to get ahead. In that first game, ACCB 107 for six off their 10. Gladiators chased that down at about eight overs. ACCB, Brad Abdul Asif contribute 64, but didn't have a lot of help. Deddy Manon missed out, 13 for him. So Singer went without facing a ball. So almost ready to go. Looks like we can get Tala Ansari to bowl the first over. Now, one issue has been out of wides. There they can sort that out. And wow, I was on the plane when this happened. But yeah, spotting that second game, I didn't realise it was that many. They gave up 52 runs in extras. I must have missed that little detail. Just going back and looking. Zunef scored 144. 52. And I think that's just two off the record of 54. They're back in 2020. That's the most extras we've seen, for sure, for about three years. Oh, this is a good shot from, from Saidullah, who's opening the batting. Yeah, so just, I thought that was him. Saidullah out there with Kusal Joe Singer. We're taking this opportunity to give, give a, a couple of other players a hit. So, here Jay Singer. If I was him, I would have marched straight to the strikers end to guarantee I'd face a ball. He's a long way back, isn't he? <laughs> That's uh, Mazarul Inflam. Say it all, though. He looks like a guy that might benefit from an early dinner. Wouldn't be the only one. This is going to be wide, and it's going to be five of them. So, yeah, we just talked about the amount of extras they gave up. Where does he go wrong here? Okay, misses by a bit. Keeper doesn't get a real sighter of it. He's not particularly comfortable going to his left. I think the first thing that uh, Masrul Islam uh, needs to do, and I am a wicketkeeper, that's my position. Uh, I think he has to step up a bit. He's in a really awkward spot. A little bit. Oh, he's given him. And well, well done to Ansari. My feeling was this was a little high. Oh, yeah, knee roll. I don't think there's any problems with the line of it. Yeah, hits him on the knee roll. Yeah, he's quite far back. My, inst my cricket instincts tell me it's a bit high. But it, it's very hard to judge how much further it's going to climb. So maybe it's clipping the bales. Give him a break there. Also, to be fair to the umpire at the bowler's end, he can't actually see the stumps. He's actually having to remember how high the stumps are. So it's, it's pretty tough if you can see where the stumps are from side on. So if you're trying to give that from, from the bowler's end, it's not as easy. Hello to Umer Ahmed. He's welcoming me to Romania. It's great to be here. Yassine, watching from Sweden. Oh, you were such a star for hitting it. The youngest player to ever take a five-wicket haul. And you should go back and watch the five-wicket haul today, Yassine. By Cosman Zavoy. He was a guy who's north of 40. Native Romanian player. Uh... But uh, I'd love to come to Umyo. Unfortunately, I won't be able to because of my other uh, ECN commitments. But Yassine, tell me, what date is that that Swedish ECL qualifying day? Maybe you can help me out there, Yassine, because I'll definitely be following along with it. You're Gordon, you're from the Swedish Cup T10. And then 
Hudinger and Albi Zalmi from the ECS. And we just completed you know, the four teams that will play each other, essentially two semifinals and a final. One of those teams will be in ECL 24. Oh dear, I think, no, I'm not a huge fan of the backstop normally, but I think when you've only got the, the bear backing up the keeper, it's, it's going to be trouble. And so, I suppose I might be considering the three-man wall as a, as a defense to this, or maybe a four or five-man wall just to try and cover a bit more ground back there. Anyway, this time, gets it in the general vicinity of the batter, goes through. Might get a three here. Probably could have got there if you'd run straight away. I think it'll just be two. So, yeah, now we keep keeping it. It's, it's made to look easy by those that do it well. I know there's a lot of criticism for guys like you know, Johnny Besto for, for missing some chances in the test. And look, it is test cricket. It's probably fair to criticise. But most people criticising wouldn't have pulled on the gloves. <laughs> Really good shot. Absolute cracker from Jaya Singer. He's trying to make up for lost time. And he smashes this down the ground for four. First over. Is uh, not going too well. I'll tell you that much. Last ball of it coming up from Ansari. Oh, he almost gets a wicket here. This will be a bite. They finish the over. And probably not a bad thing for ACCB because Jay Singer will retain the strike. The score is 24 for one after one. So I suppose any, any over that takes a wicket, i just say it's a good over. 118 matches since we've had a golden ball. We are waiting, aren't we? We are waiting to, to see one happen in real life. Been a while. I haven't seen one for even longer because last one was in Bulgaria. That was what I was off. <laughs> this is short and it's going to go all the way. Maximo. It's halfway up the hill, isn't it? You can see when they had this guy opening before, all he got was a mad 44-yard sprint and the one ball he got to share with Gohar Manan, but now he's got a chance to show what he can do and he's not looking great for the Super Kings. I will say they are looking great in their strips. Big fan of the, of the orange strips. Most of Bangladeshi origin. Jay Singer. He's eyeing off the... Early finish, isn't he? And he's going to go leg side again. This is going even further. Maximo! Back to back sixes. It's actually a player that has been one of the better players for Super Kings today. Mohamed Ashakul Sana has come on. I think I changed my angle now. I think that's two balls in a row. You've kind of put in the wheelhouse. Just a reminder of the ECC. I haven't shown that today. So, yeah, we've got Romania in Group E. They're in the ECIs at the end of this tournament. You've also got Croatia. We're in Group B in Slovenia, who won't take part this year, but it's going to be a great experience for them. Anyway, in the air, tough catch. It's Sheik, goes back and he spills it. In fact, they'll probably get two now. It's a fairly long throw. There seem to be a lot of catches of infielders running back with the flight today. Mike Seal asking, what's the fastest chase? Number of legal balls in a T10. Mike, I'm glad you asked. I can tell you that on ECN, the... Fastest chase was set earlier this year. Is, uh, I suppose let's give a, little, a free tip to free tip to um, the keeper here. That's what he's like. Number one, just try and put yourself in. Calculate the angle of the ball. Get a bit closer. I think if you're closer, the ball doesn't have that much time to angle away from you. You can cover. It sounds weird. You can cover more ground if you're closer. You can cover more angles. I suppose is what, what I'm trying to say. If you're a bit closer. Not too bad from Mohamed Ashkul Sana. Yeah, so the fastest chase, Netherlands women chased in five balls against Gibraltar early in this year. The first ever ECRW. Big 
swing from Hunter. Prettiest shot, you'll ever see. But yeah, Masters chase. 0 0.5 overs. Two overs in here, 39 for one. If you want to talk just men's cricket, well, the quickest chase was actually set in March in Portugal. Fighters chasing against Lisbon Supergiants in just 1.4 overs. So chasing 46 in 10 balls earlier in the year. Netherlands chased down 16 in five balls. Looking at the table, early days, ACCB. Be disappointed that the Gladiators got the better of them in their first game, but they can put some points on the board here. Seems a matter of when, not if. And so, it's like Nahid Hussain. Probably try a few different options. I like this depth now for the keeper, Mazarul Islam. Full toss, so toes it. Almost gets the fielder on the full. Just get one. I suppose this is where the keeper, Mazarul, I mean, probably should be within reach of the stumps. He's still kind of hedging his bets a bit, isn't he? But, you know, it's give, him, give him some credit. He's obviously stepping up and he's he's still learning the position. Flat bat and get it over, says Kunta. And he does. Cuatro carreras. 23 required. It's a big power play that's putting this game to bed. And Mike asking who's representing England in that. Normally it's an NCAA 11. So essentially it should be the best amateur cricketers. So just out of the professional game. Although there are a few guys, I suppose technically they're professionals. Uh, they've just come out of county contracts or maybe still on the list of some counties. Full toss. This one blasts through. Fielder's hands, but... Yeah, credit to Reza bin Anif. He does take the sting out of the ball, even though I think he wears the sting. And that's just a single. Yeah, so fastest ECN chase. Five balls. Netherlands 11 versus Gibraltar. Netherlands women versus Gibraltar. Ooh. One, maybe more. <laughs> Although the foot comes in, does the job as far as... ECS cricket, it's 10 balls, 1.4 overs for the fighters against Lisbon Super Giants, LSG. Oh, that's out, I reckon. Yeah, it is. So well done to Hussain. And now you're just hoping for consolation wickets, and they get one. And Kunta plays all across that. It hits him in line with off stump for me. Yeah, it hits him. Oh, his back pad as well. And let's have a look. Yep. That's good enough for me. Umpire didn't take, spend too long debating it in his own mind. Maybe a question of if it hit him outside the off stump. That was the thing I was looking for, but I'm pretty confident it hit him in line. It's going going on to hit. So, well, Kunta does get a boundary in there, but he's LBW. And look, credit to the Super Kings here. Not easy to go out against a vastly more experienced side and not have too many on the board. And, uh, yeah, look. Nice that they do get a couple of wickets. And, you know, it's a real crash course to have to play three times in a day. And it's not cold at all. It's 25, but it feels hotter. There's no real breeze around here, so it certainly feels a bit hotter for me. Yeah, so I'll be curious to see the England 11 team this year. I think once you play it as well, even if you go up and get a bit more of a contract like Harrison Ward, I think you're kind of you're grandfathered in. I think that they love playing it so much that I think we'll see Harrison again, I'm sure. We'll see, though, once they select the squad. Anyway, Manon comes out, and he's going to stroke a boundary first up. Brings up the 50 for ACCB. And they bring it up in just 18 balls. They're still they're saying he can be proud of himself in that over. One for 11. Did pick up the wicket of Kunta. So just a reminder, it looks like things are winding down here, but make sure you join us tomorrow. 6.15 a.m. GMT, which is 8.15 in Central Europe. It's 11.45 in India. And we'll start the day by seeing a new team, Zenitis, who are playing for the first time. We'll also see Transylvania. I know a lot of people looking forward to that. And Bucharest Salmi making their debut in ECN cricket. So should be a great game. Same starting time. This time, the difference is I'll be on dry land, and I'll be... I'll be here to take through the whole day.
All right, start a new over, and the first one's horned out of here by Jay Singer. Maximo! Well, it should be illegal to hunt bears in Romania, but this ball, it's uh, it's on the way. It's a guided missile, and it ends up halfway up the hill. Just 11 required now. We do it. Didn't have a great time before. It's a better effort, though. But, well, these two actually were involved in a run out. In <laughs> the first ball of the innings in match four when they were opening together. Oh, yeah, not too bad from Ridoy, but he's going to go for four. Opens it up, goes over the offside. Yeah, and the result, four more. So, in the 60s, and now it's a matter of time. Three to come now. Start to wonder, will we get to the end of the fourth over here? <laughs> there we go. I'll give him credit for that one. Masrul Islam, in the right spot at the right time. Shrug asking, will, will I be going clothes shopping after close play? Maybe. I might try and squeeze another day out of this. Apparently they'll be here in the morning. Yellow suit should be on display tomorrow, Shrug. I'm wearing, you'll be able to know straight away whether it's gone well or not. If you tune in about 10 past 8 in the morning, European time or... 10 past 7 in, in London, in UK. And then you'll know whether I've got my suitcases back or not. If you don't see me, that tells you all you need to know. Yeah, Mike Seal's excited by the idea of the vamps. Transylvania playing. All right, right away. Survived this far. Six to win, though. Yeah, that'll do it. Manant goes bang. Game, set, match. And they only take four overs to knock this off, ACCB. Bit of a David versus Goliath, but in this version, Goliath pretty much pounds David <laughs> from ball one. And uh, I think they seem a bit upset that it's over, but it is. And look, Super Kings, credit to them. They had some bright spots there. That's all I can say. I really hope that we see them progress during this series. Just moving forward with their cricket because, yeah, they had a bit of a tough draw today. They'll actually probably have a few more matches that are a bit more in their league against some other teams that are pretty inexperienced as well. So, I'm going to say, no, well done to the Super Kings as well, who fronted up uh, and put three three games in, and they'll be better for it. Still seven matches for them. And, yeah, nice, nice moments between the two teams as they shake hands and exchange pleasantries. ACCB, like I said, dropped their first game, but they do finish the day with a win, their first points. Just one more reminder about when you can join us. It's 6.15 a.m. GMT tomorrow, which is 8.15 in Central Europe. It's 11.45 a.m. in India. So, yeah, you'll know if my clothes are here, if, if I'm wearing them, about five minutes before the start of play. As we get ready to wrap things up here in Romania, let's have a roll through this. Last innings of play. I thought that was a bit of an unlucky one for Sayed Ullah that might have been climbing over. But, ah, uh, oh well, Super Kings fans had something to, to shout about. And, like I say, that one was also given. And I think that one, there wasn't too much debate about it at all. He's just playing the wrong shot to that, wasn't he, Kunta? And, uh, Meanwhile, Jay Singer, he was saying, hey, I missed out last time. I don't want to miss out again. Even though this was almost a carbon copy of the of the run out that cost him his wicket. First ball of the innings. But, you know, Jay Singer, he played some good shots of his own. 33 not out, but it was Munner that finished it off with a monster six. Now, that's the shot I think Gohan needs to be playing a bit more. A bit straighter, I think. And in the end, you know, only four overs required. And so I want to thank everyone, no matter where you're watching from around the world, for your company today. And he kept me entertained, actually, when I was in transit, when I could turn my phone on. Jay Singer, 33 or 14, finishing things off with six overs to spare. Go have money with 10. Say it all up and couldn't tell the only casualties. And the issues is, yeah, maybe finding uh, a way to stop a few more balls behind the stumps. Obviously, a few ill-directed balls not make it too easy for the keeper either 
can see 14 extras in the four overs. And if you kind of put that out over the whole 10, it'd be about 35. As far as the bowlers went for, we used to a successful Ansari with a wicket, Nahid Hussain with a wicket. Some good signs, like I said. It's never easy when you've got a team that's very, very experienced, former champions taking on a team with the first day in the format, but that's how you get better. And if you think about, you know, take the Romanian national team, for example, when we first saw them, uh, or even, even Cluj, when we first saw them uh, in the ECL against some slightly more high-caliber clubs, let's say, at that stage, you know, they, they were getting beatings. But, but you know, amazing how quick you can get up to speed. You just need to have that exposure. So, yeah, well done to the Super Kings, and it was great to see them. Great to see UNEFs as well today for the first time. Of course, these two teams, that's the summary of the last match of the day. Okay, seeing up 33 not out. I think Quinta maybe be a shot for player of the match, but I think maybe Joe Singer. He took two for seven and the 33. Not out. So I want to thank everyone for your company once again. A few dramas overnight and a bit of drama out there as well. What about the five we get over from Cosman Savoy and the fake hat trick, the hat trick that was <laughs> basically it was and then it wasn't. So every day you'll see something that you've never seen before if you're watching the European Cricket Network. On behalf of everyone here, hope you have a happy, have a safe evening. And uh, thanks for all the well wishes, everyone that, that's been getting in touch as well. So just uh, before we go, last three things to remind you. That uh, if you go to our website, europeancricket.com, you get all the stats, fixtures, and standings there. Not only of this series, but the upcoming series, including the Bulgarian T20 Nationals later in the week. Our social media and European Cricket is a great place to go to get some of those hot tidbits of action. There were plenty of them today. And finally, if you haven't already, please like this video if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe and tell your family and friends about the European Cricket Network. We're going to leave you with some best bits of the day. I've got to say, Patrick's did a great job in the booth today. His first day of cricket, but he is an absolute gun. I'm going to lock him in because he ain't going anywhere. In fact, you should be back too. Because day two, not too far away. Five more matches on the way tomorrow. From now, it's Vinny Sander here, Mr. Max. And on behalf of everyone here at the European Cricket Network and the European Cricket family, have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow for more Fancode European Cricket Series Romania. Hasta mañana.